go. <laughs> You want to put yourself in a special chair place in the blue sheets, or do you sorry? I want to be in a regular place because otherwise I won't be able to. Uh... Do we already put the minutes link in all the channels? No, uh, Magnus put it in the in the WebEx chat. Okay. But that's all that's happened. I think. Put it in. Oh the... no, he put it in in in. Um, put it in Slack. Zulip, I think. I haven't put it in Slack. I put it both in the WebEx and, and the Zulip chat. Link to today's notes according to the data tracker for this interview meeting session. Um, All right, it's 9.30, so um, we're going to get started. Welcome, everyone. Uh, we are recording. Uh, as usual, there's our sports mascot, uh, Blades the Bruins, the hockey team here in Boston. Uh, this is the ITF note well. I think everyone, no one is new from yesterday. So, um, uh, I already talked about this, and I'll talk about it again. Be nice to each other. Okay, so for those of you who missed the um, administrivia last time, let's just run through how this is supposed to work. First of all, there's a link to the notes in several chat forums. Uh, go to the notes, put your name on the blue sheet, your name and affiliation, please. I will remind you several other times. Technical chat should be in Zulip if you want to have like basic uh, AV problem, uh, meeting trivia, like audio problem, whatever, you can use the, the WebEx chat for that. Um, for the way we're going to manage the queue is we're actually just going to raise physical hands here and the chair will kind of run that. If you are remote, just use the WebEx raise hand function. I think we've been pretty good about noticing that and getting you in an appropriate place in the queue. So that worked pretty well yesterday in my opinion. Um, right. Any questions about that? All right. If you are here in the... Uh, do we need to resign the blue sheets or is yesterday in a submission? Oh, please resign them. Um, is there a link? No, there's a new link. There's a new link. You want the one with 20, not 18. Um, if you are, if you are here in the room and you anticipate speaking very much, I encourage you to sit, uh, toward the back of the room along this, this row of tables, but certainly stay away from the extreme wings because you will not be on camera, which is not so great for our remote, uh, colleagues. Okay. That slide is old. Okay, here's how we re here's how we rebatch the agenda based on what happened yesterday. Um, uh, we're currently in in the Miss Trivia. Obviously, uh, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna give uh, Suhas the floor. There's no PR at this time, I believe. There's some draft, but oh, I would okay. Yeah, this one's nice. but but it's but it's actually gonna be just a slideshow presenting a consolidated <laughs> design proposal from what we did yesterday. Um, uh, after that's done, we're going to take a little break. Then, uh, then we're going to change the subject dramatically. Uh, Victor's going to talk about object IDs. Will's going to talk about uh, merging track name and namespace. Then we'll go to lunch. Note that lunch will be twelve fifteen. Um, because some people are leaving a little early at one fifteen, we're going to talk about or try to schedule our next interim, which will probably be sometime in February. Um, then. Um, Victor's going to talk about priorities. This, this fell off the off the agenda from yesterday. Ian's going to talk about scribe done, uh, and we'll have some issue discussion. That said, if if a PR materializes over lunch or something, okay. we will we will we will bump the issue discussion and allow you to present that, to we can discuss that. Um, I, I guess the other was like if if it takes more than an hour to go through that stuff. Yes. In the morning, we may we may reshuffle live. Yes. Fetch is the priority. Everything else, you might fall off the table if fetch consumes the day. And there was also a, re a request to end a little bit early, potentially. You like, just want to end at 345? 345. Okay. Oops. Well, I can't do that in this. There we go. There. All right. Uh... Okay. 
And then here's some parking lot issues should we happen to um, have any success in time efficiency. All right, we need to scribe. And there's yeah. chocolate. Now, okay. no peeps, the tradition. I told you, man, I just love I I'm yeah. staying in Cambridge. <laughs> there's no whole food. I mean, the whole foods is it, man. <laughs> All right. So we have like well, Daniel did double duty yesterday. Well, you can have second chocolate if you want. So, so somebody else needs to describe. Thank you, Mo. You want the same ether powder? You want the new one? Uh, the, the new one where people are doing the the, the blue sheets. It has twenty in the URL. You want your, you want your chocolate in advance? No, it's okay. Save it for lunch. Okay. I do. Do you want to? Do you want to? No, I don't know. I, again? I, I can... Did anybody find this useful? Maybe that's an interesting question. Did anybody like actually like? Focus more on what other people were saying and less on convincing people? Or should I stop giving like career coaching advice? <laughs> no soft skills, please. What? No soft skills. Please. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, go back to what you're doing. Please ignore me and just like argue. Will, Will is anyone registered to attend today that was not here yesterday? I don't believe so. Okay. Well, I don't see anyone in the room. So we'll uh, run. We yeah, to to I'm monitoring the downstairs. They sent me a note when someone arrived. Okay, we don't need to go through the building logistics again then. Um, we didn't have any QR code for today, though. That's correct, but yeah. I, she should just... Yeah, she, she, she knows. Yeah. All right. In that case, I think we can just uh, move... Well, wait, there's something. It's just edge. Never mind. Ah, okay. Um, so I, I guess first up is uh, Suhas. You, want me, you sent me a link to the thing. You want me to present it? Yeah. Okay, you got it. Hold on. But it means I can't goof off during your presentation. It's annoying. I sent you on Slack. I know. That's perfect. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Are you scribing? No. GTFO, man. <laughs> Scribes only. Oh, three, three, four. Cool. I'm curious. What happened to the dot on the second I? Did it blend into the F or is it just gone? It's F blending. Okay, that's a very important question. Go. Cool. Uh, and this is the this is updated slide deck from yesterday, which includes uh, input from the group and will myself and Victor try to uh, combine the ideas together and see if it makes sense to everyone and capture the things that's supposed to be captured. Okay, what changed since yesterday? We're just trying to see if we can move you. Yeah, so you we can. can see your whole slide. Layout, uh, You're not joined, right? I'm not joined. Do um put it on the right side. That sh that shrinks the thing horizontally. Put it at the top as well. You're putting it at the top doesn't work. It's at the top. Or you, I, mean, I, mean, I don't know how to move that window. But so, so remote folks, we're just trying to move. our self view is blocking the slide. So you want me to? I can turn self view off. Yeah. Oh, that'd be ideal. Yeah, I that'd think be so. ideal. Yeah. Oh. We already know how handsome we are. But we need <laughs> we need daily confirmation. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna turn it off. Minute by minute yeah. confirmation. There we go. <laughs> You're not right. anymore. Thank you. Now with you. Okay, Suhas. Well, as long as you can see me, that's fine. We can oh, see yeah, you. Can see you. Keep talking. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Cool. Uh, the high level overview is that we are agreed upon saying there's a control stream like we have today on which we send the control messages for fetch as well, which includes uh, three or four. Um, messages one to request why fetch and the responses can be okay if there's no error and there can be error a few error reasons we can talk about details later and there is a cancel message if someone wants to cancel fetch uh, midway through um, and along with that there will be a new unidirectional data stream that will be sent for each fetch request so there's one-to-one -one mapping between uh, the fetch id that's in the control message and the fetch uh, data that comes in the uh, data stream and we like other uh, messages we have today, we have a header that identifies what is this fetch uh, set of objects that corresponds to, which fetch request it is, and there is a, a way to indicate the fetch center. We can talk about the details more once once we go through the um, uh, slides. Next slide, please. So first set of examples you will see will will be around the case when how do you, how does someone transition from uh, catch fetching uh, the old data to the live edge? Next slide. So in this uh, example, the use case here is that the client or the player who joins live broadcast, they discover that they are 10 minutes behind and uh, they see something interesting going on, but they want to go back 
uh, 10, uh, 10 minutes so that they can start from the very beginning of the feed and how can we use our existing tools of subscriptions and fetches to make it happen. So the way it happens is that the client, uh, when it starts, it subscribes to the live broadcast and in OK of the live broadcast, it figures out that, okay, uh, they are 10, 10, 10 minutes uh, behind. So immediately it will unsubscribe to the live broadcast and tries to uh, figure out how do I fetch the 10 minutes worth of data. For this example, I'm assuming the group sizes are like two second segment and uh, the, player, the, player, uh, the client or the player wants to um, download 30 seconds worth of data and also play it at 2x speed so that it can really finish up uh, catching up. So you, you'll see every 30 seconds of new fetch request will be sent out and what are the data that you get will be at 2x times. And this is done uh, every 15 seconds for 30, 30 seconds worth of feed. So after, and this goes on and for a while until the fetch, one of the fetch requests, if you see from uh, 435 to 450 is the point where the fetch uh, request fails uh, on, a mm -hmm. on a control stream with a fetch error saying that uh, you your requested range crosses the live edge that I have at, at my uh, at the publisher. So it, it immediately returns an error without any data, but it returns an error saying that uh, live edge is 445 and object ID is 58. So that, at that point in time, um, that's an indication for the player that it has uh, request for the, requested for range of objects that hitting the live edge. And immediately what it does is that it goes back to subscribe into the live broadcast and live broadcast uh, today, the subscription tells where the current live edge is because there might be a time gap between by the time you get the error and the client issues a new subscribe request. Uh, so in, during that time, the live edge might have moved slightly forward. So to fill the last remaining sort of gap there, a new fetch uh, request will go out to fill in the remaining gaps. In this case, uh, when the fetch failed, at that point in time, it was the request was for everything between the range of from 435 group to 450 group. So, and when the subscribe OK came, it's, it sees that group has moved to 446 on object ID 4 in this case. So what it will do is that it will redo the fetch uh, from 435 where it failed to the current language, which is 446 on object 4. That, that way, uh, the client has caught up uh, to all the things it needs uh, when it when it is when it did a scrub and it played it at uh, two x times the speed and after that fetch, the last fetch completes it it will be uh, played at the rate of the live edge. Windows the flash. <laughs> yeah, clarification uh, is uh, does the fetch error um, is it sent from the source at the time it sends the uh, group ID. Uh, 445 object ID 57, and then it says, "Okay, now you are on the live on the live stream." Or is it sent when it receives it fetch 435 to 450? It it it, uh, it sends uh, as soon as it receives the 435 to 450 fetch request. So okay. the fetch error is coming on a control stream. So the request stream, the request fails. The fetch transaction fails right there. There's no data stream created at that point in time. Okay, and and so if the initial fetch was something like zero to four hundred, it would immediately say, "Hey, you are above uh, the current uh, end group, the current live group," and so it's 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 an error immediately. You don't yes, even get the first uh, the first object, the first yes. group. Right. Okay. Uh, if it if it's outside the range, it basically says it's an error. And then it also says, by the way, this is a live edge, and you can, if you really, if you if you want to continue with the fetch, you can readjust your fetch errors at that point in time. Okay, and so it means that the relay or the source check the uh, end end group of the fetch. If the end group of the fetch is uh, greater than the current live edge, it is an error. Yeah. Okay. But so there's a but there's two consequences to that is that you do have to check the end before you serve even the first. But it would also work if you just started serving the first and you kept processing it, you send it until you get to one that's suddenly live and then you error on that one. Yeah, this is why the client would know what it's received, so it could still backfill appropriately. But it would mean that the sender didn't the sender could just start processing from the beginning. They don't have to go to the end, look look for a problem. And 
also the, the notion of where the live edge might change, right, while you're delivering the other stuff too. Right. I mean, yeah, this is what I had in mind. I mean, if because in that case, the uh, client could could ask for something much bigger than zero fifteen, um, but it has to know the track status at the beginning, and then it will have to continuously ask the track status to to increase the uh, end uh, group uh, ID, which is a bit annoying for the player, I think. I guess, to be clear, so when the, the error is generated at the last hop based on the last hop's vendor's perception of the live edge, or is it go back to the Good publisher question. to get that? It depends where, if, if, if that last hop knows where the live stream is, it can return the error immediately. Is right. live edge here the same thing that the current draft calls? Latest object or largest yes. object? Yes. If you do a subscription, it's latest so object. So that's just the the, the, the first hop's perception of the live edge. Okay. If, yes. it so it, if it doesn't, it's, it goes to if there's If it hasn't started there. yet, then you get the no content. It has to go up. It has to go up. But, okay, so so just so I understand. So that it is possible that, in fact, the live edge is forward out of the publisher, but I'm still going to get the error. Okay. Yeah. Um, and the other question is, for each of these fetches, you're going to generate a different unidirectional stream. That's correct. Right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. I have. Oh, there's a couple questions. Uh, Christian and okay, Gwendol, your hands still up. Did you have more? No, okay. and Christian. Uh, are we doing a clarification question only? Yeah. Okay. So the clarification question is: Have you considered? <laughs> okay, I'll do it later. <laughs> How did your proposal so terrible? What are you going to do about it? <laughs> <laughs> if the question comes like that, we'll show your slide. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Christian. I'm going to slide. Don't skip slide. It's only 9.30. So, okay. Go ahead, Christian. We're waiting. So, we have, do we have any other clarification? No, no. no basically, uh, I, my, my gut reaction there is that because your transaction is not atomic, you get into this uh, never-ending stuff of, oh, I need to catch up a little bit, I need to catch up a little bit, I need to catch up a little bit. And I, I don't like that. I mean, I, I think with a little effort, we could make the transaction atomic. Can I, I can answer that? that. There, yeah. there is a, this, you don't have to catch up a little bit here. This is actually just a very clean transition. The important part is you subscribe to your live first, <laughs> before you go and backfill the, what you need behind it, because that keeps you current with live. Your, your backfill never changes. It's, it's a fixed range. And you know what you get when you join the live stream. So this notion that we have to make a lot of little requests here is, is not a valid one. So I, I just like but, to... Okay, okay, that, that's, that's a nice answer. But I heard Sua saying just that, that he was going to say, oh, the live edge has changed at the, at the end of my transfer. I have to redo it a little bit. I, I want to I highlight a, a very important point on this slide. The thing that the numbers that are reported returned in the fetch error, the live edge there, are never used. They're thrown away. They're totally useless, right? Like, yeah, I mean, like I'm not saying we should remove them from there, but they're not used any that are later in the slide. It's the numbers uh, that no, come I, I, we, we have to do one or the other, okay? So I like Will's answer that say you have to do a subscribe before you do the fetch, no matter what. If that is the answer, then we shall enforce it. Then a parameter of the fetch shall be, it is complement to subscribe number so and so. Christian, we don't need to enforce that. Yeah, that's just how a player should use it so that they, they so, don't have a... Well, like, Martin had a oh, no, question sorry. and then... So, so like, if I understand this correctly, another way to do this as a client would be to take that first subscribe and not unsubscribe and just immediately fetch zero to four whatever because I get the live edge. And then I really only have two messages for this whole thing. I just may have to buffer the live edge. I agree. Yeah. So okay. this next slide talks about that flow. Yeah. Okay. This, is, okay. this is the catch up, the, the edge case of you're playing it faster than real time. Yes. Yeah. That's, that's the only way you catch up to live. Right. That's this. If, if I do one fetch, I can still do that, right? I, I, think think, you can I, I can absolutely do what I just did. I just have more buffering. Yes. 
If they had buffer, yeah. so the next slide kind of, you can see the next slide shows the flow. Okay. Can be used for catch up if you want. All right. Victor? You... Yeah, uh, my reaction to the comment about you always need to do the crap and you just catch it uh, what? Uh, like, no, if you're doing VOD, you can perfectly find. This is only relevant when you're doing VOD and you're at risk of catching up. Yeah. Uh, which is often you're, you're not. Okay. Somewhere in the past. Okay. Yeah, just a, this actually is a clarifying question. The first two could be replaced with track status in this flow. Yes. Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah. Somehow okay. you find out where it's the language is. Okay. One could be subscribe, one could track status exist. But, yeah. but there's no, you don't actually want any of the objects that could come between your subscribe and your answer. Yes. So, so, um, you so probably track status is more appropriate in this one. Right. Okay. Totally fine. Because the second slide that I'm, the next slide I'm going through, that shows where you might, uh, subscribing might be helpful. Okay, anybody there? Clarifying questions on this example? <clears throat> okay, you want to move on to us? Yes. Okay. This slide basically shows that a client wants to have a five seconds buffer to be filled before it starts playing out so that it, it can have smooth play out. So what happens in this case is that the client does this initial subscribe to the live broadcast and from the okay, it figures out the current, where's the current live edges and it knows it just needs to fill five uh, and there's no playing that to the X speed or anything needed here. So what it does is it, it does not unsubscribe from the live broadcast, it's okay to buffer until then it immediately does a fetch to fill in the five seconds worth of data. Uh, at that point in time, uh, the client has all the data Five seconds old and the current live edge data, so it can play in the order. Martin. So, so would the fetch be higher priority than the subscribe typically in this case? That would make sense. That would make sense, yes. <laughs> this is one of those cases where a subscription would be helpful to have it. Yeah. Does anybody have any other questions on this example? <laughs> yes, uh, just, I mean, maybe not a question, but uh, just a remark that uh, if, if we consider the high fidelity live streaming, it means that we uh, want to have the fetch and the subscribe in ascending mode, I guess, mm -hmm. because we don't want, I mean, we want to prioritize the buffer filling rather than stick being in the, on the live system. Am I correct, or is it your understanding as well? Yeah, I did hear somebody yesterday say that they didn't think that ascending for subscribe maybe, or did that? <laughs> I not hear that yesterday. Yeah. Descending for subscribe doesn't really mix. It's oh, it's descending. Wait, descending for subscribe. Oh, sorry. <laughs> descending for subscribe is for real time, and ascending for subscribe is kind of a high fidelity. And so, in that case, the fetch should be ascending. The subscribe should be ascending as well. And if the relay only had uh, end users having descending subscribe because people wanted to have real time, then it need to fetch the uh, missing, uh, I mean, the gaps in the uh, and the possibly missing object. Okay. Any other questions on this slide? So this is the proposal, and uh, is it right or not? Let's maybe we can discuss a bit details uh, in, in detail. But we have four messages or control messages. Uh, fetch request is called the fetch message, which has uh, things like fetch ID so that you can tie that ID to the response and in the data streams. And it some, some things are in for the track names, which are the usual things that we have, and a range, which is a, uh, which has, which is ex uh, inclusive, that it, it needs to have, you need to provide the start and end object and groups. <laughs> and fetch okay, usual, allows you to um, say if fetch, fetch was okay or, or fail because of whatever reason, uh, and you get a fetch error for that, and at any point in time you can cancel a given fetch. So, I think this, this is pretty, pretty straightforward. If there are no further questions, I'll go to the next slide. Okay. Um, I would do have a question about uh, this one, which is, can we also put, and this was what I thought about on your first example, can you also put the live edge in fetch okay? 
the reason? Uh, I mean, th there's a, is there any reason not to? Because it could, it, yes. it will tell you. There's a reason not to. Okay. It forces the relay to make an additional upstream request. If No, I mean, this, the relay's view, of, relay's view of live edge. But it may have none. I mean, if it has none, it can't give you a fetch okay without finding out. So it's optional. In the same way that it is in subscribe okay. I, I think. No, subscribe must give you the live. Well, there's content. Otherwise, the prior line. workflow is not going to work. What, okay. What I mean is. Uh, we can table this so, question. No, so, 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 I, I think Will's point is that there's a state where the fetch where the fetch is in cache, yeah. but this but this relay does not have the live edge, so it doesn't have to go upstream unless you make it provide that information. And we have an existing method uh, to okay. go up. So I, see. I don't think we should overload fetch with having to tell you. You, just, you can send a track status, status along with your yeah. fetch. Okay, yeah. Yeah. do a track status or make a subscribe. Okay. Those are your two methods. Right. Okay, got it. Okay, so there's a question for the uh, small thing. Uh, group order is marked as a far end. Should we make that a byte? Is it uh, yes. warrant today? I think it's no. a byte. It's a byte? Okay, then it's a byte. That should be a bit, shouldn't it? It's the, it's the byte. There's no bit. I think it's encoded <laughs> as a bit byte bits. in other places, but yeah, we don't, we don't use it. It will be the except a bit. Or we can make it a bit. <laughs> but I want two to six two ways to order the group. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Glendale. Interleaved ordering. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, sorry, uh, maybe I, I, I missed part of the latest chat. Uh, the relay send a fetch okay when it is sure that it has all the group and all the objects of the fetch? I, I, or I should it wait to confirm that it has everything? Because you know with the gaps, there can be some, some error somewhere, and so... I, I Maybe the range is not full or something like this. It, is, it has to know that it, the end is not past the live edge. That's only fetch. So I think that goes back to my thing. It must know where the live edge is in order to answer the fetch. No, but <clears> not, we, never, we never resolved that prior comment. Oh, I see. So you have it all cached. You know. Are you obliged to make sure you can serve every object in there before, before otherwise you return an error and nothing? Or can you just start processing from the start and then when you encounter an error, you do something? Okay, so I think what, is, what I'm saying, I think what I'm hearing from Martin is, if if the fetch is zero to ten, and I have at least I have ten in cash, then I know that it, it can't be past the live edge because I've already cached it. No. So then I can send you a fetch, okay? Like, and then individual objects may or may not be there, and maybe that's in the fetch response with with object yeah. status or some other encoder. However, if the latest object, if you fetch from zero to ten, and the latest thing I have is nine, I can't even send you a fetch, okay? Because ten could be now it could be the live edge, and I, I don't have 10. So, so I you have, have to, to do, wait and go upstream. I have to go find out where the live edge is. No, you have to find 10. I don't have to find 10. I have to know if 10, if, if 10 is cacheable. I have to find Is this beyond live edge or not? Is it, 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 which side of the live edge is not? Because if it's past the live edge, I have to give you a fetch error instead. Yeah, but yep. usually you would combine those two since, like, if you don't have 10, you have to fetch it anyway. So. Yeah. yeah. And you would just make but a fetch for 10. You have to wait. And, and if it's something, I'll tell you it's the live but edge. If you fetch a live edge error, then you So I think we need to try to dovetail this with subscribe semantic students. It's very weird if subscribe and fetch behave totally differently. In, in this way. So whatever we decide should be the gating factor for replying. That that should be the gating factor for both. But if you look at the later slides on this, to answer the clarifying question, this proposal, not a different proposal, assumes the fetch OK comes back pretty much at the beginning. It comes back before you have all the data. Just like subscribe. Just like subscribe. Mm -hmm. And uh, and it, it does have to know what, whether it's beyond the edge or not, so it knows whether it gives an okay or error, but it does not need to retrieve the data before it sends the fetch okay. okay. But, sends the fetch if, okay. If, if, it, later on. Okay. if it receives a, a, a fetch uh, 3 to 10, and actually it cannot get the object number 3, there 4, are later 5. later slides that cover like exactly that. that topic you're talking about, so maybe we could get through those. Yeah. I think the clarification question is good. Let us finish the slides and we'll come back to this. Yeah. Wendell, if I did not answer your question. Okay, but so like the answer to my question is like, if you 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 may need to make an upstream request in order to send a fetch okay. If sure. You, yes. you, may, you may need yes. to. Yes. Okay. Yeah. That's the answer. Thank you. And the fetch okay comes before the data is sent on the stream. We, we will come back. That to was that, that was Wendell's yeah. question. Yeah. Yes. We'll, we'll ah, come okay. back to that. At end of the slides of all the examples we have done. If if it does not answer, we'll we'll answer that. Next slide, please. Okay. How does the data stream on a fetch look like? Uh, it looks like it, it has a header message that identifies the 
the response to which fetch is corresponding and identifies which track it corresponds to on the priority. And like in uh, uh, other object, we have an object message that identifies the group and object ID and an object information about like status of the object and the payload length and the object itself, the data. Uh, and there's a trailer or, or what we call it the end of a fetch message called fetch complete message. Um, just this is kind of an indication to say that your fetch is complete and have a mock player indication. Is this what we need or not? Um, we can discuss later, but I would like to, or if you're designing this one, I would want to wait until the end of slides are done. Uh, I didn't see if Will or Martin went Will first. first. Well, it was Gwendol first. Oh, well, then <laughs> Gwendol, yeah. No, sorry, I, I, I forget to lower my hand. <clears throat> my question is, do we need track alias? Because fetch ID is a immediate binding with uh, the track name, so I don't think we need track alias. Sounds good. Yeah, I mean, it's a, yeah, it's a a whole other thing, but yeah. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Is, oh, so is that was the okay? Is everyone agreeing on that point, or should we, <laughs> do we need to debate more? Is that a clarifying question? I think people are going to push for removing all the ideas completely and making it bi-directional. So, yeah. what's that? I think, bi-directional, so. yeah. that? I think people are going to push later for making it bi-directional, removing all the ideas. Well, I mean, tracking yeah. laser is extraneous to do that. So, like, okay, okay, but I'm going to remove what's it. The purpose of fetch, fetch priority in this. Point. I, I did think to, I, I, at one point I did not add it. Okay. It was more like, yeah, how would we spend like 30 seconds at the end to discuss that? Yeah, that's fine. If the answer is there's no real good reason, that's fine too. Uh, we can talk about it later. Raise, I'll raise my hand or something. I think Victor so, had his hand up too. Uh, Your question was already answered. Okay. I, I was just going to say, uh, I don't know if any of those are needed. What we do, what I, I think that the intention here on this was to put enough information between these across here that you can put these data in the cache. So whatever we need to write it, like if you fetch something, you want to cache it, right? So whatever are, is the data we need in the cache, we need to have that here. And that was the design goal, but it's probably totally messed up. I'm not claiming okay. any of those are. Got it, yeah. yeah. Okay. Right, yeah. <laughs> okay, that makes sense. I, this is, a, um, well, the way you fetch complete here, uh -huh. do you intend to make that an object status? Yes. That's the because it's the only way to communicate because of the way the wire spelling looks like it's going to be here. <laughs> yes. But we can come back to that. All right. There are three ways to do it for this. Okay. Yes. Okay. okay. This is like a small modification so modifications on examples we went to yesterday, but I'll, I'll try to go through once more so that we're all on the same page. Oops, sorry, too far. Okay, this is this one uh, A example. This is showing that clients want client wants to spend an ascending order of the things, so it issues a fetch request for uh, objects uh, from one to six in an ascending order, and relays looks like looks at it and it thinks that it does not have all the objects. So in this in this case, but it, we'll talk about the fetch okay uh, thing. But it it knows that it needs to go upstream to fetch the remaining objects. It does the fetch uh, upstream for ranges one to three, and in the data stream you'll get. Uh, <coughs> Header followed by the trailer and all the three objects that you need, and to the relay and relay now, now has satisfied range and it could basically send all the objects back to the client. So in this case, because the um, request does not go past the live edge of what the, the, the relay thinks at the point in time, it gets the fetch okay immediately. To answer that question, that makes that makes sense to me. This is I would expect the fetch okay to come immediately from the relay. In this case, any questions on the slide? Just sorry. Yes, question. <laughs> the, we we have the notion that if you ask for a range that's beyond the live edge for a live stream, you get an error. But the same should be true of a VOD asset that doesn't have an incrementing live edge, but has a fixed live edge. Mm -hmm. So if you say ask for one to ten here, okay, right, you should in fact get an error. And it should tell you your largest one is six. Correct. And then you can re-request it for six. Is that correct? Okay, yeah, we don't have a, an example of that. So we, might we don't have an example. Okay. Christian has his hand up. Christian? Yeah. Uh, what if uh, the uh, publisher or the relay decides that, you know what, I'm not going to fetch because that's not what my policy says. So I'm going to, I may give, serve you four, five, six, but I'm not going to serve you one, two, three. 
I, I would assume in that case it would be a fetch error and say that my live edge is at. So there is an error. This would be a new error it's for not, that. It's not, it's, no, it's not a live edge. I mean, there are two edges. There is one edge is what I'm, what am I serving now? That's the live edge. And the other edge is how far back am I willing to cache? Um, so, Christian, you're trying to say that if you, that a, a relay might have a pol or let me give it, or maybe the original publisher is gone. Yeah. For example, the original publisher is no longer connected. So the relay does not have one, two, three, and there's a fetch for it. And yeah. The relay has no way of acquiring one, two, three, or as you're saying, it's a policy question. The relay, for whatever. I mean, I, I I don't want my cache to go to five gigabytes. I think we will let's work through that example, right? Let's let me let me know if it makes sense. In this case, let's the original publisher that does not have the data, one, two, three. It will return a fetch error, right? Right for that fetch that's going upstream to the original publisher. I okay. So you're saying there should be a different kind of error message, which is like. Your start is too no, early. I'm not saying, let, let, let me go to the flow. Okay. Yes. Sending from client to the relay, and relay knows that it does not have one to three. It does a fetch upstream, and let's assume that the original publisher also does not have one to three. Then that fetch upstream will do error, and in the response, you'll have data header 456 EOF. That's the thing. Because that's the only thing any cache can ever serve. I don't think you need to have a separate error for it, right? You go up. You're trying to fill in a cache and order it finds it. Why don't you get to the example where you don't have data? I mean, you have an example that illustrates this two slides oh, from now. Like, why are we discussing this? So we have Jonathan in the queue. Um, yeah, what I wanted to ask, is there a distinction in the error messages between this is the live edge versus this is the highest uh, object there exists and there is no live edge? For your VOD case. Rules case. Yeah. I actually think that I feel like both, both yeah, cases, I feel like should, yeah. the error is Sorry. the highest object available. Doesn't matter if it's because it's live or Water because water. it's. Well, I mean, I guess the question is: is it is it sensible to subscribe, or should you just limit your fetch to that? Yeah, I mean, maybe you could just try to subscribe and see if it fails, but that seems maybe this is just an optimization. But it seems like those are slightly different cases. Yeah, I I would think that's kind of an optimization because if you are subscribing to the world. You know, it's subscribing to the board versus it's subscribing to something like client. You know what your thing is. But as a client, you don't. I mean, the player might the player might not know whether it's a VOD or a or live. I mean, maybe this is a thing that was previously live and has stopped. I think Jonathan's saying, is it useful to have a deterministic a different end, era, the deterministic end versus open ended? There may be more. Yeah. In the stream. Yeah. In the track. Okay, I think we should. Somebody keeping notes of the things we should talk about later, but I think one of the things this question of should because I'm thinking in the HTTP world that works differently, and so I think we should spend some time discussing like what happens if you ask for something that's past the end of track, and is that the same kind of error of past the live head? So I don't want to. It's not a clarifying question, but I think we should discuss it. We can move on with the examples. Yeah, I just also want to say for those of you who are trickling into the meeting, if you're lost, uh, I just uploaded this entire slide presentation to Data Tracker in the Thursday morning session, so uh, you can catch up that way, or you could fetch the previous frames of this WebEx. And... <laughs> yeah, I, 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 we, 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 let's move on to the next slide. Yes. Sure. But before that, I want want to clarify: we have object status today that. I didn't place it at the end of the bank, uh, those kind of things. So you would have after six an object shatter that says end of the bank. So you know if the, the track has entered. Okay, that, then, then this is a clarifying question. If I if this is if this said one to if, let's say the end of track is so let's say yeah, it's after six is the last object in the track, and I fetch one to ten, do I get a fetch error? No, refetch one to six, or do I get one to six end of track? Or if you pass the live edge, what the relay knows not a live edge, end of track. Okay. Again, relay. If relay knows, if you're asking something beyond, okay, that's some, some, that's not a clarification. Let's come to that. It is a clarification, but anyway, we can, you can come back to it if you have another slide yes, that's well, better to talk about. It. Yeah, yeah. Downstairs. Okay. So yeah, I'm I'm trying to understand what happened because you said, earlier yeah, you, you said it's that, a fetch error, you, but I, you need to get through these slides faster, Suhas, because yeah. Yeah. okay, you know, well, that's fine. <laughs> People want to discuss them, and yeah. you right. have I a good example. Make, yeah. You're missing all the all right. points. Sure, just hold all questions until. We're okay. Done. Yeah. Very. Brief clarifying questions only. Kendall, your hand is up. Do you need, or can it wait? Yes. Uh, uh, just a remark 
I mean, we would need to have the fetch OK in this uh, in this uh, slides just to know when the fetch would, OK. I, I agree. If we had it, if, if maybe later we can have another version of the slides that shows where the fetch OK is now. Okay. Um, yeah. Next slide, please. So this is uh, similar to the previous slide, but it's in descending order. Uh, you, you ask for fetch one to six in descending order, and and the relay has, really knows that it can immediately send out a six five four. So it's set the fetch okay, saying that I, I can serve. Uh, I can I'm okay with continuing with your request, and it sends uh, for six five four in that order. And in parallel, it also sends upstream request. And once the data gets filled in for uh, one to three in the descending order, it sends those things and says fetch is complete at that point in time. Very similar to the previous one, but all changed. I think the same questions you have in the previous one will be the same thing here too. Let's wait till end of the this. This is a use case where you're fetching for something that the relay does not have. So the only way it can send an okay or error is basically trying to find out. So it goes upstream, then it figures out, okay, I don't have the data and you get an error. Uh, and, and finally that's, that's reflected. To the time to say that you you don't have anything there. Okay, is the point of this slide to illustrate that not send you don't have to send any ob any object like your because your data response is blank in this case. It's yeah. not like two does not exist. It's just header EOF yeah. yep. and that you're supposed to, that it's implicit. Okay, thank you. So uh, th th that slide answers Christian's question from earlier, right or not? This is the slide that I was saying about. Which question are you referring to? Because there are it, many questions. If, 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 if the data is not available, or whoever can determine, whoever thinks they're authoritative to say that the data doesn't available, responds with whatever data they do think is available, missing, skipping all data that's not available, and that's it. It's now definitive for the downstream. Right? Like that's what's happened here. The original publisher said definitively, a request came in for two, and it sent back it sent back nothing. That means definitively two does not exist. I see. So Christian's right. question, can I yep. roll back to the example here? So your question here is that if, for say, the original publisher was disconnected, or there was, like, as Christian said, whatever, whatever. The relay decided it wasn't going to do anything earlier than two, or whatever. It would just. It would send it. header four, five, six trailer. Yep. And that means you asked for one to six, but because I didn't send you one, two, three, it means you cannot get them ever. Yeah, I cannot get them ever. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, except you don't have that actual example in the slide. What you have new say is something different, but I get the point, yes. Okay. All right. But well, we get okay. Yeah, fair enough. Good. Yeah. Okay, let's go. All right. Next next slide, yeah. <coughs> so th this is a slide where we, we talked about where uh, you have a set of objects, but some objects are missing in between. So yes. the, the example we talked about yesterday was it's a uh, 60 FPS and 30 FPS, and somehow the 60 FPS got dropped because of low, being low priority. But client wants to fetch that one. So what what happened is that in this case, client asks for one to eight uh, in ascending order, and they get okay. And that also it knows that it can serve a partial objects here. And so it sends uh, data for header uh, for uh, head, uh, for the object one, and then it also sends an upstream fetch for fetching the remaining things and as and when the data starts trickling. In the same unidirectional stream that it started sending the first object, it uh, fills in the other objects and puts an end of uh, fetch once all the things are clicked. The relay cannot know if the uh, object number eight is beyond live or not. So it should not reply data HDR1, it should reply error. Or it should wait for the eight objects to be uh, fetched. I think that's right based on what. Yes. So it, actually, the first thing you maybe want to do is fetch eight or or, some, or crack status to find out where live edge is yeah. before you can send one. That's true. Yeah. That's clarification we can change. Yeah. Ian, quick question. Um, and to avoid a bunch of weird error cases that I don't think are unavoidable um, or are difficult to avoid in some cases, would it not be reasonable to? reply with the last thing that you are going to give someone for a fetch. And so if I receive request one to 10, but only one through seven or like seven is the most recent thing, just be like the last thing I'm going to give you is seven. And that's, that's what you're getting from this. And just because we have track status and like we have an equivalent field in um, obviously subscribe, 
about what the live edge is. This is not so dissimilar, but like, I mean, it seems like a simple way of, at least things are very clear about what you're getting. I don't know. Yeah, uh, I agree. I was glad for, uh, but the point is that if the, for whatever reason, this relay did not cache that, we might still have enough stream cache mm -hmm. to fill in the data. And going upstream, if it did find eight in this case. Yeah, I, can I answer that as well? I, I think giving objects out of order is, is not a good idea. The, the whole thing with fetch, you, you, you get it in the, in the ascending order that you asked for it. And in this case, it's ambiguous as to whether eight is, exists at all, it's a VOD file, it will never exist in the future, or it's a live stream and it will eventually exist in the future. The relay doesn't know that, so it goes up to the publisher. The publisher does know that, and the publisher will resolve that ambiguity by either saying eight is the last object, or seven is my last object and eight's never going to exist. Mm -hmm. Or it'll say it's a live stream. And by the way, here's the live, the edge. live edge. And <laughs> either of those outcomes resolves the ambiguity and the relay can then respond. But it should be the same for the first one, right? If, right, which is the... why I think our error should not happen at the beginning. The, the relay should just process this one, two, three, four. And only when it encounters something that it can't serve, then it returns the error. Because okay. we're having to do a whole lot of pre-processing up front. Yeah. Okay. That's good. Uh, okay. Let's, let's yeah. That's that. the discussion. Okay. Yeah. This is the range fetch with missing objects. Uh, but my client asks for fetch four to seven, and Lay knows that uh, it does not have some of the things, uh, and it, it it goes upstream to see if it can fetch the remaining things, and it's able to get. Um, it asks the range, uh, it does not have all the objects, but it has only the object four. So in the data stream, all you get is that all the objects that I have at that point in time, which is object four. When that object four is received at the relay, and relay basically takes that object and existing objects are in the cache and sends it out. I think this is wrong. Why? I think object five and, and six are missing, right? We should actually put object five and six in there they should have an empty payload and they should have an object status of missing. If if those objects were produced by provision. No, no. They were they never are. produced. They're missing. Okay, I, I read what, what's done here is like a wire efficiency thing. It's like that this encoding means exactly what you say. Oh, but he's putting header and end of file, so we're actually saying exactly what's going down the wire, in which case you, right. I would think you do header. No, it's four. not a shorthand. That is what goes on the wire, but the... It, the, if you send, if someone asked for four to six, and I send you four EOF, it means five and six. Do, it's exactly, it means what you said. It's the same as receiving five does not exist, six is. I think the one difference is that the one difference is that in Will's case, you would know before you receive the EOF, you will know that the object is not going to arrive. In this case, you will only know when you receive. Then, well, actually, that's not true. When you receive seven, you know that five and six are missing. Yep. This solves the large gap yep. problem. Yep. Yeah, it does. Without so actually it's an efficient way to encode large gaps. You send the next you thing. Well, as long as I contiguous. What if there were two gaps in that range? Well, I mean, every time you receive uh, an object, you know that the previous missing objects are not going to get received anymore. You just know it. And this is very, it's very clear in saying that, you know, that's all I could satisfy in that range. There's no other way. I can later come back and say there's something in there unless you go new fetch and think things change. But it's very clear. So it would only be the trailing objects then that give you the signal that. But the EOF signals that. Yeah, yeah EOF says that. The fetch is done. Yeah, but there's no EOF. This is, this is... There is an EOF. It's an end of stream. It's not an end of file. End of fetch. End of fetch. End of fetch. End of fetch. It's not a stream fetch. <laughs> it's not a stream fetch. <laughs> oh, this is, this is no, the fetch different. complete. It can't be a stream fetch. Oh, okay, gotcha. Fetch complete, fetch complete not track complete. It's the okay. fetch complete, yes. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Questions here? Oh, I see two hands, Ian and Sebastian. Ian? Sorry, I forgot to lower my hand. My, uh, Sebastian? My Wi Fi is. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So in this specific case, do you return a fetch OK or a fetch error because you haven't everything from uh, that you're supposed to fetch? In, in this case, uh, you will definitely get fetch OK, uh, and then the, the, other, the other side fetch continues. 
I, I, if I'm missing, I don't see a reason for fetching error, but maybe someone can. Okay, try so it. Ian, that should be a discussion. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say, can, do we have a principle about what fetch error means in this case? Like the, the like ob most obvious principle I can think of is if you try to fetch something that just is, does not exist, is not fetchable, like you will get zero objects um, for whatever reason. I mean, it could be like a namespace that doesn't exist. It doesn't really matter. That seems like a fetch error. Anything that you can with, you know, reasonable intent uh, return more than one, one or more objects for seems like a plausible <clears throat> fetch. Okay. Am, am I, I don't like, I don't know. So far, the only, like what you said, fetch error, like I asked for a track that doesn't even exist. That's fetch error. But the other one I heard is part of your range goes past the live edge. So that's the two cases I've heard for error. I, I think I think I think there's there's going to be a discussion on about partial there's going to be some errors. good proposal to get rid of that second that, that, one. That, there's, <laughs> there's a partial <laughs> error case which we need to resolve. But yeah, like yeah. that's okay. all right. We're going to talk about that. Like we don't need to have that clarifying question. Okay. Anymore. Let's. Okay. Uh, Next, next slide. This this is kind of an optimization, or or slightly make it better. If if we, if you don't want an upstream uh, cases where you don't want to send multiple fetch uh, to a set of ranges, but you want to send pipeline all those uh, ranges in one fetch message, we extended the fetch message to include a range sub object that defines what the range that you want to look for and an array of ranges. And the idea the idea here is that the publisher basically has to go through. All those ranges without dedupling, uh, du duplicating them. So it, it might just go through all those ranges and respond in that order. So, is this? Would you want to put this in? And you're just asking if we want that, or I, I don't just proposing it as a possibility. This possibility, yes. Okay. If, so if, this is a question we can answer in yeah. a minute. Go ahead. That's that, that, that's what I, that's all I wanted to say there. Okay. And to just clarification on this, it's so if you just want to fetch the all the examples are valid, except they would they would just be a single item in this range. Right. Yeah. But the idea is if you've got separate ranges, you can pipeline them all and you're guaranteed that they will come in a certain order down down the same uh, stream. Because you could also make independent fetches for them, but then the order with that you receive them will be different because they all come back on a separate unidirectional yep. stream. Okay. Makes sense. Yep. Any all the discussions can happen now. <laughs> okay. How do I get myself in the queue? Hold on a second. First, can we just have a? Can people give us a list of topics that we want to talk about, and we can try well, to proceed, proceed the Maybe we can with. start here. Um, one. Okay. Does anyone think this is like a terrible basis for discussion that we are like completely in the wrong direction, and we need to like, or are are we just going to nitpick like the wire format and the error codes? Here? I think that's where they're going. Okay. Well, uh, I do. Somebody do raised a question about whether I'm going to go back to the very beginning. I'm getting someone, but Ian, you have a concern. Uh, one sec. I, I just I think someone was complaining about atomicity <laughs> and like why it was multiple. <clears throat> I don't know if that person wants to speak now or if they're okay with it. After that was Christian. Season. Christian said prefer atomic transactions rather than the cycle of speculative fetch subscribes. Yeah, I mean that's. Uh... Uh, I am not going to insist too much uh, because in practice what you have might work. But uh, I, if we want atomicity, we have to be able to do a combined subscribe and fetch in such a way that the two things are actually combined and treated at the same t and, and processed at the same time by the relay. But I, I, I'd like I'd like to respond to that one. But are you just making a list of things to talk about, or are we? Well, I was Martin was saying. Should, I think this is the first question we should tackle. Like, is do we do we want to go forward and like the design, or do we need to start here of like the design is wrong because it lacks this piece? Is anyone is that uh, what well, it? I am I am not going to basically stand in the way of adopting that because I see that it could work in practice. And the failure mode is that you have to do additional fetches. But uh, it, it'd be nice if there was either a way to s the relay says, my commit is that, yes, I'm going to serve that fetch. And if you then ask for a, 
object number eight, yes, I will absolutely give you a page. Uh, if you ask to subscribe from a, number eight, it will succeed. I mean, basically, the, the, there is some kind of commit like that. That does, if the relay says, my life edge is number eight, it has to have a commit that number eight will succeed, or otherwise it's it's a failure. It's uh, basically the, 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 the Trying to get a list of yeah, topics. It's about well, talking. I was but trying yes. to get a list of topics, and Martin wanted to start there. <laughs> well, I, 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 I wanted to do a sanity check that we weren't like a huge. I mean, I don't, I don't know. This is actually like a fundamental. It's, it's, it, I, I, I don't think you. I mean, okay. To answer Martin's question, it is not a huge issue. Whatever you have, well, I mean, whatever I mean, tie between subscribe and fetch, we does not to be needed can probably be uh, served by adding another attribute to either the subscribe or the fetch or the reply. So I'm not going to basically insist too much on that. It sounds like this is a relatively high order bit compared to the other. <laughs> Maybe the right thing to do is get a list of all the bits. Well, what, is then... the, what is the bit you're trying to say for the notes? What is the bit? Atomicity? Christian, do you want to provide a summary? Of what, like a one line summary of what you think that? No, five words, five not, words. not sentences. So, I would say well, uh, so. The the one word summary is atomicity. Uh, the five word is additional attribute in subscribe and fetch for atomicity. I disagree that atomicity should even be a goal. That's just an optimization. Determinism, we could argue, well, is, I, is a goal. I, I think there's a potential race in here, but uh, let's. We have can we call topic. this Christian's topic and put it on the list of things to discuss? Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. All right. I do want to add, okay. I think Luke's not yeah. here, um, but he put something in the Slack that. It, very similar to this that he was advocating for. Okay. Uh, okay. Well, can we? I know we have a queue, but uh, that may have been to discuss atomicity. But I think I would still like to. Okay. Let's just throw out topics that people want to talk about. Okay. Daniel. Uh, the fetch handling for past the live edge or past the end. Is fetch past the live end an error? Yeah. Is full that error or like partial delivery? Yeah. So like partial, partial, partially solvable fetch. Is someone writing these down? Or should I? You are. Okay. <laughs> I'm also, I can't use my computer, so I have to. Pull up the notes, we'll see them. Um, okay, so you, so Mo's writing them down. Okay. Let's just go quickly around the room and like, we'll pick up your topic, do your, or maybe come back. So we'll like, we're just want, collecting topics. We're collecting topics that you want to discuss on, ah. on this. So do you have one, or should we come back to you? One or more? Um, fetch fields. Fields in fetch? Yeah. Like the wire, like arguing about wire format? Yeah. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Anybody else? Yeah. So uh, I want to talk about the, the the topic of whether the fetch OK could return effectively both the beginning and end of the valid range it was going to return to you, and as a, as a slight modification to this proposal. Okay. So is fetch that, OK format. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. What Ian said. Yeah. Yeah. It's aligned with what Ian was Ian's topic. Yeah. Okay. John, topics. I want to talk about. The principles around fetch itself, because I feel like we are, we said yesterday that fetch is about the past, but this is skirting that. And I would like to, I think we should be clear about that. Uh, oh, okay, we're just collecting topics. topics. <laughs> this, this is not breaking the principle. This is only if, the if past. Not, then I think if you, I can, so this is, slide, it's not breaking the maybe principle. this is about errors and what can be expected reasonably of fetch. Like if you ex if you're no, okay, there anybody, Ian, do you have any to what topics do you want to talk about? Yeah, I had a kind of a more editorial ish comment, but it's something that came up when I previously tried to write up fetch, which is, do we really want a new message name and all that, or do we want to shove this into subscribe and then have the existing object model, or do we want a new message for fetch that's separate from subscribe but still use largely the existing object delivery model? But we're just going to put it on a single stream, like basically like the the framing bit, because um, I got or single message. When I tried to make a duplication of everything, I'm pretty sure Luke like was like, "This is insane! Like this is so many new messages!" Like, and I and I kind of have to agree that like it was pretty cumbersome. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm going to call that separate message or single message. Other who else? Any other hands or well, topics? Well, yeah, sorry, and I didn't hear the first ones. I wanted to talk about. Um, the semantics of fetch okay, like do you process it at the beginning before you return any object or do you process it when you encounter an error? Uh, and uh, the others were covered. 
Okay. Can you pull up? I have the cube. Can you pull up those notes? Because Mo has those all in the notes. Any other topics people want to cover? And then let's figure the order. We should probably share them on the screen. It yeah, would be a lot be, easier. You want me to? Know to or, Mo, do you want to just, can you share the notes and then we can... Um, are you on WebEx now? Can join the WebEx? I, I can do it. It's faster. Okay. I will stop sharing this for now. Um, and then we can pick the order we want to go through this and... and... All right. Um, I, to me, I would say that the high order bits here are John's thing and Christian's thing. You know, I, th I think the most people were talking about Ian Colin Will, the okay versus error. Yeah. I think that's been the it's it's the same thing. It's a framing question. Those are the same maybe that's a, John is yours the same. It is similar in the sense that you basically you're here's the thing I want to say, right? Let me, let me just quickly say it and then you can figure out where to where to place it. I think it's easier if we start with talking about fetch as the past and thing A as the past, thing A as the live edge in the future, and then there's the transition thing. Whether that collapses into one, three, or five, we can. That's an optimization question of how many verbs you want to have. But if we start off with thing A is clearly this. If you request anything that's not this, you get an error. If that's what you do in HTTP, for instance. It just makes it simpler, and then you can like bleed into one in another. I see that the proposal is doing that. I agree with you that it's not fetching from the future, but you're allowed to fetch into the future and not get an error. And weird kind of things happen there. It's not it needs a lot of proposal. Yeah, I think it's not the current. The current proposal is you, if you fetch and it goes in Sorry, the future, it's not an error. Uh, you're right. My bad. Um, I think I'm mixing the error case with this. But if you just have fetch do the past, subscribe to the, the library in the future, and maybe have a third thing, and it could collapse into one of those two later. But that maybe that's that's what the proposal is right now. That if you request anything that's in the future beyond the live edge, you will get an error and you will get nothing. That's with fetch. Yes. Right. I mixed up the error case with the future thing. You're okay. Right. Okay. So, right. so sorry. can we take yours off the list or put go it ahead. Go, ahead. go ahead. Go ahead. Feel, if you convinced that principle is that principle is not broken. I Thank you. No, no. I, I, think, I think I was confusing <laughs> these two items. <laughs> My bad. Right. Sorry. We so, agree um, with your no. principle. So, so <laughs> people, make sure. Most people have commented about that yeah, no, one item. Right. No, no. That's clearly the most popular issue. But I think Christian's issue is more fundamental. And if like we. I think I, if we want to talk about Christian's issue, we can. I think. This has been, I, I think Ian and I talked a lot about this at the previous one, and I can help bring people to consensus on this relatively quickly, I hope. Okay. okay. I, let's, so you want to, let's talk about atomic fetch subscribe. This is the one we want to just talk about. Yeah, and, and then this whole partial fetch deal. Yes. Yeah, so let's do, let, let, you want to talk about atomicity, though, to try to bring to consensus. I think, what you said? I think we, yeah, I think, I think, I think the atomicity would be an easy one to get agreement on, and that might make the other ones, that might make the other ones easier. Yeah. Okay, yeah. you get the first word. Everyone else queue up. We're, we're already, we're oh. already. So I, I have a queue of. Well, he was from Dallas. maybe before. But well, oh, it was, oh, but it was about atomicity. Yes, Colin, Janet, Daniel, Ian, me, Mo, and Will, I add my and Victor. No, Ben Suits. Ben Suits. Oh, Christian. Okay. <laughs> the whole room. Let's do the whole room. Okay, so. <laughs> All right, go, Colin. This, this was what was in the slides long ago at some ITF meeting when, when, Ian and I were posing this was um, right now. So obviously we could we could extend the proposal that was done this morning to have something where you you know you sent up a combined fetch subscribe that you know subscribed and and did the fetch up to that point and automatically figured out what the live edge was and implicitly did a subscribe forward from the live edge and a fetch back. You could do that, no question about it. Um, so what we have today instead does allow you to do the atomic version of that, but it takes one round trip, but it's still atomic. It's still an atomic operation. So you send the, 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 um, the subscribe up and the subscribe tells you back what its starting point is. And then you do a fetch up to that starting point, right? And so you have that extra delay of your fetch. You don't start getting any of the fetch data until you've done that one extra RTT, but it is an atomic transaction. I just want to be clear on that, right? There's no way that something moved forward in the meantime or anything like that. Of course, the live edge has moved forward, but you're getting the subscribe data for that. So it's an atomic operation, but it takes an extra RTT. And we decided that every one of the use cases where you want to get stuff in the past, a one RTT delay was no big deal. So that there was no reason to optimize this. And we could always add that optimization in later if it turned out that that was clearly something was neat. We could do it with a flag, but there's various ways we could do it. But just as a simplicity thing for now, we'd keep it on the simple case until, until we got there. So 
that was the discussion that we had before, and so maybe people can respond to that a little bit or, or something. Just real quick, did anybody lose connection to the notes or the internet in general? It's right there. You lost connection. Yeah, I lost connection. Oh, no, that, that's, else me, take notes? that's my window. <laughs> oh. Can somebody else take notes? Can we have a backup takeover for Mo? I, I lost the, my connection to the. My Wi Fi is fine. I can, I can ping Google. Oh. I lost the. Sometimes the notes thing goes through, and we have to switch to. Oh, okay. Um, well, wait, wait, let's let me describe before we. <laughs> Somebody else take over. Sorry. So they are, are responding to Colin's point now. We're, no, we're waiting for a scribe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and there's a heck of a key. You got a mic? Okay. Well, okay. okay. All right. Thank you. So, John. I'm in the game. Yes. Uh, take, I, take me. Okay. Daniel. Uh, I was thinking pretty much exactly what Colin voiced, but I, yeah, I think this I this is a pretty easy thing to add after the fact. If we do, if we look back at it and we realize that we missed it, and it's it's easy to add an optimization when it's like a separate subscribe fetch. But all the use cases we want are achieved with what we have now, and this is simpler and more straightforward to implement. Christian, I can't send you the link right now, but it, it is a data tracker. Um, if someone else can send you the link to Zulip, that's awesome. Uh, Ian. Yeah, I was going to basically plus one Cullen and say that I, I think there are actually maybe even easier ways to implement this um, and maybe not uh, actually even burn the extra RTT, but still have subscribe and fetch separate and have the properties we want. But the other thing is, uh, the more I think about like implementing this at relays, at multi-level relays, like, man, like, it, somehow it seems like, oh, it's like really convenient for a client to be able to say, like, I want to like go, you know, span something that is before and after the live edge. But like at some point, someone's got to like deal with the complexity of that. You can't just punt it down the road. Right. And I feel like that's what we'll end up doing. So I, I feel like, um, yeah, anyway, largely agreeing with Colin, but also just saying that, like, I think this is much more complex at the relay potentially. And so, like, can we do the simple thing? And then if we think like the slightly more complex thing is trivial, then we'll do it later. All right. I'm back in. Thank you. Uh, all right. Uh, thanks, Ian. Uh, so I'm next to the queue as an individual. Um, so I agree with Colin's assessment of subscribe plus fetch. I'm a little, con I, I'm not yet. I think the track request plus fetch is a little uglier that there is a, that there is a race condition there because you request the live edge and then you send a, a fetch and the live edge is moving and you're not going to see the stuff in between. Um, and I, I, I guess if I want, I guess, I think, I think maybe we should like not have that as an example of how to do this. And the fact is, if you want one through 10, uh, you're going to have to subscribe to nine and 10. If, I'm sorry. If you want one through 10 in, in the light and eight, one through eight already exists, you're going to have to end up subscribing to nine and 10. And so there's no case where you wouldn't want to send a subscribe anyway, if your fetch happens to overlap the live edge. Um, so, uh, I guess I agree we're okay as long as we like strike this track request idea. Since I was the one who said suggested that, it was particularly in the example, which I don't want to pull up the slides right now, but but the one where like you didn't make us you didn't want any objects at that point because you were ten minutes behind live. And yeah. so you didn't want to do your subscribe right. until later. You just needed to know where approximately yeah. Yeah. that so, edge was. So if you don't want to buffer right. So that, that is the use case. That's that's why I said um, I don't but, but my, but I think it, I think that might be a do it that way for the reason I just described. Okay. I can, I can, I, I can basically subscribe and subscribe looked silly. This is what it had there. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, that's all. I'm, I'm jumping the queue. Okay. All right. Uh, Mo. So I don't think the goal should be atomic because that's just, that's just, you know, an optimization or our efficiency. The goal should be determinism. The player should have a deterministic way to do something without speculatively chasing things in many round trips and in many transactions. Uh, so I think, like Colin said, if you, as long as you're willing to subscribe and buffer, you're okay. It's deterministic, but the long, the long back fetch, is a problem because you're not, you know, you don't want the subscribe at that time. Now maybe you could do it with priorities. You could really, really put the subscribe at a very low priority, so it it, it starves out. Um, but it does seem kind of ugly that you have to have an open subscription in order to fetch something when you don't actually want any of the live edge data coming in. So that seems kind of ugly. The way I think it, it can be resolved is this other issue that we have of the partial fetch being being an okay instead of an error. 
then you can just, you know, fetch for the world and it'll only give you up until where it is, where, what it has. And then you have a small little gap to fill, not, not buffering many minutes of live edge. I, well, yeah, I, I think the, the atomicis, atomicity is required where you don't want half an operation. And in this case, we've, we've gone to the trouble to decouple, fetch and subscribe. And we're not we're not missing anything. So, if if we made it an atomic, then there's magic happening on on the relay that is going to stitch these together. And I feel as a client, I would like to retain control. So I don't see it's necessary in this case, and I prefer the, the clean separation uh, of the two. If, so we've heard a number of people express. I think this is basically the same viewpoint. If you're in yeah. the queue and you want to just plus one, but can you take yourself out, Victor? Uh... Atomicity, so atomicity here is actually the really implementer. Uh, it's probably not particularly trivial, uh, but it already exists. The atomicity isn't subscribed. The two operations that you need to do atomically is make you subscribe and uh, resolve the crackhead because you, you need to make sure that between you resolving those, you don't. You need to make sure that no objects arrive in between you uh, adding subscription and returning to that. Uh, so regarding uh, atomic subscribe and fetch, I, I think it is, a, it is an RTT optimization. And there is a, what I would say, a really serious practical problem with uh, the current uh, Variant and the problem is uh, assume you're subscribed and you're subscribing in the middle of the group. Uh, you're trying to fetch uh, the beginning of the group and you subscribe, but there is like this awkward thing where you're receiving new objects on those groups, but those objects are actually completely useless for you because you need the beginning of the group first. Uh, and that is like suboptimal aspect of this. Uh, so the fetch that converts to subscribe is actually kind of solves the problem because you fetch the beginning of the group and then once you hit the left edge, you would subscribe and then you would receive the other of the group. Uh, but this is still like an optimization realm. Like what I think what would currently work and if we really want to do that optimization, we can do it later. But I, I don't, I don't think, like, between atomic subscribe and fetch and atomic fetch and subscribe, I think fetch and subscribe make more sense because usually you want to fetch the beginning of the group and then subscribe to them. We're going to cut the queue soon, not because we're done with this, but because we should have a break. Um, but Suhas. I, I think I'm, I'm doing plus one on what Victor said, and uh, this can be done later because one of the use cases I want to solve is uh, when, uh, when a person joins into the meeting and they want to get the iframe. Um, uh, and and the, the easiest thing we can do is that like when when you join, you subscribe to the meeting and you know where the current object are on, in the group, and then you fetch for the remaining things. And that that's that's for all the meeting use cases I'm thinking and for even for interactive that works pretty. Does not it does not add too much of latency. But yes, if you're at the end of the group, like let's say your fetches, uh, you you know you have you know the from the catalog your how frequently your objects are, and if you're too far, then I would basically wait for the next. There's no point in fetching like 30 seconds worth of my iframe data and pre-frame data. So this this kind of uh, where you want to fetch small gap to get to live in or interactive mode as quickly as possible. And also if you're too behind, you don't have to wait for it because you, you just wait for the next group to start. So this kind of gives a nice transition for us. Christian, he was close. Yeah, I mean, I, I I think I agree with some interest in that in in the in the chat. I I think that I agree that what Cullen was saying works in practice. That is basically do subscribe, do not unsubscribe, and then fetch the missing data in parallel with the subscribe. And that means that the the client has to do buffering. And I agree with what uh, that. This is ugly if you have to fetch a lot of data, but then in that case, you can do what Mo was describing, as in fetch the bulk of what you need, get close to the edge, and then 
to the combination of fetch uh, subscribe and then fetch the missing data. So th those two will work. Uh, in that case, something that will say combine fetch and subscribe will be a, a, an optimization. And uh, we can do that later. Wendell? Yeah, I agree. The, the only uh, concern I have with this combined subscribe and fetch is that the uh, relay will send two streams to the same person. And so it might have an impact on the ABR uh, of the uh, this client, if any. And it might completely screw the uh, logging system because you will realize that you have two stuff two streams for the same with the same token maybe or with the same users you might have some security issues i mean nothing that is unsolvable but uh, this is something which we don't really like as a relay side i mean i think i think can i ask a clarifying question on that um do you think priorities can solve that problem for you Wendell? yeah so i mean it means that the 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 client has to be smart enough to manage the priority very well, which, yeah, indeed, it can. All right, I, I'm next. I, I think I think what the point that Gwendol made is one that is, um, I think it's inevitable when you split uh, future and past. So, so you mean AB, that, AB, that, maybe, that, that having like all the, having lots of streams to respond to the fat to the combined subscribe fetch is just kind of inevitable. Okay. Um, but well, but the reason I actually got in the queue was to uh, agree with Christian, uh, which is that yes, <laughs> thinking about this real time, yes, the I don't want to buffer it case is easily handled with. You've, you've tried to fetch one to a million. Uh, oops, the last object in that is a live edge, so you fetch one to ninety ninety nine thousand, and then and then later you do a fetch subscribe when you're when you're closer to the edge in that way so there's there's actually no problem here and I, I don't think we have any weird race conditions and you're laughing okay uh, i wanted to respond to the thing most said, but i'm wondering if it fits better in the other topic which is that you can just fetch the world like don't i think it has to do with the air condition it's like can you fetch past the live edge? so maybe i'll just save it for that discussion because i okay. like the teaser in it is like it seems like the problem is that 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 might have is that you don't or maybe wills too you don't find out until you until you actually got there, it's like a little bit late. Like, oh shoot, I just crossed the live edge. I need to subscribe now. No, so I think uh, she also had a fetch header, and I would suggest with send the fetch header that that, that should go. Okay. Okay. But we can. I think it, I think it's better. Than so, so we started this topic with Christian being concerned, but not lying down on the road over it. Now we've talked about 15 minutes, and I think some people have convinced themselves this is fine. Christian, are you still like, are you happy at least like not not uh, not willing to lie down on the road or or? Yeah, I mean, but, but we, we, we all understand the uh, that the downside of what we have is that you have to do a parallel subscribe and fetch at some point and that it requires some buffering. Okay. And so right. if we cannot live with that, it will always be the possibility to do a, a, a combined fetch subscribe for that particular use case. We can do that later. Luke and John both wanted to say something about... I'm just going to say that 99% of applications will have to do this fet combined fetch and subscribe. Yeah. Like if you want a catalog, you subscribe, you realize you get nothing, and you have to come back and fetch the previous group. I, I think this is a step backwards. I think the optimization of fetch and subscribe is what we have today, is subscribe at a start group. Um, so I, that's, that's, that's my you know, two cents. I think this is the wrong direction. But... I missed the discussion, so. <laughs> okay, Donna. Um, I, I mean, if it is, it'll bear itself out. Yeah. As we actually You'll implement it, and then you and realize then we'll it add it. So yeah. I don't think we should treat this as, okay, this is done, and we are done here. Okay. We're clearly not. So I, 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 acknowledging Luke's concerns, it sounds like our consensus is to actually make no change to the proposal based on this discussion. That we've all made peace with it to some level. Okay. Um, all right, let's take a break. Uh, let's return at uh, 11 o'clock sharp, which is 12 minutes from now. Um, we're going to keep talking about fetch, so uh, the more stuff will slide off the schedule as we go, but if we want to get this done. All right, we'll, we'll start probably with partial fetches or partial, partially, com partially fulfillable fetches. Wait, wait, uh, Ian and Christian. Uh, I, I quick question about the schedule. I realize um, 
are we all on the same page that we're using subscribe ID for fetch and using track alias for subscribe or? Let's add that to the discussion. <laughs> yeah. Can you put a <laughs> okay. track alias on the list of <laughs> I, I mean, I don't want to talk about it. I just want it to be done. But like, so th there is a fetch ID, which is maybe a separate space from subscribe ID, right? Yeah, fetch yeah. ID. Is and then, and, and then there's a track alias in the fetch response, which I think people recognize as extraneous. But then track alias is extraneous anyway. So yeah. no, subscribe ID is extraneous. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Maybe we just clarify. Okay, there we go. It's, it's in the. It's in there. Yeah. Uh, Christian, did you have your hand up? Oh, I'm, or, I'm, thanks. Okay. Oh, right. Is that the notes? Uh, there's rough consensus. Is that is that the yes? Yeah. Okay. And Luke was the only objection. Was there any, any I, others? I'm already lying on the roads. It doesn't matter. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else had a major issue? <sighs> Sorry. Yeah, we'll just talk about fetching so in the next like interim. I think. I mean, so totally I mean, I mean the this, subscribe hasn't changed. I, 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 I promise every application now has to subscribe and fetch. So like every single one. So like I. I, I so I agree with that, and, and so you have to implement both. Now. No, I, I get. I'm all for figuring out how to do that after we get this sorted out. Right now, the problem is, is that fed data is fed at an infinite speed to you, and the subscribe data is paced to you. And so, like, we keep focusing on what the request is, but the thing that we need to focus on is how the data comes to you. I, I, I think, think we need to get that straightened out, and then we can combine the request. Subscribe. Technically, I know we're not talking about, but we're removing the ability to start in the past. I don't think yeah. anyone's gonna. I don't think anyone's like opposed to a subscratch message. Uh, to what? <laughs> a subscratch <laughs> message? Yeah, I, I, yeah, well, that's what we have. But that's not yeah, right. Well, sort it. of, except you don't have this. Except it doesn't thing. work. It's not implementable. Like, it isn't described. There's no the, thing in the spec that says how the data comes to you for a for yeah. a combined one. Yeah. So it's 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 not there yet. We don't have it. I'll I'll, I'll look, once we get that. Sorry. Once we there. get both of these, I don't like. I'm all for it. Yeah, you did nothing to the I did not. I pick up my wife and uh, oh, jump yeah. around. My, my windows are during the day. Was, uh, were people off the chain? Was that off the chain? Big party. <laughs> <laughs>
No, no, I, I left early. You were local, right? Yeah, yeah, so I needed to go home to my wife, too. <laughs> What town are you in? Oh, I'm very close. I live in Cambridge. What about you? I'm out in the western suburbs of Concord Pass. Where is it? Concord Pass. Oh, okay, okay. How far? That's 20, 30 minutes? It depends. <laughs> it's, it's about 20 miles. 20? 19 miles. Okay, so worst case, 40, 45 minutes an hour. Ah, you can, like, uh, worst case. So she works near Brigham and Women's. And that oh, hour. that's terrible. Yeah, we're yeah. all the way in. But here, here it's been taken. Yeah, the Brigham area. A little over half an hour. Bluetooth sucks. Do you usually just work from home? Or? Yeah, yeah. Because, yeah. like, this traffic and then to Brigham, that's terrible. <laughs> Especially if, you, if you're if you trying to leave it, like, I think it gets bad around, like, 4. Like, try to get out early. I hate it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, really yeah. stressful. I was looking up my phone and things that affect your quality of life and just like the whole happiness. And apparently, like, the bad commute is like one of the top three factors. Which, like, I was like really shocked. Yeah. Yeah. She loses three hours a day. When it's bad. But fortunately, she just moved to a new place here in MGH. So, no, like, she's she, like the one. Uh, one down. Right the end of, um, like, like the near North right. Station. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. Right near North Station. That was not bad, I think. Oh, and that's a turn, like, we're right on that uh, rail, so. That's orange. Oh, yeah, okay, so North Station, it's probably the orange line? Oh, uh, she doesn't have to get on any subway, just the commuter rail. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Yeah, that's much better. I know they were doing a lot of construction there, so it looks like, yeah. Okay, yeah, actually, it's funny you speak North Station. I used to work there many years ago. I don't know if you heard Scorchard provided. They had a small. Oh, room. yeah, I see. There's <laughs> they, they killed the whole off, but it's still outside there. Uh -huh. You sound a, like you're in a better place now. Yeah, yeah. Much yeah. better. They <laughs> had a you know, office, but uh, for some reason, I got put it back in that office. Yeah, I remember even that time I was still living in Cambridge, and the North Station. Just taking a deep to downtown to the red line. Oh my god. People, the amount of people that are packed within the T and, and it was like, yeah, that was insane. There was like so many people jammed. And then the T breaks are stuck out there for hours. And it's like terrible. Yeah. Boston. Fast transit is embarrassing. Really? You know, a big city, you know. There should be some money here to fix that. 100%, 100%. For our tax credit going. <laughs> How do you like living in Concord? My wife and I were thinking of moving out because, like, there's no way we can afford it. There's just absolutely no way. It's expensive, too. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah, it's a little bit the more expensive suburbs. Um, I'm in West Concord, which is less expensive relative to the main Concord. I like it a lot. It's, you know, you're sort of far, farther enough out that if you want to go out to the countryside, you can, and if you want to get to the city, you can. Yeah. And there's plenty of amenities around. I've got the train. I've got the train. It's great. And if, uh, for our kids and the school, the schools are great. Do you have children? Uh, I have grown up ones. Okay. And they, they went through the Concord system. Lexington is good too. Yeah. Sudbury is good. Lexington is so expensive. Oh my <laughs> god. That's where that's where Lynn lives. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, my wife was thinking maybe have kids and uh, look at the school system and stuff like that. Surprisingly, the Cambridge school system is super bad. Which is like surprising because you know, you're near the good schools. Like yeah. near good, the good well, colleges. Rings, rings yeah. No, these are private schools. Yeah, they're, they're, they're private schools that people. The main, the public public school is not good. Uh, yeah, the, like, a lot of people move to these, you know, Lincoln, Sudbury, like Lexington. Yeah. And even Acton and Boxborough, all those schools are also good. Acton, so that uh, you could look at the map, but it, you know, the, as you get away from the city, they get more and more affordable. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, where did you come from before Boston? I lived in Georgia. Georgia. Yeah. Really. I went to college up there. I've been in Boston for like over ten years now. Uh, okay. You're here not originally from like you didn't grow up in Georgia. Uh, it's the first time. <laughs> originally, I was from China, but I came here when I was very young, like seven, and then I lived all over the place. Oh, uh, what part of China? Uh, Chengdu. Yeah. I like this from China. Oh, for real? Yeah. That's crazy. Do you like my show uh, China? Yeah. I've been learning so much. We've been married. Uh, two and a half years. Yeah. Yeah. I think we've that. So I've had a good solid two plus years. So That's I'm really good. good. How, how are you learning it? Yeah, yeah, I've heard it's it. It's actually good. Ah, it's kind of sucks. But your yeah. time is pretty yeah. damn good for just two weeks ago. It's multimedia. Like, so you'll watch a movie, or we'll go to Chinatown, or, or I'll listen to something on YouTube in addition. But the app, I think it's, it's done something good because I do it every day, and it's like. The I think the repetition is. Yes, the repetition. Like, yeah. Too. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Because Chinese, in my opinion, is like a, one of the hardest languages to learn. Indeed. Yeah. <laughs> it's, that's it's, pretty good. It's not, yeah. I, I can speak uh, Italian, English, and those are much easier to learn because the grammatic structure is all shared. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And there's lots of shared words. Oh, right. <laughs> it almost feels there's like the semantics and the mechanics are similar. No. Okay. Yeah. You got the that's awesome. Right. That's right. So, oh, oh, here's here's Mel's thing. Teaching. Oh, like oh, I, oh, oh. I've had this thing. Yeah, that's just thing. Okay. And, and I'll drop. I don't know what it is. I don't think she wants me to wear it here, so. <laughs> you don't know why you don't know what you say. You can't ever change the silver phone offline. I mean, I'll just drop it in the mail. All right. Yeah, for me. go for it, man. There's no temperature control. To change the temperature, I have to file a ticket. All right, we're going to resume. I'm sure. I'm kidding. I mean, I'm not kidding. Or there's, no, there's, there's no way to change the system. So I have to oh, find a ticket with that. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. I can also the close the door and leave the room. Are you cold? I don't know. Like, I don't know. I know, but that's. I can load you. I have. I don't know. Somebody wants to try it. Try it. Yeah. It's not that bad. It's just. You want me to run the queue? I don't know what the difference between partial fetch error and the partial fetch error. I think those are the same. I agree. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Do you have to All right. Um, we're, we're resuming. This is mine, uh, okay, so the topic so is... Okay, to Why did you have to scribe? The, the topic <laughs> is um, fetches that are partially fulfillable and what we months. should do about it, right? <laughs> okay. Well, then, God, the first word. Anybody else want to talk about fetcher? I mean... Is anyone, who, who wants to be in the queue for this? Yeah. Okay. Oh, Will, Suhas. I mean, Ian was the one you're downloading. Like, before you start, can you just explain the problem of store, like what are you trying to address here? So, so what, what is, what, okay, my understanding of it is that currently, if you have a fetch and it's not completely fulfillable because it's past the live edge, that, that, like, there's an error and you get nothing. And, and if I can speak for other people, like, some people would like the, Really, to maybe obviously send a message saying it's not fulfilled, but also deliver the damn data rather than make you do another fetch, which is basically a wire option thing. But um, no, no, I don't like the deal. But uh, okay, so um, all right, so okay. I've I've so, Colin, Mo, Will, two hops in the queue, and I see no other hands up. So let's get started, Colin. Okay, so I'm going to propose a modification to what Suhas had, um, which. And this sort of addresses, this is motivated off some Ian's comments, Christian comments, we're all sort of leading to this thing. So what I'm proposing is that the fetch OK has uh, both a, a starting, it has a range in it, has a start, and an, a start group object and an end start object. And that is what that fetch is going to return, OK? And so ignore the start for a minute. Let me just talk about the end. So on the end, if you request something beyond the live edge, it doesn't give you an error. It returns you an OK and says, I'm going to return up to whatever that thing thinks the live edge is. And we, this doesn't deal with the do we need to do a track request to get the live edge or not. This just says, instead of having to do a ra an extra round trip of fetches, you it, it, it tells you what it's going to do. Okay. Now, 
Christian had the point that like, hey, my relay might have a policy that I don't, I, I'm just not going to fetch anything that's earlier than X for you for some reason, right? So this is a way too, if you requested something earlier than that, it could just say, nope, I'm going to, this is all I'm going to return to you is, is this range of things. Um, so uh, now, so you'd get an okay back right away, which said the range, the range that the fetch was willing to fulfill. Um, and then in the data stream for that, assuming that it, it ended successfully, um, any objects that didn't show up in that data stream, you same as the existing proposal, you treat those as they don't exist, and I'm never going to get them. Um, and so I think that this makes yeah yeah. So um, you said the, the OK comes back instantly, but no, yeah. first there are fetches upstream yeah. to get the object. It can't be instant. It, no, sorry, not instantly. It comes back before any of the data. You still have the yeah. problem of knowing okay. where the live edge yeah. is or whatever. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. So it doesn't address, I think we should still discuss that as a separate issue of the, you know, you know, how do you know where the live edge is at the time of a fetch? But yeah. Uh, did, did you finish? That's it. Okay. Yeah. That's my proposal. Um, can I ask a clarification question on the proposal? Yeah. Can I also go? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Why, why do you need the first and the last, those seem arbitrary, actually? Because what you've indicated is that you're starting to send data and you put an end of fetch, and that says I'm done. So... That is what it is, and the client receives it. Isn't it redundant to say this is my first and my last, and then to send your first and your last with the end of file saying I'm complete? That's what I'm <laughs> getting queued for. Okay. Is the answer okay. You could not send those and simply just send your data, and as soon as you put end of file, the client knows. Yeah, okay. I, I, I had a reason why you want it in the control message and not in the data. Well, those next in queue. So, so if the, 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 the clarifying questions are. And, and maybe I should just jump in to get back in queue or something, but I mean, just to sort of answer why I was thinking of that. Is let's say you requested, let's say the only objects that exist are 1,000 and 2,000, and you request 1,100 to 1,200. I'm going to just return, I'm going to say yes. I'm going to, you, you fetch 1,100 to 1,200. I'll say yes, I'm going to give you 1,100 to 1,200, and then I will instantly send you an end of fetch because there's no data in that space, and that you will use that to know that 1,100 to 1,200 don't exist. I think the question is, isn't that the same as just not having those headers and I just send you an empty stream? Yeah. I just. I have a reason. Oh, you, about Mo has a reason. Mo. You go. Actually, yep. Okay. You, you, yeah, you, so I, I, I agree with Colin's uh, proposal. I think, um, I think a lot of people have also said the, the fetch error is not that, that sensible if, if they really can fulfill a large part of it. So I think the rest of the should be. I fetch, and the fetch OK is immediately returned. If the relay knows it can fulfill a subset of my of my request, any subset of my request, and I will I would say it should include the subset that it intends to fulfill in the header of the fetch OK because you don't want to wait at the data plane, which could be much much later to You're figure out where it's actually fill, what it's actually going to fulfill. I might want to know up front as a client what it's going to actually fulfill because it may cause me to do other fetches or other subscribes as a result of that. So I want that up front in the header so I can decide what subsequent fetches or subscribes I'm gonna do immediately, not waiting for the data plane to come. You know, if you, you have a large fetch for many objects, it could be a long time before you figure out where the where the fetch request ends. And I don't wanna wait for that. I wanna know right up front because I'm gonna do subscribe immediately now to get the live edge. Oh, well, yeah, but how do you handle gaps in this? Like we're assuming like, and actually, I had a proposal for that too. So we talked about having this uh, filter, object filter. I would like to see the object filter on the OKs also. So if I request something, I can return, no, I only have subgroup zero. I, I disposed of my temporal scalability layers, and I only have the base layer now. I'm going to fetch OK you, but I'm going to say the filter is subgroup zero. That's all I have. So you don't have to wait at the data plane to see every missing object. You're going to know you're only going to get the subgroup zero objects. And don't even try to render the high fidelity layer because you're never going to get it. Sue Ross. I'm sorry, Will. Will. Yeah. To, to me, the most important error to communicate to the player is if the range they're asking is, is unavailable because it's, in, it's going into the live head of a, of a live stream, or it's VOD and it's never going to be available. Yeah. That's what I want to communicate to the player. I think we, and anytime we want to validate the range, we're going to take an awful lot of time going upstream to find that answer. So, so fetch OK could take a second before we even get any data back. 
I think the model where fetch OK comes as long as the, the relay thinks it can send anything back. It just says, OK, I, I can do this. And then it sends it back. And because we've got a single stream, if objects are missing from that stream and it sends them in order, it's, a, uh, it's an unambiguous signal to the client that that does not exist. And it simply then the, marks the, when it says end of fetch, the client knows it's done. And we don't <coughs> need to communicate first and last. So what I want the error for is if you're asking for an object that is out of, out of range because it, the client needs to make a subscription. And that's, that's what we need to communicate to the client. The client may not know if the stream is live or not. Do us. I think when, when a relay receives a fetch, it knows if there's a live subscription or not. If not, it's very easy to say if there's no subscribers active, then, uh, then that means that the relay is not serving any live subscription. And if the request that comes falls in the range or it can satisfy any of such, such requests, it will return an OK. And if a request that comes uh, when there's no live uh, subscriptions uh, available and the request comes outside that range, it will basically return an error. Uh, and and that kind of solves the problem. Like, can really make a determinate, uh, deterministic decision or not? Because it knows if there's a like substitution at that point in time or not. Luke, I was going to say. Um, so the problem with an upfront error is the really needs an active subscription. So the live playhead is it's not cacheable. It's not live. It's one of those things that you only know it if you have a subscribe, and if you don't know it, you have to go upstream. Grouchy and somebody else. And Part of the problem is blocking the whole request on the state. Like you could immediately start serving group one, but you don't know if the left the tail is in that range yet without going upstream to validate it yet. So I, I think 100%. Like I don't I don't don't block the request just because the tail might be in the live playhead. You know that's the type of thing you can start <coughs> serving immediately. Like is is like the most obvious answer. Daniel, yeah, you can kind of. Plus on that, I don't like blocking at the very beginning to know the entire range. Um, but I will you kind of clarify? I was a little concerned about the idea that if we treat a missing object or missing group as just missing for good, that works in the middle. But if we allow it to extend past the end, we end up in these cases of like groups that don't exist now but will exist in the future, and we're kind of creating these conflicting definitions. Um, and so I, I do want to have some method to tell or some mechanism to say that this is an error. It's not available now because this is a potential object in the future versus this is just never going to exist, but it's on the end of your range. Alan? OK, I got in the queue as an individual because I've heard a couple of people say, like, oh, I want to know when the, that my, where my fetch crossed the live head so I know to do subscribe. But that is racy compared to doing it the other way because when you subscribe, you're going to get the stuff that's past it, but the live head's moving by the time the subscriptions happen. So if people really env envision that as a case, which is like <laughs> fetch up to the live head, then subscribe there, that needs to be a single message with everything in it in order to be able to like make that work without a race. Yeah, clarification on that. It's it's not so racy. Your your fetch can tell you that it encountered a, it encountered the live head at this object. Yep. In fact, and as Colin pointed out earlier, it it doesn't need even to say that. It can just say I encountered the live edge. Yep. That tells the client to go make a subscription. That's not racy yep. because the client can then subscribe, gets an unambiguous start to it, and then it can fetch up to that point. But it, that. Okay, it, it requires a second fetch. I mean, you can fill the gap, yeah, yeah. yeah. but it yeah, creates a gap. It's, it creates an unnecessary You avoid a race condition. You, it's a fetch, subscribe, fetch, versus if what you want to do, maybe you just want, like, fetch, then you subscribe. Fetch, yeah. Like, I think, does everybody agree with Alan that, that the only way to avoid a race is subscribe and then fetch? Whatever you did beforehand, it doesn't matter, but then you must yeah. finally do a subscribe and then a fetch for yeah. determinism. I mean, I think you either need, you, you do subscribe, you do a subscribe and then fetch back. That is deterministic. Or you can also do you can do fetch, subscribe, fetch. Or we create another thing, which is fetch, subscribe all in one, which is like, don't start my subscription until my fetch hits live. But we don't have that. We don't have. We could have but that. We have but we don't. <laughs> yes. OK, Self that's all I wanted to say. Yeah. Ian? Um, I actually uh, forgot. I had a few thoughts here. Uh, I think the, the atomic fetch, subscribe is like, actively harmful um and so i i mean this is a personal opinion um and one reason is like what order i do i what group order does anything get delivered in right there are use cases for which i want to start at the live edge and then i immediately want to backfill because say i want like ideally like a minute of you know read ahead buffer or something but like at some point i'm just going to give up and be like whatever i'm just going to start playing what i have 
right? And so in that case, I might make a subscribe and then make a subsequent fetch, but have the fetch be in reverse like group order. Um, but also there's the prioritization question, like is the live head more important or is the like buffer more important? Um, and separating these two things make it, makes it very easy to deal with the number of application use cases where like any one of those things might be true. And there are a number of situations where those exist. And like trying to put them in one atomic operation, I think is like super annoying. Uh, the other thing is you can just do a fetch, as long as fetch is willing to like get up to the live edge. If you do a fetch and subscribe, the worst case scenario is you end up with like one extra object or something because it's not quite atomic. And then you're like, do a, sub a fetch update and like get rid of the object. Mm -hmm. Seems fine. Like, is that like the worst area case to deal with? It seems like kind of pedantic. Um, so. Mm. Christian? But, um, oh, sorry, I wanted to add one thing. I would like the fetch to, the person who is fetching, as soon as possible, I would like them to know what they will get. So if at all possible in the fetch okay or whatever, I do think it would be very valuable for them to know what they what they expect. Um, for example, you can imagine one relay that only had like a minute of buffer in the past and another one that had like 30 minutes of buffer um, in certain use cases like you know, live uh, live sports and stuff. So anyway, sorry, I apologize for that. No worries, Christian. Yeah, and I I, I think that we are converging. It, it just one point on Cullen's proposal to provide. I mean, the the in the fetch bucket the list of what is returned. I think we should be very careful to differentiate between it ends at group ten because that is the end of the live stream and there is nothing after that versus it ends at group 10 because I don't have it yet. I might get it later, but not now. Colin. Um, yeah, that, I, I, I agree. That makes sense. And also stuff that you're never going to get for policy errors versus for policy reasons versus doesn't exist reasons. But what I was going to say is we, we keep having this sort of uncomfortableness that uh, we need to go back to the origin or to the publisher to find out what the, the live edge a little bit is. And I just want to point out there's, there's a few things that make me not really very concerned about that. Um, subscribe's already like that. Um, you know, we have lots, like it's not that long to go back. Um, I really don't have any problem with starting to send data, the fetch data, before the fetch OK. Like, I think I, I don't think that the matter is if the data arrives before the fetch OK does, but, though I think it should come soon so you know what you're getting. Um, and we have this other thing, never minding the live edge. If you want to know whether the track name even exists or not, like if you don't know anything about this track, you have to go back to the in, in, in beginning to even find out whether the track name even exists and whether it's a valid request in the slightest. <laughs> So I think we're going to have lots, of, like in the case where you're the first client ever asking for this data, I think we will end up with the case where the relays need to go all the way back to find out something. Um, and in the case, and as long as that's cacheable so that not, so if a million clients do it, we don't have a million people going back is the important thing, right? Which, which is our current design. So I'm not really worried about that. So I'm fine with the, like, that we do need to go back to get where the live edge is a little bit. I'd be fine with there's data flowing before that OK returns, but that the OK should, in most cases, return right away, um, modulo the time to go right back to the end. Suhas? Yeah, uh, I, I won't echo um, Ian's sentiments about autonomy, uh, because the more I think about what every really hop that I need to do, and also think about uh, Especially the, my my thinking came back to the conclusion about the, the sending an ascending order or split between the priorities between the fetch and subscribes. Right now, what it provides is uh, the current uh, the way we are trying to solve the transition. Yes, it requires one extra fetch to do towards the end for a small gap that it needs to be filled. Um, I think it gives us the right tools to start play, and with experience, we can we can see if it can be optimized if needed. Um, so I, I would I would go with like what we have and also pretty okay with saying that if a fetch can return an okay, if it can solve any of the things in the request, if it, if it can make, then uh, returning an okay would at least totally fine. That way the client knows that it eventually the data will come. Can we just maybe pause there and say, does anybody want to argue that 
we should go back to the proposal, which said, so what Stu has just, is anyone is, want to speak against, if the relay can serve anything, you get an okay. Or is everyone, you don't like that. Oh, no, I like that. Yeah. Okay, so everyone. Just, you're, you're in the queue. You're, you're, yeah, just, yeah. I'm just like pausing to take a temperature. So if you're, com if you're coming into the queue to say that you should never, no need to plus one, or you can just briefly say. Can, can we just clarify? The okay means I'm going to open up unidirectional stream I'm and send open, you some stuff. And send you some and stuff. If I send you an error, I'm not going to open up a stream. And how do people feel about that? I see some nodding heads. Plus one. Some thumbs up. <laughs> okay. okay. That, I know the semantics are clear, I guess. That, good. This is, okay. Okay. That, that seems good. The, the proposal is if you <coughs> if you if you if you have a partially fulfillable fetch that you will that the sender will send this fetch okay instead of a fetch error and will deliver whatever it can deliver and then like, there's some sort of tombstone that says you hit the live edge we're done. Yeah. What is the time at which the Position of the tomb status. That's the next thing we're going to figure out. <laughs> yeah. Does it come in the okay or does it come at the end of the data stream? Because those are the two options, right? So wait, so just or in somewhere in between. Or both. Or I don't know. A midler. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. okay. like, are we at least okay with the concept that you shouldn't err up front if your range was too wide? That's the question. Well, I, it seems like no one's no one's speaking no against speaking it. On. So no, yeah, they, let's so go forward. Why, with that. Yeah. You want to speak? You want to make an error? If I fetch past the left end, you want an error? We should either make that an error or we should auto convert you to subscribe. But I'm sort of half of it. Well, hang on, hang on. Don't, like, don't auto convert yet. Yeah. yeah. But I think I want, That's I want to ask, <laughs> I, I want to ask, I just want to clarify a question on this one. Is my understanding now is that you would, if you wanted to do the fetch and fetch business of like, you know, catching up and so on, what you would do is typically you would say fetch from 20 to 100,000 and then just allow it to catch up to. Uh, the live edge and have it tell you where the live edge is and then you do a subscribe. That's not what you would do? No. Yeah, okay. What would you do? Spec, spec, the, the proposal before would fetch subscribe, if that's the use case you want is fetch subscribe fast. So you fetch something, uh -huh. it tells you the live head, you subscribe when you get close, and then you, of course that kind of moved, uh -huh. and then you have to refetch the gap. That was what people That said. was the original proposal, but the one you're talking about. I'm not now. making any different proposal than that. I'm just saying like you don't get any, the original slides we looked at this morning said you get an error if the end of your range is past the live head, and, and no, no one in this room wants that. So we're going to take that away. Uh, right. uh, you really want it. Confused. Okay. What is the use case for fetching something that you, that is past the live head? The use case is that you don't have to know, or you don't have to get penalized for guessing wrong. You don't have to take another RTT to yeah. refetch. The use so, case is you do plus group size. And you just don't know. This is like play head is. classic HTTP get yeah. with like the end of range header where the range equals nine 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 nine. What's that? What are you trying to do? I'm trying to build. To, to to determine if there's control. control. <laughs> so so. Do you mind if I sort of? Okay, maybe I'm. Maybe we need to go back to the queue. If the, I think there was consensus on this, but Victor seems. Can you can you go to the live head of the of the um, oh, notes? So I actually have a question about that. Um, so you're not going to open a unidirectional stream or any sort of stream in that case to deliver any data because there's no data to deliver. So I thought the contract was if you know you're going to send an object, then it's an okay. And if you're not going to send an object, it's an error, partially because if we're trying to communicate the range that you're going to deliver in the okay, which I would love if that's possible, because it just seems clean, then like there is no range you're gonna, it's the null range. So I guess you could say nothing, but that like- is, That is the proposal that it's, Alex- It's either unknowable or it's, I mean, so the, the fact that it's unknowable is concerning by itself, by the way, but anyway. Who's against that? I, okay, so so far the only person I hear speaking that they, they want an error if the range is past live head is Victor. Does anybody else think that- No, I want that too. Yeah, yeah. Want an error? Oh, I want that. That's, that's the, oh, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah I mean, what, what are you gonna- yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, Mixing two different yeah. things. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Sure. Am I confused? Okay. Right. Guys, guys. No, no, I, no, 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 no. Stop. Okay. Let, let's scale back. Let's scale back your call for consensus. Do you think you should get data? Uh, so if there's a fetch and like at least one line edge, that data should come back if the if the thing is data, or should you get nothing? Whether That's it's an okay or an error is a separate issue. Ah, okay. You're saying if the relay can fulfill a subset of your request, yes. is that an okay or is that an error? No, I'm sure. not asking that. That's, that's specifically what I'm withdrawing. Is data going to, are, are objects going to come back if I can fill them Anyhow, based off that, that like erroneous fetch? Only a subset. Well, obviously, if it doesn't yes. exist, you can. I agree with Mo. Yeah. 
it, okay. Is anyone just Victor? Yeah, uh, I just I sort of. It depends. This is like you just made it worse. I think. But, but, <laughs> but it, it depends. Okay. Uh, if if in that okay, okay, I find out what the end is soon, right? Then I'm okay with this. But if I don't find out until the end of the stream, it doesn't work for me because then it's too late for me to do another fetch to start getting the data and I'll underflow my buffer, right? So the answer to your question, it depends on the other part. Okay, like we can't, whether we can't I separate the two yeah. discussions. Yeah. Right. Let's go back yeah. to the queue. We'll, we'll John, go back, we'll go back yeah, to the queue and get in the queue if you're... Read the one one right. Right. Uh, well, I thought we were close, but then yeah. we're not. Okay, so it's good. Q is John and Victor, Jonathan, Will, Luke. Okay, so I'm going to ask this question just to make sure that I don't even know what page I'm on at this point. Sure. I'm going to ask the question here, right? So there's one question which is around um, if you let's forget the live edge completely. You are a, a client is requesting a fetch, and you have an incomplete set of objects. It seems to me that that's that's one question. Should we respond with okay or with error in that case? And to me, that seems like it should be okay. Yes. Um, the second question is if the client requests something that is beyond the live edge. Partially. Partially? Yes. Like right, of course, of course. Yes, yes, yes. yes. The so the that, that's the example I was talking about earlier, which is you request from like 10 to 1 million, right? Yes. And uh, in that case, should it be an error or not? Yes. And my understanding now is that uh, if you didn't have an error, uh, but you kept sending objects down the pike, what Colin is saying that he at least needs an indication of where the live edge is, so he can initiate a subscribe as soon as possible. But um, so I can initiate a subscribe as I get close to the live edge. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Oh, like, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, okay. So I'm seeing nodding heads. I just want to make sure that I was on the same page. Um, but my opinion in this case is, is yes, I, I like the idea of I having an open ended fetch, um, which allows you allows allows closer to fetch plus subscribe semantics. Victor. Uh, I thought like we established in the beginning of today the following. Basically, the only cases in which you would catch up is uh, you're consuming data at faster than real time, like watching at 2x, and then you want to subscribe to, like, at some point you transition to live head, and then you... Uh, but the problem is the only way you can transition to live head is if you subscribe, and then fetch in between, like the gap yeah. where yeah, you that's... are and now. Yes, that's some change. And the thing with like I will return you partial data is completely useless because the correct order is subscribe to fetch. You cannot fetch and subscribe because what will happen is fetch. You we will try to fetch. Fetch will tell you I am fetching up to this point and then I'm bailing out, and then you subscribe. But and you subscribe back. later, and then there is this gap yes, between right. the well, No, then you have, yeah, you had to fill the gap. Okay. Because, 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 because now you have to issue another one. That was because you can do fetch subscribe in that case. Alan's point a long time ago was the only way to avoid any race is subscribe, then fetch. Yeah. Whatever you do beforehand doesn't matter. You must eventually do a subscribe, then fetch to be deterministic. Anything yeah, so else you is not deterministic. No, I do not understand what is the point of fetch and get something. Because then you don't have to do the last fetch. No, you always you have to do the last fetch. But that's but not if not if you do the at the end you say that now I'm no longer giving you anything because I've hit the live edge. Uh, but, if you but, give that if you give the fetch okay at the beginning and you say that here's where subscribe head is, then during the time that you're delivering the fetch, that's time. But, You've but lost that time. The reason you fetch without a subscribe is because you don't want the subscribe coming in. You don't you don't want to buffer. You're doing a long fetch from the long time in the past. You don't want to buffer all the new live edge subscribe. So you're only doing a fetch. Yes, but if you are at the point where you're fetching something that would run into live you edge. You don't even know the live edge. So you just said fetch, fetch from zero to infinity. Give me the whole track. And, he, and, and the relay said, I can start giving you the track from 12 minutes ago up until now. And now is group 587. And so... Then you have in that header that Colin wanted, you have in that fetch okay header, this is the range that I'm gonna get. I can decide now whether or not I want to do a subscribe to the live edge also, or I'm gonna wait and I'm just gonna not buffer the live Why edge because it's gonna take me 15 minutes to play back. So I'm gonna keep fetching, fetching, fetching until I'm close to the live edge, then I'll do a subscribe. But, you do, but the live edge has moved. So why not signal and that? Why not signal that near the end of your fetch? 
like what I'm what I mean is by the with, with, at the end the sender knows it doesn't have an object to send, so it goes send an EOF. When you receive an EOF, you could give the live head along with that. I think Colin pointed out that that's a too little late. bit too late. Too late. Too late. Yeah. All right. For a long fetch, it's too late. Okay, uh, let's get back to the queue. Jonathan, wait, wait, Victor, did you complete your point? Uh, I mean, I have another point which I think is more important. Do it. <laughs> yeah. uh, I think the entire point is moot because for the reasons of protocol efficiency, which do not have anything to do with round trips, we should do fetch converting to subscribe. Uh, now, uh, in order to do, explain why, I have to repeat something and actually disagree with what Ian <coughs> said. Ian said that atomic subscribe and fetch is bad because uh, it ignores the question of ordering. The, this is not entirely true. So when you're trying to fetch the current group. And priority. Is it ordering and priority? Oh, yeah, and priority. When you're trying to fetch the current group, uh, there is a very specific order. Like one of the properties that MLQ is trying to provide is generally you receive your group in like the order of objects because you assume that generally your objects are not useful. And one of the worst things we can do is to send users data which is not useful when we could be sending data that is useful. Uh, and that is what we're actively trying to do. Uh, and if we are trying to fetch current group, we have to do a fetch from the beginning. And the reason we have to do fetch from the beginning uh, is uh, there is the group can be quite big, uh, and we need flow control in sense in the case where something goes wrong and the group grow like the gap, like you try to fetch the current group, but you just cannot get behind even on that group level. Like that is one case where we really need flow control. Then you need to, to convert it to subscribe as soon as you catch to that. Can I ask a cool one clarifying question? Yeah. It's very quick about your, your proposal. Is it are you intending that is the only way to fetch, fetch then subscribe? Or are you saying there's fetch like we've described it, and then there's also fetch then subscribe? Because I think some people think you're, that there's a proposal for only one and they don't like that. But maybe I'm reading it. Uh, that can be a flag. You, you are not. Okay. So, I mean, yeah. so, Jonathan, so both are okay, is what you're saying. For the notes, do we have any objection to, the, to what the proposal is? You were the only one that had an objection to the proposal. You still have an objection to the proposal to return uh, objects, even though the requested range is out of range. Uh, I think it, it it encourages incorrect behavior. So you're still opposed. Yeah, I think as any plan that does it does not do what it wants to do. Okay, and you, are you relying down on the road here? Uh, no, it's a busy uh, road. <laughs> Plenty of company. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> this door is full of people. Jonathan, you're up. And you're muted. Yeah, no, I was waiting till you were actually done. Um, yeah, so, I mean, I feel like I've been hearing some tension between wanting the fetch okay immediately <laughs> versus wanting information that you don't have to go upstream to get to, um, to you know, the inf you know, to send to the client. And I'm wondering if there actually needs to be like some sort of updated fetch info message that says, here's new information I have about your ongoing fetch, which I didn't have when I initially uh, replied to it. Um, that I'm not exactly sure what that should be, but I think that, you know, for the pieces of information that people are saying, you know, here's no information that I got from the original publisher to know precisely what you're going to get in this fetch. Um, now, how exactly that works is I haven't really worked out. I'm just sort of speaking out of my head here, but I'm wondering if this is uh, if this would be useful. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is Cullen mentioned that you know you could get start getting the fetch before you actually get the fetch the fetch okay, and I think that's going to happen. You know, unless we spend an extra round trip because they're on different quick streams, so um, there's going to be cases where that happens regardless. So we might as well make it useful. Well, yeah. To me, the the core clarity here: if if you make a, a fetch for ten to fifteen and the last object is 12, there's two reasons it's the last object. One is it's the last object the, the original publisher ever made. 
And the other reason is they've only made 11, but it's a live stream, and there will be 12, but it'll be in the future. So we need a way to communicate those two states, right? Because then the client has a different reaction in each one. And we do have a signal, if, unless I'm mistaken, for the last object in a track. Yes. So we, the, the publisher, if you ask for a range 10 to 15 and 12 has been signaled, you could confidently return some type of message saying 12 is the last thing and they'll never be, that's it, we're done. And if that's not there, then the notion that it's live has to be communicated. And that's the part we're missing here. So I feel on our fetch, we can, we can return up to 10 and 11, and then we have to give one of these two signals that 12 is the last one, or 12 is part of a live stream and isn't produced. So from the notes we had, Jonathan mentioned that same point, and Alan said we need to discuss this deterministic end of track signal. Yeah. yeah. We have an end of track, but we don't have a, this is a live stream signal. Luke, the, so, the relay doesn't know. So going back to use cases, the number one use case for fetch is going to be bot. So let's say somebody fetched this from 0 to 10, the start of the bot. Sure. See, the, the, the relay fills that cache, populates it. Another viewer comes on and says, I want 0 to 15. Right now, with, with, the, with the discussion, the, the, the relay is not allowed to start serving 0. It's not allowed to serve from cache. Because it has to go all the way to origin to see if 15 is the live playhead. Which just seems like taking crazy pills. Like, like serve from cache. And maybe 15 was the live playhead. We, can, we should have a way of figuring that deferred. Like, we don't need to block every single fetch on knowing the exact state of the world before you can find anything. Um, the optimization as well, like the, the fact being told what the live playhead is, maybe I fetch zero for 15 and the, the CDN comes back and says the live playhead is 18 or something. Uh, to what Alan said, like, that's a premature optimization because by the time you get there, it's not going to be 18 anymore. It's going to be 20. It's going to be 22. And the only way you can actually recover and know what the live playhead is, is to subscribe. So I think Fetch should just return what's ever in cache as much as it can. If you have information about this object is not available, indicate it. It's an error. It's live or it's missing or whatever. Jonathan, are you still in the queue? Christian, you're up. Jonathan. Yeah, I mean... When I hear the discussion, there was one thing that uh, triggered me is that say, if I want to get past the live edge, I'm going to request uh, object one to one million or one gazillion or whatever. Uh, I I think we should have a, a semantic there that says, I am requesting from object X to the live edge or to basically as far as you can. And, and so, and and if we have that semantic, then we can make the difference between the um, basically the, the misinformed client that requests one to one million because he believes that there is a one, one million object in the cache, and and which should get an error. I said, don't do that. And the uh, and the client that wants to just get everything that you have, which should return, I mean, basically a fetch OK, which this is what I have. And the fetch OK should have a clear semantic that says, I am going to send you 1 to 10 because that's my cache so far. <clears throat> it, it, does, it doesn't mean that there's nothing after that, but it means that that's my cache so far. And then you can do an informed decision. Clarifying on that, you can't say I, I'm going to from from a point to the live edge because the live edge is constantly moving. Yeah. I'm not telling the live edge. I'm not saying the live edge. I'm saying what you have in cache. Okay. That's immaterial because the cache is not the the authority on on the content. No, no, no. But basically, the the difference between you and me, Will, is that I believe that live edge is a relay concept. Take an extreme thing, experiment. Suppose that your relay is on Mars. Okay, we have we have a collection of rockets that have placed a number of things in various positions on the space between the Earth and Mars, and you have an IP connection that goes all the way to Mars, and you have a relay on Mars, and you have subscribed to a, a video on demand there, and you have a relay, of course, because 
you want all the uh, astronauts on Mars to use the same relay and the same cache. You don't want them to fetch that each one at a time. The live edge for that football game on Mars will always be 20 minutes after the live edge on Earth. There is no way you will have it otherwise, okay? So that doesn't mean that the relay shall not serve you what it has. But so there, there is a... That, Christian. I, I would so, say so, even so, for so, the... So, so, the, so the live edge for the relay, the live edge is not the same as the live edge at the origin. It's a local concept. That still doesn't change the problem that it moves. Uh, it does move, it does move, but, but I say, but the relay can make an informed decision and says, yep, I can serve you one to 10. And there is something after that, that I don't know yet. And then you live with that. Either you subscribe to it or you, whatever. And if you want the relay to give more information, they can always send a track status message. Colin. Okay, okay. so to, 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 two things on this. Like, I, I was going to actually come in on this, this definition of live. I mean, I do think live edge is roughly, and it's hot, so we should eat it. The relay, it's a concept, it's a local concept, but the relay, and so, you know, what Christian said, look, the latest thing you're talking to, the latest thing it's seen, uh, assuming that it has something that will keep it up to date. Uh, so, so, so again, I, I don't want us to, I, it, it, the, when I get the okay, I need to have an idea. If I'm getting an okay, I need to have an idea of what the largest object is I should expect in that range at that point in time, because that's what's going to be delivered to me. I don't want that to keep shifting out as the live edge moves. Um, so I, I think, you know, that, that when I said that, like, that, that the weather is okay with, suppose uh, we had way back that Martin had, and I said, it depends. I think it depends on that. Like, if we, you know, as long as we can get a number in there that's like, here's what you're going to expect to get out of this fetch. As long as I know that, that's fine. Um, the other thing is we keep talking about this combining fetch and subscribe. And I'm like, like I, I can understand doing that later, but we have such a hard time describing how the data plane for this works. It's easy to describe how the combination of the API request works. I really feel very strongly we need to write PRs and write this and get it into the draft and agreement as two separate things, fetch and subscribe. And once we have that, it may be very obvious how to make a combined version of them. I've got no problem against that. But we're just, I don't think we'll make progress unless we try and keep those reasonably separated for now. And I agree they have an optimization gain. And we'll figure out whether we need that optimization gain. We'll figure out how hard it is. And it's, it's not about the API, it's about the data plane. Uh, Christian, if you're not in the queue anymore, lower your hand, please. Uh, Suhas. Yep, uh, I, I want to kind of uh, take a step back and say, we are assuming that um, yeah, a live edge or the latest edge group and object that the relay knows uh, and where the current publisher's live edge might be too far, especially when I'm talking about the case we are transitioning from smooth, uh, from the old to new. In that case, we are, we are assuming that, you know, it will be too far at any point in time so that you, it's, it's, it's hard to kind of figure out the gap and other things. But it's, it's, it's not the case, right? If, if there's live stream going on, the, the state on the relay will not be very far from where the, where the live edge, the publisher is publishing at. Um, so I, I would still still think uh, fetch <coughs> should provide a range of things it has in its cache. That's the hottest uh, information about that track. And it says that this is this is what I can serve you, and at, at some point uh, a player would, is the more uh, in the state to understand how much of the gap it needs to fill if it wants transition to subscribe, and it fills another does another fetch and fills a gap. This gives us the simple implementation where OK says a range can be to in the, the what case uh, where, where there's no publisher or anything the, the range is all you can get. In non what cases you don't have to say it's what or non what the range is what the uh, release view of the caches at that point in time, and if it's an active subscription, you'll do one more fetch, and that fetch will not be too big because you are very close to the live edge. I I think we are trying to make it more complicated here and try to keep it simple. I will learn from this implementation. Clarifying comment: It's not simple for a cache builder to traverse the cache every single time you ask for something. You're not traversing the cache. You just what said I want to tell you what I have in cache. I have to traverse my cache to look. I have to search it. Oh, you have to. When you do fetch, you have to look into a cache, right? To know if something is there or not. No, I just process it linearly. I fetch first object, then the second, but I don't go look for everything up front and see where the holes are. No, That's you, an expensive uh, so sorry, operation. Then. You're asking for zero to thousand. 
Yeah. You I don't want to it. search my cache and verify that all thousand objects are there. No, no. You want to search if you have what is your maximum object, what's the minimum object. That's all you need to search. You're not searching the cache. You're the min of something and max of something. That's your range. You're saying that I will satisfy your range falls in this one. I'll satisfy you. Whatever you ask for, I can satisfy only this range. That can be within your range or it completes everything. It, that's not <coughs> if it's asking, can you officially find your maximum object ID? Okay. Why not? You can't. It's a problem. Well, I think that's an expensive operation. That yeah. being the, uh, the yeah. problem. Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, yes. If you're, if you're, hang on, hang on. I mean, if you're storing it in an index, then maybe it isn't. But if you've just got a bunch of random yeah, objects, then you're going to go through the object to figure out what objects yeah. are in the thing. You're actually reading through the entire file before you actually say anything. This is, so, if you, you're either storing as a set of objects, as a group, and so you have to, like, scan it or write it in an index somewhere, uh, or you're storing them as separate objects, in which case you have to go look uh, up each object and then be able to respond to this. Those are the only two ways. You're definitely storing objects. The objects are definitely... If you're storing objects and you're looking up, that's that's my plan as well. But if you're storing objects, then you're going to look up each of those objects in the list before you respond. The question is... For, for real, then how are you responding? It, it, without you're, looking you're, you're, you're asking the question... Sorry, you're just asking about the last object you have is, and yes, you have to have that in an index. No, if, if I'm saying yes, you have to have I have to have the whole thing. This is in HTTP. I'm just telling you. delivered to you as an object, not a file. I don't seem easy to implement. But look, in, in HTTP, you keep track of your file names in an index? Yes. Oh, right? file this is in the index? file name. This is part of the name. No, no, hang on. We don't keep track of all the file names... I'm, I'm not following what you're saying. We have a cache key. Yeah, cache you, key. You, you generate a hash and you go look up the, the particular okay, hash I, key. I don't want, okay, we're getting a cache. Key. So, so yeah. okay, hang on, hang on. So, so, some people are assuming that it's, it's trivial to know that it's the highest object, object it's hash key. You probably need to point. rethink it a little bit. That's, that's, right, that's, right. It will be. Okay, then we're done. <laughs> yes, no problem. But, uh, but, but we're looking up all the objects, no? In that range? Wait, okay. you no. Said, it's a, it's a yeah. All right. Missing something uh, let's move. Ian, you've been waiting a long time. Uh, thanks. So now I've built up three points. Um, I, I agree with Luke. Um, one conversation, please. Huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. One, one conversation at a time, please. Yeah. That um, you should be able to, you should be able to, and people are fundamentally going to. It doesn't really matter if you let them. They're going to send objects before fetch OK, because you talk to people at YouTube, and they're going to be like, yeah, yeah, I can send it now, right? And you're not going to close the connection. Cool. Thanks. <laughs> That's the end of that conversation. <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry, it's like. That's how simple it is. It's like, I don't really care about your protocol. Um, as long as you're not going to close the connection. So yeah, unless you're going to close the connection, then they're going to do it. Um, that being said, getting a fetch okay in a relatively timely manner is helpful, um, especially if it includes like what the end of the thing you're going to get is. Um, and so I, I still think that's valuable just from like a protocol behavior, predictability, et cetera, perspective. Um, I don't think having an equivalent signal later is valuable because it's like, well, I'm going to decide as a server and a publisher, like when I think you need this signal, like, no, that's going to be very unreliable, right? Like if you are getting close to live head for some reason and you're playing at, you know, 1.25 X speed or something, then you can do a track status whenever the player thinks it's getting too close to live head that it needs like more read ahead. That seems like a much more reliable mechanism than <laughs> having the, uh, publisher do something at some arbitrary point in time that I don't know specifying. Um, and then the other thing is like, I do think that Christian's idea of an explicit indicator of subscribe to live, um, you know, up until live for fetch is, is useful. Um, I think it's slightly cleaner than the, you know, throwing a giant number in and hoping it works. Um, in my opinion, that being said, I could live with either, but I do think it's, I think it's a fundamentally better approach. If I was really like gonna spell it the way I'd like to spell it, um, so those are the three things. Thanks, John. So um, I got in queue to say the the last point that Ian just made. I, that that is a good, very good point, and I agree with that. Christian's idea of going to live edge is better than leaving, allowing for a requester to request one to million. It's effectively saying one to live edge. It's, it's better to have a proper sentinel there than a arbitrary number. So, and it will get used that way. Um, I think that is valuable. The second thing I wanted to say was uh, that I agree wholeheartedly with Suhas. I think having simple, ha this is not the end of it, uh, maybe what Cullen said earlier, actually. 
that having the fetch and the subscribe separately right now and maybe allowing this one degree of freedom is plenty for us to play with. We have, I think that, that we have a particular way of repeatedly shooting ourselves in the foot with powerful weapons. So let's use these weapons and build what we can. And if something comes out of it that is painful, then we go fix it. So to me, fetch is always okay if you have anything to serve. Um, you're allowing fetch to, uh, you have the open-ended one, which is fetch to live edge, and then you've got subscribe. And I think that that should be plenty of degrees of freedom to play with right now. I got some toes left. So I'm ready for a new foot gun. So, so uh, Victor's <laughs> next, and I'm going to close the key soon and to do another chair temperature check. So um, raise your hand if you oh, want. I forgot to crack that. It uh, sounds like we should just ship that and figure out what we're doing with live edge when we get to yeah. fixing subscribe. Okay. Let's ship a fetch first. Thank you. Wendell. Trish. He was close. <laughs> yes. Yeah, sorry. Uh, I was considering fetch with descending order as well. And so in that case, it's a minimum. I mean, it's the starting of the range that should be uh, uh, indicated. And if so, is this one we should know if it's available or not. Otherwise, it's an error, right? So, and so it means that when we receive the, the fetch in the descending order, we should reorder everything because, you know, the expiration of the uh, data, the publisher side couldn't be complex. Yes. Okay, thanks, Wendell. So, all right, so we've talked about this now for a long time, this particular item. Uh, we've, some other items have merged in, like, or kind of bled in, like, should we be able to fetch to the live edge, et cetera, explicitly. Um, which to me is a separate issue, I think. But um, all right, so the, the, so this is ultimately about what's going to go into a PR, which we're then going to argue about. So I think the real question for group productivity here is like how much high bandwidth conversation can we have here that's actually advancing the ball? So we took a poll a while ago. Let's take another poll and see if anyone's budged. Okay, so I, I think there are two things on the table right now. One is what the proposal currently says which is when you request past the live edge, you get a fetch error and you get nothing, no data. And the second thing, this, the a second alternative is you get a fetch okay and whatever data you can get and then some sort of error indication to TBD. Um, <laughs> is there some other option that I'm- So I think the one I heard is the one from Christian slash someone over in this direction, which is like <laughs> fetch to live or fetch, fetch to, like, can you include a, if I have an actual number, 1 million, yes. versus I have a sentinel, which is max, like, yep. which could be the live head or it could be the end of track. Yep. Um, so maybe you could distinguish where if you say fetch 1 million and that doesn't exist, you get an error, but so it's sort of a middle ground. Okay, so this but, is if you say fetch, but if you say fetch to max, you can't dot, you can't, you can't lose. That, there's no error there. You can't error. Yeah. Um, okay. So I, I don't know if that helps or not helps. I, let's start. Okay. okay. So, so, so is this, is, is this a three headed thing now where we have, I don't know. <laughs> I, 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 I thought I heard that if, a, if a sub range can be fulfilled, I thought I heard earlier that if, if yeah. only one object can be returned, that it was, should be a fetch okay. If any object at all can be returned that is in that sub range, then in, in any sub range of the whole range, even if the even if the two endpoints are that, bogus, that is one of the one. that is one of the proposals. I, I, but that's not what the that's what that's not what the current right. the, current document says. Or that document I, I, I mean, slide says. Implicit assumption here is that the fetch is always fetched to live by default. No matter what you ask, if, if you make if you make the thing that is always fetched until live. How do you Did you disagree with the three options that are proposed? You, you disagree with the three You should options. write them down if yes. you want. I think, I, think I, I, I think there's one option there's on one the option. table. Like, it's, 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 I think there's one option. Yes, one option. So, well, first of all, so, so let, me, let me try and rephrase it. Okay. Uh, and I think that the, the one, we, we should say, yes, we should replace what's in the stuff that was presented this morning with this option or not. It's a yes, no yes. decision. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, which option do you think? Which of the three options do you think is the but, one? But, is... Let me just try and describe that. This is just one, one thing, and see, see if it makes sense to you, okay? But I mean, I think three options are. You can't get to consensus with three options. We'll just get. Like, well, well, so, what is here. the status quo? Okay. Two. Status quo is it returns an error if you request beyond the yes. edge, okay? I think the topic of 
should we have an indicator that means the, the, the Christian's point of whether we should have an indicator to say live edge versus using 1 million? That's a totally orthogonal topic. Let's just leave that alone. Everyone's going to agree on that. That's not going to be an issue, right? That's, that doesn't matter here, really, right? Like, that, that's a well, separate issue. Okay. Sure. That, that, ex that is about the range you're requesting. It's not about whether you get an error or an okay. Right, those are two separate orthogonal well, things. Well, like, I think I'm convinced that that's, I thought that at first, but I'm not convinced it's the case anymore. Oh, okay. Because, oh, well, because the point is, once you have that option, once you have that parameter that allows you to do that, then there's no reason that you should trigger an error. Because in the case where you're, where you're trying to get to the live edge, you will, you can just say that and you will not get your error. Whereas now you get an error, then you have to go, go through the, the whole deal again. Because you 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 have to guess and you're you're, you're going to guess wrong and you get it. Uh, Martin, it sounds like it's our token. Ask for one to a million, and the relay has exactly one and a million, but nothing in between. Is that an error? Is that an okay? That's an okay. That's an okay. That's an okay. That's, that's, an okay. Right? Yeah, that's, that's the original proposal. proposal. All right, I, I think subset. I'm going to say that maybe Colin. I didn't get to the line, but a lot, what the proposal was. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I, thought, <laughs> anyway, I think I'm sort of with like it'll be easier for this group if we say like, do you want an error, or do you want something else? And then we can argue about something else. I think the principle here is probably useful. I think Karan is on to the. I, I think so. I mean, I, I think that I think that that is actually. I I would I do, I think there's there's one proposal. I agree. The extension. So so the current situation. Let me let me describe this. Let me describe this. Okay. The current proposal in the document says if you ask for anything that's out of range, for what the what the uh, entity has. Uh, it's an error. Now, that's a weird one because then you have to go figure out what the range is. If you have an object, let's say you ask for one to a million, right? You have one. You don't know what the live head is. Let's say that's the relay. You're not going to error. You're going to say, I'm going to give it to you. Is that right? In the current proposal? No, but error no, in the current no. proposal. No. Because you have to go fix the live head and figure out what it is and so on. Okay, okay. If fine, the relay is going to go back and get the live edge yep. from the yep. publisher yep. and then and then error, error. Okay. okay. What do you mean by current proposal? That's okay. the status quo. That's fine. Okay. The second proposal to me is simply fetch to live. Maybe that's different from what you were thinking. And if it is, then we need to pull that up. But, okay. but that's to me the second proposal. So, so if there's nobody that wants, so okay, I don't get it. Very quickly, does anyone want a case where it returns okay on a partial fetch and we don't have fetch to live? Or Okay. We'll All right. Great. Right. Okay. All right. So let me articulate a second right. proposal. Okay. So there's the status quo. That, that do you possible. want what's the current proposal from this morning? Do you, is that exactly what you want, or do you want to change to it? Uh, I am fine changing it to not error for the reason Luke just cracked it, but it's really big. Yeah, you had to go to the other. All right. I do not think fetch to life is useful. Okay. Just so, so there's I'm, a I'm there's with the Luke and Victor on this one. Oh. You're with Victor. Uh, I, I think I think that Luke's point. Even if it's like Luke, useful, it's I optimization. It's a RTC optimization. It's always racy. We've, we've already agreed right. that it's always racy. So why, okay, why do we so let's, if it's racy? Okay, so let's remove that right Remove here. that from the problem space then. And people. And like Cole said, it's orthogonal. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. CV. Having a code point for live edge is a totally it orthogonal help. thing. Yeah. Okay, no, we're not right. going to do things again. Okay. It's, it's not entirely orthogonal. That's right, it's not. That's it, no problem. At the it point is. at which you, at the All point right. at which you reach the live edge, uh, the sender is going to have to uh, change the mode from moving stuff out of storage to providing stuff from the live stream. And so at the point at which your fetch catches up with the live edge, I think you're going to get a response back saying, success, it's not an error, it's success, you've now reached the live edge. However, at the point where you've done that, and you're now seeing the stuff live, you're going to have to subscribe. And the right. subscribe, and then you're stop the last. Last. And we've described this, that, like, this conversation has occurred 20 times this morning. You're going to have to fetch, subscribe, fetch, or else you'll miss stuff. Yes. Okay. That's but not somebody's going to have to have cash. And the question is whether the cash is the responsibility for the soft landing is on the client or at the server. But the transition is the more contentious part. The, the, the first and easier thing to get consensus on is, do we think that a fetch for endpoints that cannot be fulfilled should immediately be failed, or it should be okayed with the new endpoints that can be fulfilled? That's the, that's the first that's the question. That's the first thing to figure that's out. That's what we're trying, that's what we're trying to get to. 
Does anybody disagree with that? Well, just put it very well. What are the endpoints? Okay. The, the, the fetch request for for starting range, starting end endpoints, if that cannot be fulfilled exactly, the starting end endpoints cannot be fulfilled, is is it okay for the relay to say, okay, and here are the new starting end endpoints that can be fulfilled? Or it has to say error, here are the starting endpoints that I that I can fulfill. But you have to do another fetch to get those. It's do you follow up with another fetch? Or does the fetch turn into an okay? And just give you that that subset range. Yeah, that's the that's the question. Once yep. it's all done, then transitioning is transition to lie lie with more like additional like, that's that's right. Right. So you know, like, that's the point is that quest. so yeah. here's the reason that I think. Let me not go into transition to lie. Okay. Right. But aside, it's fine. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I want to cut this. So we spent yeah. 15 minutes trying to. So like, I said there were three alternatives, and people spent 15 minutes arguing there aren't, and there, I, there are three three yeah. different positions being argued. So we're just, I, I wrote three down. Okay, can you put those three up? Can you push? No, put them on the screen. They are on the screen. Okay. Proposal one, two, three. Except one's a crowd. So you got a live edge. Okay, proposal. Let me fix all the errors for me. Okay, so so on proposal two, can we can we fetch beyond the live edge? Returns an okay. So. The, returns the okay, and the okay has information about the available so data add, to be returned, not some signal. Okay, hit so live some edge. signal hit the live edge in okay. No, it's not a signal we've hit live edge. It tells in you where the live edge is. Okay. In the okay, in the it tells okay. you what Just the current the okay live okay edge is. It's the same thing as your last okay. uh, uh, clause. Not in the, the, yeah. I'm trying to aggregate some different opinions yeah, here on opinion. how this works. Right, but to, I think to, it's uh, different. totally different. <laughs> What the live edge is, it's what you're going to get, right? What's your it's, it's the range, because yeah. even the start That's is out of range, right? Yeah. So it, it's the whole range. Can can the relay fulfill the entire sure. range? All right. Or if I, not, I just, I'll just change what it is. Fair enough. Is that correctly? Yeah, what range you're going to get? I'm not going to be able to do that. Sure. Yeah. This, this means you, well, these mean you can't serve data before you know what the live playhead That's is. That's correct. Right? Like all That's these proposals correct. mean relays can't serve from cache. Uh, so no, let's discuss no, it. I have to know what the live I, is. I disagree. Right? No, okay, you, you just can't get the okay that. before that. If the okay, relay so doesn't serve an object, okay, so if they're allowed to return the object. If they're allowed to serve, even if there's an error, then it's okay. Yes. That's a very no, like. No, 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 <laughs> no, no, to, no. To, So to, I, I have data. So I return an okay if I have any data, right? So I send, okay. I start sending data, which is a different stream. So it's impossible to enforce that it happened in order anyway. I send the data. And then, like the okay will come later once I get the the um, the, the track the, status, the, the signal. Second from... okay. There's First one okay. okay. One looking... okay for any data you said. If I if there is any data in the fetch that I can serve, okay. that, that, if that exists, but that okay doesn't have, has a live playhead in it. Which okay, means can't come, the data comes before the okay. If you, you start the serving the data, okay, so, so I serve okay. immediately uh, from cache. But then that means you could error if that range was actually invalid once no. you know. No. Because, 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 because it is that's not what okay. error means. If you open a okay. stream, you're so, going to send data, so, and you're yeah. going to send okay. So you later. It doesn't have to be sent right away. It can be sent later. Yeah. Okay. Because well, I mean, you can enforce that they happen in a different stream. So, okay, so it's definitely no, happen no, later. No, no one has argued for sending the okay or error before sending data. Like at like Ian's a hundred percent points is a hundred percent right. Like no, we're just going to send. I'm making the opposite point, which is mean, it will be sent at the end of the data. Does anyone have any questions? No, Other no, no, it'll be sent very near the beginning. I give a question about proposal two, Victor. Yeah, the, uh, so, you're just reinventing one hundred continue. To be clear, like, I, not, I, I, like, I, we're not that innovative. It's not the goal. So, so just to be clear on proposal two, yeah, okay, it does. It may have to go up to the origin to get where the live hat is. Yes, and it's going to return the okay as yes. soon as it has that information. Yes. it's not going to wait until the all okay. of the data of is sent. Yes. but it is going to start sending some data if it happens to have it before the okay. Yes, right? that's proposal two. Yes, but in okay. one in well, one in three, because you might serve an error. Do you have to? Do you have to delay the data that you might have that could match yes. until you know definitively if it was an OK or an error? I think you have to. I think yes. OK. I, if everyone I mean, agrees, I'm just trying to make sure we understand yeah. where we're people. So, so just to be, I mean, to make Luke 
The point you made earlier, you want to make it again? Because it was good. And I don't yeah, think yeah, people got it. It's serving from data from cache that you know is in the range, like the start. If they request group zero and it's in cache, serve it. Okay, if you right. want that, you want to. But, but Alan, but that's Alan, two, yes. But yes. Alan, I will note that you should essentially almost never get an error in proposal three because you just requested the live edge, unless you're just like badly mistaken about the state of the track, <laughs> you'll never actually get an error. And so if, if the terminus is live and then, then like you can start serving data immediately, even if you haven't discovered things, right? So like that, I don't actually so, so long as that it's valid it's, to it's, like error after serving. It's, yeah. a, it's impossible to have an error. Well, unless you said, unless you, know, you gave a number that was three, your, your start range is beyond the limit. Zero to infinity <laughs> could be number three, right? You can serve zero. <laughs> your, start start range, yeah. your start range is beyond that's a moot point because you're four never going to be able to serve that, that object. It <laughs> doesn't exist. Does everyone understand the three proposals? What's the difference between one and three? What is three? Been? What what three has this I'm fetched to the live edge thing, which should make errors essentially impossible unless you're being silly as a client. So just to understand three, like when I get a fetch and it's uh, the relay knows that it's beyond live edge of what relay knows is live edge or what? So, so the there's, problem, no, let, there's just, no beyond live edge because you're asking specifically oh, for the live okay. edge. So I, I, oh, I, 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 I want to just, I want to <laughs> no, there's a thing about this missing from three one way or another is when we've discussed three, people wanted a way to know before they got to the live edge that they were close to the live edge so that they could do that. So is there any sort of signal or marker to do that? What does that look like? Oh, I would say just keep the track status request. Uh, I would say keep from two, the part about fetch okay has the live edge in it. Fetch okay has the I subset see. range. Okay, so fetch, so 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 the fetch okay, you add, why don't you add that to the yeah. fetch okay uh, has the fetch ook. <laughs> oh, I'm typing on this thing. I gotta look at my screen because the latency is messing me up. Okay, has the range you're gonna get? Or... Okay, has the has the. I thought it was clear what I put in the notes as the proposed rough consensus. Yeah, well, I thought that was clear. And asking if that was okay or people had objections to it. We, we talked about was we talked about that. There were some objections we talked about for another 45 minutes, and now I'm seeing where we're at. Because all the stuff is emerged. Okay. So fetch okay will have what you will get. Yes. Which is the same as in number two, right? Yes. Okay. The okay. problem with two and three is they still don't cover this this start case. They, they don't cover the subset. Okay. The start being. I know. I know you don't like them. Don't vote for them. <laughs> Should we just I, ask people which one to one? Can't live with. Okay. What is your proposal, Mel? My proposal is, is exactly what the consensus says: want, is that you if want... you can return any object. You will return OK, and you will return the subset that you can return. That's, that's proposal, proposal two. two. That's not proposal two, Mom. That's exactly proposal two. Oh, it's not ordered, so. But that's the proposal two, the range yeah. of things that you can get. It, it allows the range but, to be but, different from the beginning. I never said anything about whether or not you have a live range marker. That's that's totally orthogonal. Whether or not there's a code point for live range. There, there, there's, live. There's, there's live edge. No, no, number two doesn't have it's a special I mean, two, case. So it's two, implied two, if look, you truncate the end range. So I, 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 no, but two, two, two could have, there could be a 2A and a 2B <laughs> where you have a live edge where you had a way of in the fetch saying, I want to live edge or not live edge. It makes no difference really for yeah. the heart of proposal of two. Yeah, right. I'm for two as long as it doesn't preclude any code point for a live edge. I don't care if we I think that's have that code point or not. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You can ask question. I, was, I think I was actually going to agree with Mo that, like, I kind of feel like we have consensus on exactly the thing he wrote. And so one is irrelevant at this point, in my mind. I mean, I'm not. All right. Like, All right. Well, so, like, I mean, every... so really, now we're just trying to figure out, like. Can we just do a show so of hands? If, if, if there's so, zero hands. Because everyone seems two and three actually are like four options. Everyone seems to think that everyone agrees with them, and like it's clear, like there's clear consensus. And yet every time we try to approve something, there's like objections. I think you have the right thing up there. All okay. these three, yes. Okay, if you prefer proposal one, you're free to not vote if you don't care. If you prefer proposal one, raise your hand. Two hands up, Ian and Glendo, your hands up to vote for this. No, 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 no. Ian's definitely not up. Okay. No, no, no. 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 Nobody's okay. Up. All right. All right. This, the show hands tool is oh. not as good as. Okay. Yeah. The status quo is done. Good. Ed, great. Okay. Proposal two. If you were in favor of that, raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven. Okay. Well, can you? Eight. All right. Nine. 
All right. If you're in favor of proposal three, raise your hand. Christian, are you like, still? You, go you voted last time, didn't you? Two, 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 two things here and yeah. two right now. But okay. Three, I'm going to declare a rough consensus. Uh, Christian lowered his hand for three? proposal two. After there was zero votes for proposal three. So yes, and, and an abstention. Like, there are lots of abstentions. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there's like 40 people in the room. We only got nine votes. I'd like to have a friendly amendment about being able to state live edge versus saying gazillion, but that's all. Okay. I do have okay. a, a remark to proposal two. You, we, we have to be clear that uh, uh, the fetch OK will need some time to be sent because the relay will have to ask what range will be available. Yes. So we will not be able to say fetch OK immediately. We will first need to go fetch yeah. to uh, the publisher to get all the data and then say, hey, I, I will have this range. Yes, but you can send data before that happens. OK, great. So lunch is here. Did, did, did lunch is here. So we, so it means that we can send data before fetch OK. Yes, that's true. Yes. Okay, so Haas, please incorporate it in the PR and then we can find it about all over again. Is that text for the consensus okay? Proposal two? No, or what you have highlighted. Did you highlight something more? Yes, what I've highlighted. Okay, then. Dutch will return okay. Any object can be returned, including their range. Any okay? Error not going to be returned. Uh, yes, that is. I'm going to do error or empty stream. Uh, no error. error. Error if it's beyond the line edge. Such that you could tell me. Uh, no. No. It's it's it's. it's, 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 it's uh, anything can. Oh, if any objects can be returned within that range, instead of including the range, because it's ambiguous. This is for the PR. The consensus in the room was for proposal two. Yeah. <laughs> so to yeah. chair consensus, we should no, make sure it's the, the OK can that's come, the, the data can flow before the OK. Right. The proposal two, that the key is, the key is, it doesn't matter what, what range you requested, you're going to get some subset of that range as an, as an OK. Yeah. So, so right? as long as this non zero subset. Which is why I'm saying change yeah. are including the range to within that range. Because there's exactly one range you're talking about. Right. Let's go to lunch. <laughs> uh, we're going to resume at uh, one fifteen Eastern time. So, so those of you who are out it's remote, monster. go um, feed yourselves or whatever you do in your time zone. And we will resume in 64 minutes. Thank you. Yes. I don't hear that. Case that was key. Luke brought that one up. Is, especially over the break, he's talking about that quite a bit. Um, that is very interesting. Right, but not that's, on, that's, that's, that's really where a big thing came from. Do we?
I need to know. We're going to resume in 10 minutes. So if you need to know. I mean, like, if you want to know whether something is the end of the track or not. I did.
consensus on the uh, um, I tell you, look at the two other questions. You're saying we don't just look away. I think we have to. I can't yeah. we want to. We just want to confirm people's consensus. You're, you're saying when you're planning to write a PR and you need working group input to determine, to determine, to determine if these are the correct so to kind of approach like to the topic. Two, 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 two slides. Who is the origin? It's because a lot of systems have a broadcast. Sit down and quiet down or leave the room, please. Okay. Uh, our first topic is going to be future interims. Um, uh, I want to say that, 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 that as working group chairs, we are absolutely committed to having a meeting in Europe in 2025, as indicated by my previous email. Um, for we we decided for um, we are humbly proposing that like that happen in May or June of 2025 rather than in the winter, um, and that's. And there's a couple reasons for that, but uh, that leaves the question of where we should meet in the winter uh, in late January, or February. So I, we have two proposals that have some some pros and cons. The first proposal is to meet on the Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday after Mile High in Denver, which is the 25th and the 27th of February. The advantage of that is it is is obviously more convenient for our European colleagues who will be in Denver anyway. They have the 83 day weekend with one less. Oceanic flight. So that's good. The downside of that is about two and a half weeks before IETF in Bangkok. So there's not a ton of time between those two things. The alternative is to find a mutually agreeable week in early February or late January, somewhere on the US West Coast, biased towards the San Francisco Bay Area, but like we'll see what venues emerge. We, I, I don't anticipate having a problem if for some reason we cannot do. The Bay Area, we'll probably have it in Seattle again, but I really am optimistic we can find something in San Fran. Um, okay, so I would, I, at this point, I'd like to open the floor for input about those two alternatives. Quick question, is San Jose an uh, option as well? Still in the Bay Area, right? Yeah. Still in the Bay Area, but... <laughs> okay, good. People have, um, have always this question up. Yeah, <laughs> make sure. I mean, there's... The, it, it's... What's wrong with San Jose? I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean the airport, you know, whatever. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's fine, that's fine. Um, what dates did you say for Bay Area? Uh, we would have to, we will run through the exercise of finding a mutually agreeable week, late January, early February. It's nice in San Jose that time, relatively. So, does anyone like would anyone like to express a preference for this Denver versus? Yeah, I have a preference for the Denver one because otherwise it's another international airfare and then followed by another one, and that's right. Okay, for some of us that's difficult. Does anyone like? Is anyone super concerned about the interval between the end of of, of Denver interim and the ITF one twenty two? It's not that much different than the interval between now and the next ITF. I mean, in this case, it would be like we would we it would be we would be done five days before the draft deadline for ITF, for example. Versus right. here, we have like a week and a half to like. We're hoping to get fetch merged in before the next ITF. It's no, like my, a reasonable thing. No, there, I don't know. In fact, it. One thought is like, should we even have, we don't have to have as many meetings in Bangkok for the third time if people are focused on interim. This is another. I, I, mean, I guess what I was trying to answer the question there is I, and I'm not greatly disturbed by that okay. distance. Okay. Um, it but, seems like that the important thing is time to get work done. <laughs> All right. Um, it, so, and that makes me lean. I, I mean, given there's a lot of people trying Traveling to Mile High already. Yeah. Assuming we can have kind hosts again. Possibly. Yeah. I, I mean, I, we, I don't think we we've nailed that down, but Ali seems optimistic that he could sure, host okay. the exact same venue as last time. I, I mean, I, I, it's really something to be said for that, right? Okay. All right. So, given that, um, all right. So, are you? Are you? I mean, I know you have some reservations. I mean, I, 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 I'm okay. Okay. I'm, all right. Mark, man. So let us tentatively you know, let's tentatively plan for February 25 to 27 in Denver at the same venue. Do not purchase plane tickets because Wait, I would 25 like 25 to 27 or 24 to 26. I'd Monday like. through Wednesday of whatever that week is. Yeah, that's 24 to. I'm, I'm 24 to 27. Let me look at the map. Nice. We're in the six. 24 to 26. February in Denver. Do not buy tickets, but but save the day on your calendar. Uh, Ollie, will you please let us know so you can confirm, and then we're going to lock it in so people can make travel arrangements. Okay. Um, any other comments about the interim? That was easy. Uh, 
Do we still be a Well, the Europe one. I, 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 like, it totally makes sense. Totally support of the Europe. Yeah. I'm just saying that means three international tickets in like a two in well in the same quarter for me. But I mean, pretty close together, right? Because we'll do Bangkok. So March is first. Bangkok's Q one. Bangkok is Q one. This is Q two. And not, not in financial quarters at Cisco. But anyway, never mind that. Just <laughs> in a short time period. No, in a short time period, yeah. we have. So, so and I'm not. This is an argument against it. I'm just yeah. raising this as like realize. Yeah. No, I mean, like, uh, obviously, we're both in. Well, we're I, both on the West Coast. We feel the pain too. Here's but. an alternative: is that we could. Well, that doesn't necessarily solve the Europe thing because we did sort of owe one to our European colleagues. But hundred percent, not, the, not the, slacking off that. The, it would be better for you if we did it in the winter time. If we did it like a February, I mean, the problem is this means that there's another trend. If we have a European interim. In February, and then an American interim in July. Then we have not eliminated that extra trip that Will's making, right? Because by combining with Mile High, we like save Will and Ollie a, a, a fly across the ocean, right? And they're both going to that. Is there any other reason you or other people are planning to go to Europe that we could combine with that would make that a better, an easier sell? I guess is the only way because we need to go to Europe because we haven't yet, and it's not IBC. It's a reason that some people go to Europe. When is that? And that's uh, December. <laughs> we could do September. I, I hate I'd, to keep kicking it down the road. But, um, I, I mean, another. We, we could cross that road when we come to it. Like, I, I don't want to. Unless someone's like dying to go to Europe in the winter, or that like makes this week go way better. I, it sounds like the optimal thing to do for our European colleagues who have suffered through all of this up to now. Is to is to combine mile high with the with the with the interim, and then go to Europe in the summer. Um, I mean, the other option, Colin, is that we like we don't require we 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 make it that the European one somehow later wait and like like not two full days of meetings, but that makes it more amenable to remote participation. I mean, I don't see a way to eliminate a flight otherwise. No, we, no, we cannot no. have it. You cannot fly to it. No, no, of course, of course. No, no, no. I, 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 look, I'm not proposing in the slightest, like, you know, we'll do one in Europe, but not a real one. I mean, that's ridiculous. Like, if we're doing one in Europe, let's do a real one. Okay. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Uh, okay. I mean, I guess the other, um, yeah, we could stick it next to something that you were already going to go there for, or we could keep kicking it to try to space it out. No, no. Yeah. No, so, I, I, look, I, 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 I'm not arguing I have a better solution. I'm just sort of pointing out that that is going to hit people's travel budgets. Okay. Um, all right. So uh, noted. Uh, I, I, so I, what's 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 a rough date? For... The, 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 the very firm date is twenty four to twenty six February. No, no, but for the summer one, uh, one, like May or June, somewhere is kind okay. of in between the two. Um, you know, has nice spacing from the from the right. two ITFs. Okay. Would it help people to try to go through weeks on for the next one now, since we're not going to have let's just do high bit? Let's do it in February. No, we need to plan stuff. Some people may may want to because all right, it goes we can. into the summer. All right, okay. So, is it too early, or are people's calendars not firm yet, or does it help to lock it down now? This mile high, uh, not mile high. Uh, media Web it. Symposium is the European uh, Media Engineering Conference. It's a a week of activities, and they've given two provisional time dates, which I mailed to you in my response. Um, can you can you yeah. that out for me? Let me take them up. Does anyone think it's too early to try to schedule this because your calendar is not full? Is not a little. There's stuff you can't control yeah. that's coming down the pike. Yeah. It's it's October, right? And we're scheduling for May. Oh, so. oh. Okay. All right. Well, let's see. Um, it's going to be the week of June nine. That's what Daniel told. Oh, okay, have they confirmed it? Not confirmed, but I mean, that's very really likely June 9th. They gave two, that's weird. They gave two options, June 23rd to 27th, or fall back May 12th to 16th. But if they've changed it to June 9th. No, I mean, the, the week of uh, June 9th, so well, what date did you say? Yes, that's from Daniel. They preferred June 23 to 27th. Oh, really? And well, then, did you receive yeah. this? That was, um, was um, yeah, September 24th. Okay, so they are going to do it. Uh, uh, to be okay. Yeah. 
I think the answer is it's too early to. Okay, so we we should wait for them to pick their date. They're going to pick a date, yeah. There, and they will suck in a lot of the European participants. I think it would if we're going all the way to Europe, and there may be an audience there that we're yeah. not reaching right now, directly that might like to participate or yeah. collaborate in some way. Shouldn't intentionally over over like load their biggest media conference. So yeah, maybe that's a maybe. Let's wait till they pick a date and revisit this topic. Okay, so um, so the so the end result here is that uh. Uh, we, we're asking everyone to reserve the dates of 24 to 26 February. Uh, once Ali, Ali's going to look into hosting at, at the Comcast venue in South Denver or wherever that is. And um, uh, once he confirms, then we will give everyone uh, clear, I'll let you go. clearance to reserve a flight. Do, does anyone have a backup option in Denver, just in case? I have no idea. Okay. Does anyone else have an office in Denver that we can... That we can that we can fall back to if that one is a failure for them. We, 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 we closed it when Joe Hilderman left. I think there's nominally a Facebook office there, but I do not know how big it is. Or And it would have the usual yeah. uh, flaming hoops to jump through to get people not to sign it. Yeah, okay. Um, it's pretty small. Huh? It's pretty small. Or even Boulder. Boulder, in Boulder. Boulder, we might have one, but that's... I don't know. I don't know the state. I haven't been there in years. And I don't know what it's like. Okay. All right. Let's. Yeah. Like, if for some reason Ollie can't get it, can't get that venue, then we'll we'll have to revisit. But uh, I think we've spent enough time. We could also do. I mean, a short domestic flight, maybe if it was on a weekend. Uh, yeah. The, the Tuesday after Mile High, it could be a short hop to somewhere on the West Coast, right? Be okay. Yeah, I mean, it's another flight. It's Probably, but not maybe not preferable for the mile high. Yeah, people. It depends. Like if you're mile high you're on Friday, could you fly to like San Francisco for Tuesday, and then fly back from SF or something? It's a, it's like what two hour flight? It's a two hour flight. Yeah. Right, well, let's cross that bridge and come to it. I okay. think we're optimistic that Denver's going to work. All right. Um, we we actually have a bus that's big enough that we can host. Yeah. Okay, so great. So, yeah. so that would be a fallback. I mean, it's a little more mm -hmm. annoying to get to, I think. But uh, and I have a teammate in Boulder who could help us organize. Uh, so it, that's that's very doable. Thank you, Ian. So now we have a fallback. So I think Denver is more solid. But let's again, let's wait to for the venue before you go buy plane tickets. All right. Thanks to everyone for that discussion. Um, so we are, as stated earlier, we are going to prioritize getting fetch done. Um, we've gotten through some of the, we've gotten through the, I think the biggest issues that came up from Sue House's proposal. He wants to summarize what he's learned so far and what he thinks his directions are. And then we're going to work through the rest of the stuff in the minutes. I've already decided to like punt mine, but it's going to save us some time. And hopefully we have, we're here until 345. So hopefully we have a little time to, to get away from Fetch for a little bit, but, um, uh, Sue House, why don't you go ahead and take the, take the ball and we can. Did you want to share or did you send me a slide? So I'm trying to share. Okay. Uh, can the remote people see as well? I know if I share it locally. Should be if it's up there. Mm, I can see it on the web. I can see on the web. So I think like Will and I uh, try to, on the proposal, TV, where proposal 2, where we had some consensus, we tried to put it in a, a call flow so that just to see if you understood it correctly or not. So in the, we modified this use case where it's an ascending order fetch, but the fetch is happening to a completed track. Who knows completed track is only the original publisher. The relays are not aware at any point in time to really know what's going on. So what happens here is that when the fetch for uh, 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 groups for 1 to 10 comes in ascending order, it's no idea about that. So it cannot do fetch OK or anything. So it has to send the fetch upstream. Uh, when it sends the fetch upstream, the original publisher knows that, okay, uh, I have I can give you one to seven, but seven is object status that basically says that uh, it's the end of track. Uh, it starts its data stream and control stream, uh, which, okay, in parallel. So in, in, in the data stream, it basically puts the header, fetch header, and all the objects that it has in this cache and uh, end of fetch marker so that the fetch is done. At the same time, in parallel, it's also sending a fetch okay. It says, in, it says tells the range that I can support, which is one to seven. And um, uh, and uh, what would we call that field? That extra, extra, uh, additional field that says this is an end of track, or it's the war, or what do we want to call it as? It, 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 yeah, it's, it's a permission. marker that is telling you that the last object here is because it's, it's not a live stream. There's never going to be any more. Track. It's end a new marker that we we don't. Oh, we have an end of track marker, and yeah. it's sending it to you. Yes, and it's why we want to send it in the. the I have a slideshow. Okay. Yeah. 
Thanks, Ian. I didn't realize that. Thank you. I appreciate it. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, and and why we wanted to put the end of track even in the fetch okay message is that by the time you get the data complete on the data stream, uh, it will be too late. Or if you, if the client wants to do, act if, upon that information, if there were a thousand objects there, you would only know that the very last one was the end of track when you got it. But this is telling you upfront that the last object is at the end of a of a, of a completed stream. The response contains the end of track. Yes, the response contains it. I'll, I'll no, confirm. Fetch stream. okay. So that's, there's, the proposal doesn't have that end to date, to be clear. Yes, that's, that's something we want to add yeah. to the fetch okay. We want to add to make it work. And uh, the, the only visual indication that they both are parallel is because they both are joined on a black line there, but that's what it is. So that's, that's the first example. If there's any, if there's no clarification questions, I can go to the next one. Well, and the next one is, what if this was a live stream? How is it different? Yeah. yeah. In, in same thing, we have the version publisher has six objects that he has produced, and for some more he'll, he'll be doing he'll be doing it in the future. But when a client asks with the same thing, I want to get one to ten ascending order. When the fetch request hits the version publisher, it knows its current live edge is at six, and it sends a fetch okay with I can do only one to six for you. By the way, this is a live live track, uh, or some indicator of that one. That's what it sends the response message, and also in the uh, because uh, in the data uh, data message, it's going to send the header along with six objects because that's what it promised it'll, it'll be doing uh, at the live edge, and same thing we'll get on the other end. So what happens is if the client sees that it knows that okay, uh, it's a live stream, I can now go ahead and do my subscribe fetch combination to fill up the gaps if we had to transition to the, to the live. Okay, are you done? done. Okay. First question, does, any, does anyone disagree this is what we just agreed to this morning? Well, there was one piece of information. We, we didn't talk about end of track, but sorry. Oh, I'm, oh, I'm sorry, something important. Do we have a scribe? Oh, yeah. I can still keep scribing. I got oh, TB, yeah. Oh, Lowe's looking for more chocolate. Anybody else got a low blood sugar? <laughs> <laughs> no, five o'clock, five, seven, a jet, like around. We're out here, three, we're done at 340. Oh, what? Uh, well, you tell me. 345 uh, is when we're done. To get the Logan. Um, for five o'clock flight, I got pre and everything. How long, what's the traffic like from here to Logan? It at takes 4 20 minutes small. 20 minutes. Yeah. It's still kind of all right ish. I, I... 20 minutes, 30 minutes? Oh, at least 30. Yeah, at least 30. Yeah, yeah. I would budget 30. 30, yeah. Let's see. Okay. Like, less okay. Plan In reality, really... it's likely going to be faster, but like 5 or 30. Yeah. Should we aim for 330? Let's go. Okay. All right. Does, any, does anyone think that this proposal is like the version from we read? Uh, okay. Yeah. No, so any nobody. Okay. Uh, would anyone like to offer any constructive suggestions <laughs> about this? Like, oh no, you should, you should, it should be spelled this or something uh, before they go write this PR. Just a clarifying question. Yes. The live edge is not in the fetch okay message. It's a separate message at the very tail. No. No. It's in the fetch. Okay. I'll try to indicate this in the fetch okay, even if you're not even trying to fetch the live head, right? No, the it's whole point is there's no zero use case. if you just go zero to two and you're not even close to the live edge. Like what happens I think if, it's you only don't if you don't even edge. close the live edge? It's, it's not saying the six is the live edge. It's saying that the track that you're requesting is a live track. Maybe I should have called. I don't know. Naming is wrong here, but it says so. It's, if, it's unset is what I'm saying. If you're not even yeah. remotely close to the live yes, edge, yes, you don't set that. If you ask for one to three. You would just see fetch OK one to three, and that's it. There's okay. no... It's like a it's like a bit flag on. Yeah. So, so, so there's 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 three status markers. There's yeah. live. There's end of track, and there's and there's nothing. Yeah. Okay. okay. Got it. That's, that's, that was an idea of optional, but you're right. And let, let's not call it. This is an editorial nit, but can we? We're calling it live edge here, but the draft calls it latest object or launched object, and can we just pick one? I'm not sure I care which one. Let's let's move off live edge because that's, I think latest object. Would, well, but latest most... object's a bit ambiguous. That, that that is exactly why the, the the draft is very specific about why it chooses lo, latest object instead of live edge is because latest object is something a relay knows whether it has or not and live edge is a little bit different than that. It's defined entirely by right. Yeah, it's a local. So I think we should use the same terminology we have because we spent a lot. Does of it time meaningfully to... change your how you feel about it if we yeah. change this to say latest object? Well, well, clarification question: This latest object makes sense, but. I, in, in the case of the main example where it's a completed walk track, uh, we need we, among, we need something that says it's not a latest object, but it's also end of track. Term. I agree. I mean, yeah. you, you need both. Like Martin said, there's a it's not one flag. It's it's a you know. Yes. <clears throat> okay. All right. Thank you. So I, I think I think we've 
Does anyone have any other comments about this or are we, can we move on? All right, returning to the minutes, uh, there were several issues left up that were raised by Sue Haas's presentation. The first, so we've handled atomic fetch and subscribe. We've handled the partial fetch error, partial fetch okay not error, and errors, which was Jana. So there's, <laughs> there's, there's two stuff, two things left. One was mine, wired fields, including fetch ID and tracking alias. I think that's not, not exactly a bike shed, but something that we can argue about in the PR. And it's not the end of the world if you land a necessary field. So I'm going to waive that so we can, we, we don't need to use bandwidth unless somebody really feels they need to vent their spleens about it. Okay. Oh, wait till I see the PR. Okay. And uh, the other one was Ian's separate fetch subscribe messages. Um, so I think this was an argument to like have a single code point for these things and have like a flag, whether it's subscribe or fetch. Um, Ian, well, before you, before you slam it, Ian, what is your current feeling about that? Do you still think you need that before you see a PR or, or is it fine for them to have it be separate? Ian? You know time in Bordeaux. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, Victor, while we're waiting for Ian to like come, if you, you have something to say about it, you can say something about it. Uh, I think that let's keep them separate for now and when we go to subscribe refactoring, yeah. then we deal with that. In the absence of the actual complainer here, I, like, I think we can table that for now. Maybe we just come back to it next time okay. and see if he wants to see anything. All right. So I all right. So I, I think we've worked through all does anyone else have anything anything in this fetch is there anything else we need to discuss before the fetch PR people write a fetch PR? What was the yeah. errors uh from John? I think that's the same as that whole thing we just went through. Okay. Um you said I, yes. I, I think uh, yes I think there's one issue. Maybe it's all fine, maybe it's not but I just want to check so, I'm not exactly clear how priorities work for fetches yet. And maybe that's in the slides and nailed down and I've just forgotten. Uh, I'm not sure there's any controversy, but I'm just, if I was writing a PR, I'm not sure what I write about. Can you priorities. clarify what you think about fetch priorities? I think in my slides, it, it basically says that it, with, with any given session, it, it, <coughs> it, uh, it, it is done in the context of the other subscriptions that are active. And um, when it goes beyond that, it's, it's not clearly defined. One, one option was that what Colin had the idea. So the fetch priority is in the same number space as the subscribe priority. Yes. Within a session. Oh, within a connection. Except so, they're, okay, go ahead. But, so, and that makes sense up to the first hop relay in the same way that subscriber priorities and fetch priorities make sense. Yes. But upstream from that, so, it, so let's say you go to the first hop relay and then that it needs to do a fetch upstream say to the original publisher, and the original publisher has some subscribes running right now, and it has some fetches running right now. Now, normally we'd use publisher priorities here as what would happen for the priorities for the subscribes to go off against each other. The question is, uh, what do we do with these fetches? Because no, we, we, no. Squished all the, we squished all the priorities into one stream. No, no, I'm not worried about all this in one stream. I'm worried about how this stream prioritizes relative to this, the data that you're sending for the subscribes. So there's there's nothing written in the spec where the publisher priority ever overrides the subscriber priority. No, there is 100% written in the spec that the subscriber, I agree with you, you're right, yes. but the subscriber priorities do not go beyond yes, the first yes, hop relay. Agreed, yes. So I'm only talking about, beyond. like, look, on the first hop relay, what we do here is 100% yes, clear. Yes, yes. There's a fetch priority, it's in the same space as subscriber priority, prioritizes against it in the way you'd expect. No worry. Everyone's good on that, right? Yeah. Upstream of that, the only difference here is we don't, is we, we, we need to do, we, the, like I see two options. I mean, one option on this would be uh, the, the fetch data is always lower priority than the subscribe data on the upstream of the relay or, or some variant. But anyway, there's Q, so I'll shut up. But this okay. is the question. Uh, all right. Uh, go ahead, Victor. Well, the publisher priority is actually like, so this is kind of the same answer as before, but like for subscriber, subscriber tells. Uh, and for really to really, it's generally we kind of agree that this is kind of a class go. Uh, publisher to uh, publisher to really <laughs> is uh, whatever publisher chooses. Like, remember that when you're a publisher, you're a sender, so this is entirely up to you. You do not need to communicate to everyone. 
So we might want to like add a suggestion as to what to do, but I'm not sure we should. And I'm not sure we have a good answer to that. I can propose something. So we have the publisher group board, which it says ascending or descending. The publisher chooses that for the tiebreaker. If the publisher wants to send things in ascending order, that means it's making a VOD. So fetch is going to be higher priority. If it's descending, it means it's making a live stream. So subscribe is going to be higher priority. So it's kind of already giving you the relay a hint to say, am I making something reliable or not? And you can just use that as your relay to decide. Maybe just a slight response. I'm not sure I agree on that they mean what that. But the idea of we could include a hint that told them what to do, I, I agree with That's that. That's the idea with a hint. It's like, do you skip data or not is what group order means to me. And descending means I'm okay skipping old content, which means fetch should not be higher priority. You should skip old content. Anyway, that's my take. That's All right, so I, I'm next to the queue. Um, but, I, I, okay, can I just have one more clarifying question on that? But that's not so different from what Victor just said, which is that the original publisher picks that, and we're talking about you are the original publisher. You don't even have to communicate. The original publisher so says we, the, the order on subscribe okay. It tells the relay it's what the most, what its uh, intent is. So all right, so I'm next to the queue. I agree with Victor. The relay is going to do what the relay is going to uh, do, and I don't. I I um. I, I don't think we need to specify it for interoperability purposes. There may turn out to be like a right answer for this, and we can add it later. And I would like well, to. It's even less really going to do it. It's the original publisher will do what it believes is correct. Fair enough, right? Like so I don't. I don't think it needs to be in the spec. And if we right now, if we learn later, it needs like there's a right way to do it. We can add it later and explain the PR without any advice about that. Okay. Uh, well, I, plus one. Okay, Alan. Yeah, I think plus one publisher is going to do what the publisher is going to do. But I did want to say one other. Everyone's okay with. I was thinking about this the other day. So we we squashed all the intra-track priorities and like there's the funny ways that priority interacts. Like object priority helps you pick which track you're going to send in the way subscribe priorities are written. And so, uh, yeah, and like, those all got squished in a way that, like, I hear somebody wants some agenda no, time to clarify priorities. priorities. It's already don't on there. there. Yeah. We're there, we're there. Do, okay. do, do, not, oh, do not go there. Okay, okay, fine. Yeah, plus one, Victor, go. Sue us. I think I agree with most of the things, but I'd like to see if it, it makes sense for the, how would relate us to relate does not matter, but when relay sends to the, or the version publisher, it, somehow the fetch priorities carried all the way. So in the case, the publisher makes a final choice. But publisher knows the hint of what subscriber wants. You're saying fetch versus fetch, or fetch versus subscribe, or everything versus everything. This is like when fetch priority comes to my first relay, the second relay, what happens, we don't know. But I'm saying the fetch priority of the request will be preserved and sent to <coughs> excuse me, uh, original publisher. So the original publisher knows what is his client's fetch preferences, uh, and we and and it knows if if really the client wants fetch to be highest priority, and and publisher thinks I. It can do it. It should, it should do it. It's a hint. It's not saying that it will do it. Just, just a second. Let me. Let me I, 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 I disagree with Suhas because okay. the problem is you'd have to aggregate them, and the problem, like, right. There's so, no aggregation, right? Yeah, sure it does. Propagate it. It's cached, right? So I mean, you can't have one client who says my fetches are really important, screwing over everyone else's subscribers. So this just brings me back. I think Victor's right. We just yeah. go exactly with what okay. Victor said, and we're done. I think I'm done. Yeah. Okay. That's Victor, do you have more to say, or that, that was too too much agreement for you to say anything? Oh, you're right. <laughs> okay. So, 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 all, all right. So, going back to my original question, then, are there any other things we have to discuss before we see a PR, Luke? Um, do we want to support descending fetch? Is anybody going to use it, or just remove it to make the draft simpler? Is it in the proposal now? I can't remember. Yeah, yes. that's in it's in if you want to scrub. It's backwards. weird. It's it's definitely weird. Rewind. Because if you don't have it, you have to do this rewind. weird thing where you. Uh, it's D and that, so it's, and descending fetches, oh. descending groups, but ascending objects. Yeah. Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. Descending group order. Yes. Okay. If, you, if it's okay, having it. Just... Most recent, two minutes. It just slips the logic of yeah. what. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Other issues we need to discuss prior to the PR? Uh, I have okay. one, which is, and I should have said that my previous plus one was as an individual. Uh, and then this, this is an open question about the ID space. So. Today, we limit the number of subscribes that you can issue by limiting the subscribe ID space and we're creating a fetch ID. Are we going to have a similar limiting mechanism? It, does, it can be added separately, but I guess we just want to know, like, do, or do we, are we heading to a world where we want to just have, like, a general limit 
I've moved all the ID spaces together and then we just said, eliminate, eliminate the ID spaces and some of these back screens. <laughs> and then you can use flow control. Now, yeah. now you're, <laughs> your favorite. Now you're talking <laughs> crazy. But, okay, I'm going to leave that. That's my question. What do you want to do yeah. about um, a resource control for fetch? Uh, I mean, there's quite a new issue on it. I don't think in this PR we can solve it. I think, okay. I don't think we agreed upon it. Get it in. I, I'm fine with that if that's what the user yeah. wants to do. But right. it, we, we, we need to put a pin in. Yes. We make sure we uh, don't create a more resource problem. Would anyone else uh, like I think the solution to that problem is to get rid of that max. Would, would, would anyone else <laughs> like to um, create more work for CMAS? I think this is like, uh, at least half of it was what I have in the draft, yeah. so I can convert Okay, it. so yeah. now we have, I think the last question before we put fetch to bed is who's gonna write the PR? Uh, I have a topic written. Um, I would like I, to I can take help from others, but yeah. yeah, would I would like to maybe have this? Yeah, be a team effort. I, yeah. My first thought in my head was that to see, like, if Ian is available to assist you, although there's a time zone problem in the short term, or maybe PTO <laughs> problems in the short term, um, <laughs> and Ian may not be here. Oh no, we unmuted. I don't know. I'm, I'm like, does my video work right now or now? No, 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 no. nobody's videos work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. okay, cool. Well, that's cool. Um, yeah, no, I'm I'm happy to do it. Um, I'm also happy to start with. I guess the PR that we've written now is a little bit off, um, but no, I I think plausibly I could definitely do it before tomorrow. I don't think I could do it tonight. All right, so can, can like you I can do it tomorrow morning? Create a PR. All right. Yeah, yeah, I'll ping you on Slack. Okay. Hmm? All right. I, I'll Perfect. ping you on Slack. Okay. Right. Uh, um, I'll go ahead, you. And we're just to confirm for just from a, I need to write this sort of perspective. Um, we're going to go with a se separate, like, we're basically going to duplicate all the subscribe stuff for Vetch. Is that correct? So, this is the question, <laughs> Ian, you were here. We didn't, we deferred that question for a second. I think right now is a perfect time to discuss that question now that you're back. Yeah, my, my internet was unfortunately being persnickety. So do you, Ian, um, we, yeah, we want to come back to the question of, sh do we want to clone all the like stuff from, and make some fetch and subscribe different code points, or do you want to make mega message? Uh, you want I to mean, speak to that? I, I would say it's a lot more text if you clone everything. And so like the lazy part of me is like, oh goodness, this PR is going to end up being very large and somewhat difficult to review. Um, from a, I think it's kind of a wire, like spell it one way versus the other to me, but like, I don't know. I mean, it, I, I, obviously the mechanism that we will end up having will be identical. Um, I just didn't, and I'm, and I'm happy to write the fetch version where we clone everything, but like, it's going to be a lot of copy pasty stuff. Um, so well, so I, I will say that I, we agreed yesterday. We we're not going to have fetch update. Right. Uh, I, I think we'd be fine to have a draft seven that does not have max fetch ID in it. Like no one's going to deploy this and get DDoSed. We could worry about max fetch ID later. And as for like unfetch, uh, yeah, I guess, but. Yeah, I, I think one, th one thing that we spent a lot of time talking about today is uh, the subscribe fetch ordering yeah. in order to get uh, to live. And I think it would really complicate things if we tried to merge them into the yeah. same verb after we've already had all this discussion. Subscribe, subscribe. Make them so, separate. So like, because they are duplicate separate. all the text and yeah. have them separate. And if we can merge them later, I think. Okay. Sorry, so you want to add all the subscribe clones yeah. right now? Yeah. That's, that's the proposal. No, not, they, not, just like, not, because, because not the weird discussed. things you don't need, but they're yeah. pretty different. Like, I, I, I lean towards the, what, yes, add, fetch, fetch, OK. Uh, fetch well, error, right? So, so oh, which definitely cancel. fetch, fetch, okay, fetch error in there. Right. That's it. Okay. Okay. Cancel. Oh, yeah. what about, well, our unfetch? So maybe cancel. It'd be because unfetch cancel. because it's the equivalent of unsubscribe. You can't unfetch. But anyway, you can send it back. Uh, you can stop sending that stream. <laughs> oh, you can give it back. You just said, <laughs> yeah, stop sending. Like, uh, uh, walk, you can. Okay. I, 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 I'll tell you, I'll tell you I, what. I will point out, it'll be perfectly valid for any relay to just ignore the fetch cancel and continue yeah. sending to you. Can, can, all right. Can, can I propose that, like, the authors feel no compulsion to replicate every single subscribe thing, but, like, if they feel, but, but if they feel like this is easy and I can just do what I know what to do, they can add it to the PR and then we can email about it later. Luke? Another idea, if you want to do the new bi-directional stream right now, that would remove a lot of the duplication. 
I don't want to reopen that discussion. Okay. So, <laughs> you don't need to unfit then. So, all right. So, um, um, yeah, we. Go ahead, Ian. You don't want update? We agreed yesterday that we would not have a fetch update. Yes. Really? Yep. Do you think that's, I mean, given that you can now overlap the live head? We were. Do you we, don't we, think we, there's any ever a case you'd want to do an update? We hiked. I'm just, I'm, I'm like, this is like a. Ian, we hiked all the way through that swamp yesterday. We're not going back. Yeah. Okay, fine. I think. I think the summary was you can. You can always just cancel if you don't like the fetch that you have. Cancel it and make a new one. Yeah. yeah. Updating the end is really racy. Yeah. So, like, right. so I guess we do need an. It's always canceling, but okay. You don't like that name. <laughs> it bothers okay. me. Yeah. <laughs> so we do need so we need a peak message. It's so symmetric with unsubscribe. Uh, okay. Let's duplicate the subject. All right. So all right. So 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 it sounds like based on yesterday's discussion, we must have fetch, we must have fetch okay, we must have fetch error, and we must have um fetch cancel. If you guys don't like unfetched. <laughs> But as for any other like, like subscribe variants, um, like use your judgment and like don't take it. Okay. And, and on the object delivery, it's in order objects on a single stream, and how the peep packaging had previously been is irrelevant. Is that correct? That's correct. Correct. Yes. Just in group, it was, uh, in whichever group order specified, objects always ascending. All on one stream for that fetch. Okay, so strict numerical order. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Thanks. I, I just want to make sure I know like what I'm writing because yeah. like I don't want to write the wrong thing. Okay. On the player, right? Isn't the peep in the stream header right now? It's not an object, so you Why? can't. It's in the header. It's in the stream it's... header. It's not in the object header, right? So, so, I, I, so let me let me jump in on this one or something. So I thought about this a long time, and I'll, I'll walk you through my logic, and then you might be like, "This is nuts," um, but the 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 logic was is once that the peeps the, the, I'm going to call it the peep now you forgot me going the peeps only really use to determine what the streams on once we go to a fetch coming out of the cache all the way down on a single stream so it's no longer really relevant for streaming anymore it depends like so you can use the peep ID to tell you which layer it is well, and you it, lose that information on the so, fetch it, yeah so if it's that layer thing so we decide like if this is if the sub we need to decide whether the subgroup is a cacheable is cached or not. And if it's cached, so that's our data model it's question. Cacheable, right. If it's cacheable, then obviously it has to be here. And if it's not cacheable, then it probably shouldn't be here. And I think that that's our metric is everything is cacheable and we just need to go, I don't know whether subgroups in the data model or not. Like that's so, a great question. Yeah, right. so uh, that is a great question. So, gonna, I, I, so Colin, I, like, I, I kind of think that eventually we will probably eliminate it. I think as it stands, we eliminate this PR subscribe being what it is where you can actually subscribe for some things in the past mm -hmm. that like there's there's a state where you fetch something that is later delivered via subscribe, in which case you must have the peep ID. Yeah. So I would let it would be nice if we eventually got away, but it's just a matter of internal consistency. I think for now we should make sure the peep ID is cacheable. Well, it has to be cacheable because you can have max timeout stuff. But uh, I think for now we should have a peep ID uh, probably in the object middle. It, has to be. Yeah, it means you it have to be an object. You need a new encoding for fetch objects. I'm convinced I'm running an issue. Yeah. Okay. Convinced this object's going to have people. So, all right. Yeah, I think you, like, just to add on, we talked about the possibility of adding object filter and then filtering by peep ID, which means you need to deliver it because it could be used as cache filter later. Well, if if, if, we, if we do that, but we haven't done that yet. But yes, that's another. Yes, but yes. let's let's so let's. It's I, 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 it doesn't delay. Like, like starting to suggest just putting it in for now, the peep ID in for now, okay. and then hopefully we can get rid of it. But you know, like so sir, sir, and the peep ID will be on a. It is part of the metadata, so in the object middler in the stream will have a peep ID with it. Okay, and so it will so it will be an object ID and group ID order, but there will be a peep ID slapped on. Yes. Yes. Okay. So subgroup ID is in the fetched objects. Yes. Yes. Okay. 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 <laughs> do we have objects? Do we have other questions? <laughs> Comments. I think those are the key questions for me. I don't know if other. Okay. Yeah. Uh, all right. So uh, go forth and be productive, gentlemen. Thank you. And hopefully, it, either the next virtual interim or the one following will have a have a uh, a thing to to shoot at. Okay.
changing topics entirely. Did we decide running for the priority thing next? Um, Is that what we, I, I, we went around so many times. Okay, I, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay out loud the rationale here. There's okay. an open issue about priorities clarification. We had time on the agenda to discuss it. There is also people who asked to discuss new work here, a proposal from Victor and a proposal from Will. My what are like, those two proposals? There's one is a, about something to do with the object ID sequence space and one is to do with merging namespace and track name. Now, right. that, now that we've added the tuple structure or we can go back and try to like dot the I's and cross the T's on priorities. I think all three have the opportunity for us to completely face plant. So <laughs> right, let's, let's time box, let's, let's give this a half hour. Okay, can we, can we do it in a half hour, Victor? Uh, priorities? Yes. Sure. Okay. If it's if at two thirty we are spinning out, we're gonna trash it and we're gonna go move to something else. Okay, Victor, the floor is yours. Uh, all right. Uh, you want us to present the? Yes, the PR. Present the PR. Let's see. Yeah. So while Alan is looking at the PR, I will explain what the PR is. So currently, the text. Uh, about priorities is written in the draft in a very declarative way. It says like some things that have a higher priority than other things. Uh, what this PR does, it does two things. The first thing, it describes what you schedule between and introduces notion of what I call a schedulable object, which is effectively like you either pick the next stream on which you can write data or you send a datagram and you pick one of those and you send that. Uh, and the second one is like a ordered list of like, first you check this, then you check this, then you check this, then you check this, and like it's like in the bullet points and it's like very unambiguous. And the reason I wrote this is that there were some disagreement between uh, me and Martin, when we were trying to implement uh, what's currently in the draft as to what the draft is actually saying. So, as you can see, there is a definition. Uh, uh, Alan, you, you might have an easier time if you switch diff to like uh, the, the other format. Yeah. This guy? Yeah. Yeah. Screen, uh, this thing? Yeah. You happy with this? So the first thing is, yeah, so that's roughly the proposal. First, we define you either pick an next object that you can actually write, or you pick an object that you can send as a data graph. Uh, and then uh, it, I, I, it I, redefines, I, like, all of the stuff that's already there. I, I have a clarifying question about yeah. that, though, which is, I mean, why is a schedule, why isn't every object always a schedulable object? Like every every object you have, right? Why isn't it a schedulable object? I don't I don't understand the need for this. Uh, you cannot schedule an object that's like, if you're on a subgroup and you can only write one object, you cannot write objects as after it. That's like, it is a protocol violation. Now the priorities will work out the way that you always write the first object. Like that's one way to think about it, but if but you I mean, our, our priorities defined it such that the next so priorities are about what you said next, yeah. and I mean I get that like you need to send them in object ID order on a peak for example right, or a subgroup for sure, but our priorities are defined in such a way that that happens. Uh, so I, mean, the, I think it's just the term that's useful for him to explain an opera than It's just given, are, given the ordering requirements, okay. these are the set of objects that are contenders to be set next, right? And obviously anything that's later in a peep is not one of those things. Depending on how one's quick stack is organized, there are generally two ways you can organize the code. One is you have a giant queue of, uh, of uh, objects, and then you pick the object, and then you figure out which stream it goes to. And the second one is you have streams, and then you go from stream and figure out what you write. Uh, and for various <laughs> reasons, sometimes you are stuck. Sure, understand, but our specs cover both cases. Uh, anyway, the observation is that like... No, but this is why I'm poking on. Like, look, yeah. right? Let's say I wasn't using peeps at all. I don't have any sub yeah. right? Which yeah. is certainly contemplated yeah. in the current draft, right? Yeah. Like, I can't ever send anything. Wait, um, so like, what? like... You only have to have at least one subgroup. <laughs> uh, unless it's a, 
Unless it's giving her a try. Uh, unless it's, it's yet. yeah. <laughs> but but, but that, that, that's that's why I find this confusing to read. Is like, do you want to clarify what your description of like? There needs to like be your a third, text there, here there, doesn't. There needs to be a third bullet, which okay. is like whatever is next in the sequence if it's stream header track. When what if it's track mode? Is that a third that's what thing? You said. No, it's, no. It looks stream you said, track. There's but, there's three forwarding priorities: Pete, datagram, and track. Number no, one is there's 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 one right right now I believe in the current spec there's one if there's there's stream per track still with no that's subgroup. What you that's what you said. said. I said there's three. There's You're saying the same thing. Datagram and track. Those are the three forwarding priorities. Stop saying Pete because. Like just let's try and sit with terminology. Subgroup, right. subgroup, track, and datagram. Those are the three forwarding priorities. There's a group as well. Wait, no. Abolished in favor a group. of subgroup. Subgroup is uh, of the entire group length is. Okay, you can have one subgroup. You can, you that, is a, one that is a group okay. that is also a subgroup. There's okay. one subgroup in the group. I, look, I'm fine with that. I have no objection yeah. to that. I don't believe that's what the current draft says. No, no, I record. guarantee you 100% that's what okay. it says. Yeah, we all implemented it. We deleted, yeah. so, we deleted group okay. from our code. Okay. okay. Yes. That's right. So, uh, so, so there's uh, process question. Sorry, uh, did we not decide to get rid of track uh, forwarding preference? Not yet. Yeah. I mean, that like everyone was deferring for fetch, and we just figured out fetch. So, okay, like, so okay, cool. So, like, so we could do that now. Uh, well, okay. that would be another discussion, item, but no doubt turn into a giant quagmire. Okay. So, like, okay. that in the pile <laughs> for the <laughs> next time. Okay, so when we're I guess when writing the fetch proposal, I do not need to touch that code. Okay. Or that text. Okay. That's fine. Okay. I'll move on. Okay. So I think given what you just said, I have a better understanding of what these mean now. Okay. So thank you. <laughs> all right. Okay. This is all the, those things didn't change. Just this one. Uh, yeah. So that's, uh, everything above it's like, it's like I just pulled out the definitions. Like this is the key of, of what is being pro proposed. Well, this is at that time to write. First, you look at subscriber priority, then you look at the publisher priority, uh, then you look uh, at the group order, uh, and then you look at the either lowest peep ID or object ID, depending whether you do uh, try, whether you do priority subgroup or preference subgroup or preference data. Okay, and just to clarify, is this the last diff? Yeah, so, 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 so it's like, right. so to clarify, uh, and I, I acknowledge there's dispute about this, but in the, at least Alan and I's individual opinion, the way it is dragged, the way it is written now is not this. And because the second bullet is different and that in our reading of it, the, um, what currently has to happen is you take all the stuff, all, all the, all the objects in the, in the, in the, um, in the subscription and you pick the highest public priority of any of those objects, and that is the element of number two. And like some people think it doesn't say that, but like at the very least, text unclear. So if everyone agrees that this is what should actually happen, then I think we're fine because it's just a clarification. Um, can you change that one more time of what the alternative reading of this is? Okay, it's not, not, not of this. Of not of this. this. Uh, this is yeah. that, so I will, in a given subscription, there's a gazillion objects that I'm aware of as a center. I take the highest pu publishing priority of any of the objects I've not sent. And that is called the track priority. That is, that is the priority for the track. So the second tiebreaker after subscriber priority is this max of all the publisher priorities in the subscription. Um, I see. And there's, I, I can see the logic of that, but it's hard to implement. Yes. So the current yeah. draft says subscriber priority, publisher track priority, which is this max, max yeah. of everything there, then group order. Then the actual individual object publisher priority comes there. So that that's where, for whatever it's worth, I thought the draft said this. Yeah, <laughs> I, I know. You, <laughs> okay, I so this is so maybe this is just because the draft was talking about selecting a track first. Yes, and then once you're in that track, then you have a sub selection within that. This is flattening everything to all objects compete, regardless yes. of what track they're in. It's a very big difference. Yes. Okay. This is the, the, and I think as an individual, this is the thing that, like, I agree that the thing that is written in the draft is hard to implement, but it makes, it, there's like some sensible to it. If, if your idea is first, we're going to pick a track and then we're going to pick an object from the track. That was a sensible way to pick the track, even though it's hard. And part of that is because my understanding of group order is that there's only two possible orders that make sense. Either we're going up or we're going down. But if you do it this way, all of a sudden, 
object priority, or like the object priority on a stream, now trumps group order. And so if I'm doing a stream per subgroup and a subgroup that represents the entire group, I can now cause groups, like the group order is now basically overridden by this thing, if that makes any sense. And so that, and there's problems with like, there's like the priority space could be smaller than the group order and the object priority is used for two things now. One thing is to select its priority inside its track, but also across tracks. So anyway, for all these reasons, I am like, I don't find this to be a clarification. I find this to be a, like wow. a, a different behavior, a, a different behavior. And I have problems with this as the behavior. Victor. Uh, yeah, uh, I think I've thought about this and I believe that does make sense. Uh, Which so is, what makes sense? Uh, the way that like you first look at the publisher priority of individual data and then you look at the group order. So group order tells you like by default, I either want the most recent data or I want to like to catch up. What the reason that you would switch publisher priority in the middle of track are like, I became active speaker and now I'm saying something important to deliver. Now, if you think about this, this is like the part where data is now important to deliver is a property of data, which means like it should override other considerations. So even if like I ordinary, uh, like, like the data that's important to deliver now is automatically important. That's the data we considered less important before. And that's regardless of like any other consideration. And that's, I think I have a great idea to solve this. Yeah. Could I just ask a question? Like make sure I understand what Victor yeah. just said, and then we get your answer. Yeah. So this is my question. So let's say I have data sent from group one and group two, and they like I'm 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 going in ascending order, and you're saying that if suddenly there's an object in group two that is like of a higher priority than all the objects in group one, mm -hmm. that I should now I'm going to skip. I said ascending, but I'm going to skip group one. I'm going to deliver group two to you. Is that what you want? It, that's what it's. That's what I heard you say. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. All right. <laughs> that's um. So, so here, here's, here's a hope. So my recollection was group order was actually important for the fetch case, not the subscribe case. Could we yank it out of subscribe? You need subscribe for fetch. You need the order for like reliable live. Like the HLS wall. dash style when you're subscribed to a live head, you need you need ascending. High fidelity group. subscribe. High fidelity subscribe. <laughs> you need ascending. Yeah, yeah, but do you ever, I mean, why would you ever need descending for subscribe is my uh, question. For real time. You want the latest descending. group before You want the, the latest groups first, always. No. Yeah, I keep saying that, means that, you can't skip, that means you don't skip data. You don't drop the old groups well, then. Yeah, we do off all the time to live, right? Off of back. Okay, so that's a different, that's now we're doing TTL is the way you drop data. That's like always how it's been in our, like, like I, I mean, I know that you had it the opposite yes. way, but I'm just sort of saying, I, I have, like, our implementation is always done the other way. So well, TTL so is, we're not arguing for that. We're, we do it the same direction HLS dash does it. Yeah. There's, there's two different modes of like how you drop data. Do you do a TTL in which you, you drop it? Yeah. Like SOT styles. Or in this case, do you deprioritize old data? That's what the descending priority is meant to do. You don't have to drop it. In fact, delivery timeouts like an op, like optional. Um, you know, you could unset, not have it set and just the old data will just sit in the buffer for a while. So Carl and Luke are the queue, so you guys can just fight it out. Well, I mean, oh, no, I was just going to say, so, so look, look, I, I, I was good, I, I was going to, I was hoping people are going to like, oh yeah, right, we don't need that. But if we do, if there's well, an argument, one, we might we need, need it. If we don't need it, then let's well, take yeah. it out. Who, who's going to argue and say, no, we absolutely subscribe, I mean, has I'm, to have descending. It, <laughs> how's the road? I'm, I'm, I'm already on the road. Like, <laughs> no, no, but, uh, <laughs> it, it's like, it's fundamental. Because like, otherwise you're forced to do TTL based deadlines. I'm going to be on the road with Luke on this one. <laughs> <laughs> if, 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 like, Mr. WebEx doesn't want descending, I don't know why we need to. No, no, but, but really, like, like, you've argued, this has been a decision. I'm always arguing against the group. We're making a decision. We've discussed this infinitely. We've had lots of time about it. We've had this decision. We'd have this. Let's not change this decision. I just sort of retract my If proposal. the delivery like, timeout was based on presentation time step, maybe, but real time, it's it's not going to really work for real time. I mean, he, these guys have a lot of a large scale to run in real time system. <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, like, it's gonna it's gonna be delayed. You're not gonna drop fast enough. Look, I I just don't. I, if there's still, I just want to leave it like it is. It's fine. Okay, yes, I don't want right. to reopen that whole can of worms. Victor, uh, I also think leave it is because I've thought very hard about it. As my conclusion is that like, 
depending on scenario, one or the other might be very efficient. And I do not have like data to say which one is better. Can I say something about yeah, right. server's going to do what server's going to do? Right? Like, I mean, this is all information to the server, to the you know publisher. So, I mean, they can ignore it if they want. I thought that the idea behind priorities was that the server will not do what the servers will do. Yeah, uh, kind of. Okay. Yeah. The problem is actually it's not the publisher, it's the server, I mean, the sender, which is often a relay. The relay has no context of what the hell is going on. It just has to follow a rule. It does not. Yeah. It does not have these higher considerations. Yeah. So, um, so we're keeping descending. Oh, go ahead. Well, let's just... Yeah. So, so this is something I tried to bring up when we were adding object priority. So effectively, you have the track priority first. It's like a hierarchy. It's at the top in theory, and then the group priority is next. The idea, at least my idea, was that you have the object is next within that. Like it's scoped to the track and the group priority. But what we've done is we've actually added an object priority that it can bubble to any layer, depending on your interpretation. Does it bubble above track priority? Does it stay with scope to the track and just it bubbles above group only? Like that's kind of the, the or is it within the group only? There's actually three different permutations of what you think object priority means. Is it the object's priority within a group, within a track, or within a session? Uh, there is no, I would like to point out that there is no object priority on this proposal. P priority. P priority. P, P priority, yeah. basically. So, yeah. P, P, same thing. So, yeah. so really the problem there is like changing this is going to still leave that ambiguity. You just kind of pick which level it always bubbles to. Uh, I mean, there, there is no ambiguity in the stacks. You first look at the track, subscriber track priority. So, it's so track. you look at the number in the peep. The first one is the number a subscriber specifies in the peep. <laughs> the second is the number that the publisher specifies in the peep. The third one is the group order, if there's so, the previous tour, and the, the final one is the p That just order. means your priorities go track, subgroup, group. Right? Yes. They're different yeah. than the hierarchy. Yes. yes. Weird. I, yeah. I, and I think that sounds bonkers. Yeah. But if that's what everybody wants, like, fine, it's well, easy. Well, well, so, like, <laughs> and I don't think that's what you actually want. Like, if you're using, like, SVC layers, you actually want the subgroup's priority to be higher than the track, because you want... The subgroups, like you want layer zero of both broadcasters to be higher priority than layer one of both broadcasters. Well, that's Wouldn't they just set that in the... Yeah, that's, that's why subgroup is... Well, that's why subgroup would then have to bubble above track for that use case. Yeah. Uh, if you think of subgroup as a layer, then it makes sense as the layer of priority. It's a higher now it bubbles above the track. Not, that's not track has the, the highest priority then. Well, no, I don't they, know they, what you, don't know what you no mean by track priority. There's no such thing as a publisher track priority. No, so not... He means subscriber track priority. Oh, well. He's talking about the subscriber issue. There is a, there is a track publisher track priority, priority right? No. In the there, there, it, it's defined in, the, in draft six. The, the priority of the track is the max of all the pro objects that oh, are. Oh, I didn't, I didn't know they got rid of it. Okay. Oh, oh it's, it's in draft six. It's in draft I thought six. subscribe okay had it. No. No. Subscribe it, okay has the group order. Publisher. There, there's no track priority. There's no publisher track order. Max thing. So what. Okay, max the max is hard, and so what? And, and like, and then Victor May thinks it's actually bad, uh, <laughs> uh, and so he is proposing that instead um, we do that. We do what he's written here, which but, I think is. But doesn't what you say still hold with subscriber track priority? Well, so my my preference is put each layer on their own track, so you just get rid of this problem. Well, you, you don't have do to that. bubble groups up sub subgroup priorities to the top. You just put them at the top. And then the hierarchy is down. Priority flows the same way as the hierarchy. what you're just arguing is like removing subgroups. Basically, <laughs> each subgroup is a different track. I feel track, yeah. like we were already past that. Yeah, let's, let's, well, not, I mean, let's not revisit that right now. Yeah. Um, anyway, it's because I think there's a, there's a mismatch between the priority um, hierarchy okay. and the actual data hierarchy. I, Ian, are you still in the queue? Um, only to, to say that, to Luke's comment, we can definitely get rid of uh, like the subgroup thing, I, I, I would agree, but you would have to have timestamps, I think, to make that work in practice. I don't see how else you can get it around or some so, so compromise. Yeah. Okay, well, like, I, 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 I just want to throw that out there. Like, I, I don't have. We have 15 minutes left for this time. The subject turns into a pumpkin. I don't want to relitigate peeps today. Okay. We will get it tomorrow or Wednesday. Um, all right. So, like, 
I think people sent, made a lot of comments. I think you've been the one that's specifically been grumpy, expressed an actual coherent like grumpiness about this proposal. Oh, this is um, You're also grumpy about the proposal? No, no, I have a question. I, okay, like, please ask a question. Okay, I just searched the draft for track priority. I do not find no, that. Uh, one. Yeah, uh, there's the it's, it's, it's called the when selecting the track, the publisher priority. If like, and it talks yeah. about how if the track has objects like two and or six and ten, and ten is higher priority. Okay, I send a PR to remove that draft because it's incoherent. Okay. For example, if the subscription had data priority six yeah. and priority ten to send, the subscription priority would be six. Yes, that's like, right. Because low numbers are that's, right. Okay, yeah, so that's this, is, this is all subscription priority. It's not track priority. Well, right, okay, yes. Okay, people, people are using imprecise I'm terms. saying track, okay. I mean subscription priority. Yes. Okay, yeah, there's okay. No, yeah, tracks are neither here nor there. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, the subscription, so there's a subscriber priority, there's a publisher priority for the subscription, which is the max of all the object priorities that are remaining in the subscription that the sender is aware of. And then... Then you go to, uh, and then you do group, so and when, then you do actual. When you say, for example, if a subscription had data at priority six, which priority is that? What do you mean by that six? That's I, that's the that's the that's the uh, subgroup priority. priority. Yeah, priority of it's so two there is, a, there is a subgroup somewhere in the pile for that subscribe that has a priority of six, mm -hmm. and there's another one that's ten, and six is better than ten. So what well, so that means in practice, it's like if you're all of your sub on your track if all of your subgroups have priority 10, but then the one with priority six comes in, you have to go and like yes. renumber them to priority six. And then if there is only one of them and they're suddenly 10, you have to keep track for how long so, those six are alive. So, and when so the I, think Alan, I, think, I think Alan's point is good. Like if you really think group order is sacrosanct, then the issue, the reason you would do this is because you don't want like, low priority stuff in group four to block. You want to like group four is low priority, group five is high priority. You don't want to like block the whole subscription because because like <laughs> because there's other because it's being blocked by this other thing that's that's like low that's like a low priority. So you would want to like in a perfect world like unlimited implementation complexity, you would want to like keep keep stats for this. But that is that is hard. And furthermore you can make a case that then you know what screw it just like his I'm this active speaker now case, maybe you just want to actually forget about group priority and say, no, I'm going to send group five because there's been a priority change and forget about group four, at least, or at least defer group four. So I, I, I actually honestly don't care from a merit perspective, but I would like to I think, converge on okay. this. I think my counter proposal, I think this is an individual, how I would, really so I would just keep the algorithm that we have, that the, that the publisher, now, especially now that tracks are like, entire, if we think about it in the context of what subscribe is going to be, and it's all live. That if there's if the if somebody's priority changed, I became the active speaker. Rather than starting to mint all new objects with some new priority, I just send a message, a track priority update, and there is some notion of the sorry, of the subscription, the publisher's so subscription you say, priority. Send a track priority update. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm well. It's because you interrupted me in the middle of my sentence. <laughs> okay. Let me, let me try to finish my proposal. So uh, today, when the publisher wants to communicate that the, the entire subscription's priority should be raised relative to other subscriptions. The mechanism for doing that is starting to send new objects with a higher priority or new subgroups. Do you agree with that? At least the way the draft's yes. written right now, that's yes. how you do it. You're like, yes. okay, I want, I suddenly need this subscription from my perspective to be more important than another one. I have to publish a new object on that stream or pub publish a new subgroup on that subscription with some higher priority level, and that is what affects the change. The yes. counter proposal is, instead of doing that, I send a different kind of message, which is, I would like the subscription, the priority of this subscription from my perspective to go from 10 to six. Please do that. And In that, the data that, stream or the control stream? TB, I don't, I don't, I don't For control, objects you already sent? I, 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 I think yes. what we've got is great. If you read it how, Draft six works. It does retroactively apply to objects you've published. I don't. I don't get that out of draft. I think that's wrong. I think your interpretation is wrong. <laughs> okay. All right. I, like, all right. So, like, I, either there's a clarity problem or not. Okay. There's clearly a clarity problem. We, we had this debate actually so in Seattle, I think, in the last day. So, yeah. am I just misunderstanding? Because so, I propose what you said exactly. Does so, anyone have a problem with this PR? Well, that, that's that, that's <laughs> so, 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 you believe the draft currently says this? Yes. All right. I, and I'm, I'm glad to be shown I'm wrong. Okay. So, so normal let, 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 let me make sure I understand. Clear. When you want to raise the priority of a, a subscription, your plan is to 
increase so the priority of, as a publisher. You have, you want to, you're like, I, yeah. this, I have two subscriptions coming in and I want relays to know that A should be prioritized higher than B for my perspective. One is for audio, one is for video, whatever reason, or active speaker, not active speaker. I want to raise the priority of one versus the other. That's I will start publishing objects or subgroups on that subscription with a higher priority. And that is what you want. Higher so higher will, publisher priority. I will, highest publisher priority, which would not override subscriber priorities. If, if the subscriber of has said, yeah, yes. of course, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just that I would change, and that would publish the objects that were, it would change it for the objects that were published after that point in time, not for any object I'd published before that, only for objects that were published meaning, with that going forward. Meaning if they're in a separate subgroup that, that you're, in addition to raising the priority of this subscription, you're also skipping over data in this subscription. You're going to change priorities on an iframe, probably. You're probably going to issue an iframe at the same point in time, okay? But, like, whatever. I mean, like, like ignoring, just ignore, let's just say I'm doing audio, okay? There's no groups or subgroups. It's easier to talk about. I suddenly decide this audio stream is more, the left audio stream is more important than the right. Previously, it was the other way around. I will just change the publisher priority on those objects as I publish them. And they'll skip over the older ones. Older groups. So, any older audio has the older priority will get they'll be the back of the queue so it'll be like just skip over seconds of audio sure if that's okay okay it, it, i mean like look if they if i didn't want that to happen i would put them all into okay. the same subgroup right, right and then they would be skipped the over. gong is going to ring in nine minutes luke you're next <laughs> I in the queue just, I, I was just going to say we had this conversation in seattle where our priority updates retroactive and that's what you're kind of saying um i had a proposal for like tra send track info again it has publisher priority in it and you send it, and it was five, and you send a new track info. Now it's seven. Now everything's seven. Um, but yeah, otherwise, I think this is, it's, it's super ambiguous, I think, if it's retroactive or not, is, is my opinion. Because uh, I can see either interpretation. Well, is the, there is nothing ambiguous about the Well, we decided in Seattle that the, high, the most recent object decides the entire track's priority, which is to say it is retroactive. Not, not, not the most recent. recent. We did this it was the highest ID. It was it was the, the highest max. ID. Yeah, so the like, max. So, is, so that is, is retroactive. retroactive. That's like, retroactive. This though. is why the counting is hard because I first group is object priority six and the second object. No, sorry. First one's ten. The first one's ten. The second one's six. And the third one's ten. And then like for like then the priority six until I've delivered all the sixes and then all of a sudden it goes back to ten. We we originally agreed that the track the priority that is put on the objects or the subgroups was the entire tracks publisher priority. But there seems to be like, actually, no, it's the subgroup's priority. That is actually the case. That is, I actually believe that was the consensus. That was the consensus. That was the consensus. Because the whole point was retroactive. The it whole is point the was changing, yeah. changing priorities. Somebody became an active speaker, you want to change the priority. So the only way the publisher can change the priority without canceling its publication is... So it's the last it's object you received. That doesn't make any... Uh, they, but, you change it at the point to become the active speaker. You don't no, change but, but, the, the audio. But you have objects. Yeah, the whole point of these priorities is that there's back there's backup. You don't no, need, you need, the, you need the gop up so to you have that a queue, point, right? right? And now the queue is filled with junk, and you want to skip the queue <laughs> of junk. Because well, this yeah, is the, of course, yes, yeah, yeah. This is new, so it has yeah. to be retroactive. No, 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 no. I think, but just what we're talking about here, I think that's totally the opposite. It has to be retro. That's that's saying my new audio packet, that the first packet of my active speaker thing is higher priority, and I want it sent ahead of that old audio that's sitting in the queue. Yeah. And I don't know if you become an active speaker, that means when you are active speaker, it clobbers your priority. Okay. Ian, and you lose the tail of your Ian, Oh, sorry, I didn't know. Ian, are you? Sorry. Ready? Yes, uh, I, I am still in the queue. I'm, I'm trying to process where you're all. Thing. Um, I mean, on a high level, a track cannot have a priority. Like that's impossible. Like I guess it would technically, contextually, like in the long term, the track priority would be the min of any subgroup the track contained. But like, doesn't that seem like a bizarre context if you have a three-hour video stream and like two hours ago? the track priority happened to be low, but like, it's not really a track, pro like, I think maybe that, like, that's like an inherently like flawed concept I, to say it out loud. And like, we're talking about prioritizing data, not tracks, at least in general. And so like- Not how the Seattle um, algorithm is written. Yeah. It's hmm? tracks and then objects within the track. Subscriptions. Yeah. Subscriptions. But, but you're right, Ian, it's just, it's not. But okay. I mean, it doesn't. I, I'll put right. sure it in the minimum either, so I don't know where this is. It's it not example you're looking at. It explains the how to 
Okay. 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 The gong is going to ring in five minutes. <laughs> so, right. I think I know how we got here. Like it, it, it made total sense while we we're trying to describe it. Like, I think talking about the idea of a track party is like fundamentally flawed. Like we could, we should stop doing that if we can possibly avoid it. Are you in favor of so, Victor's proposal, Ian? Uh, I'm fine with Victor's proposal. Sure. Okay. Like I don't have a particularly strong preference. I just, I just don't like the whole like every time we receive a new object, you potentially could prioritize the entire, yeah. all things in the queue. That seems yeah. confusing. I think the to me. Uh, some of the uh, edge cases, and in the, in the way an active speaker works, is that whenever the system that decides who's the active speaker will have to set the priority in the right uh, order, so that you know that those active speakers' audio video takes pre pre uh, preference or, or, or preference over any any other thing that's going. That's only the active speaker works. It's not the speaker who makes the decision. Something that's making the decision knows that okay, well, Alan is the speaker, and then it marks those things higher priority because it can go because it's gone. So it's not for the things that's already in. It's for the new things. That will go, and that has to have higher priority than other things that will go. So, let me let me can I ask a question about this actor speaker? Mike. Oh, okay. sorry. Go ahead, Mike. Uh, yeah. So, um, to build on that, I think the reason that we wanted it to be somewhat retroactive is that uh, you might be mid group when the priority changes, and you want to be able to say, "Oh, because uh, this speaker is now the speaker, I actually want to make sure that the iframe." That I might have in my queue somewhere, it's down ahead of other stuff, which is like retroactive in terms of what you might have in flight. Uh, it is very complicated, though. Like, but I think that's I think that's how we ended up. There. Okay, no, 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 no. There's a queue. A uh, queue is closed, in fact, because you have one minute to make a comment, and I'm going to try to. Okay, I, this is really a question, and, and maybe where? I'm... What? Uh, I was in the queue for like the last ten minutes. Okay, go ahead, Dicker. <laughs> I've been talking a lot. Uh, okay. Uh, the thing I was going to point out is that we can prioritize tracks and prioritize data. Prioritizing data is strictly more powerful than prioritizing tracks because you can just assign same priority to all data and track. The only reason we would want it for subscriber is because subscriber can prioritize data it's receiving. Right? Uh, right. No, 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 no. Okay. <laughs> I captured nothing in the notes because I. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Nothing was done to you. If you support Victor's PR, raise your hand. hand. One, two, three. Yeah. Four. Okay. If you dislike Victor's proposal and prefer the status quo to that, raise your hand. I don't like the status quo either. Right. <laughs> it feels strongly ambivalent. No, I, I understand. I think the status quo. I think the status quo is bad, and I think this is not the right solution. But I um, also don't quite understand this one case, and I'd rather ask a question. But I can ask it in the break. Okay. okay. Um, revisit Seattle. <laughs> all right. This, all right. Let me ask a different question. Who dislikes this proposal? One. <laughs> this is just me. Well, can you ask who wants another proposal? Like, well, if it's this complex for us to even fix our own ideas of priority, <laughs> it's a nightmare. <laughs> it's going to be a follow-up PR guarantee. Okay. So, like, I, I don't know. Like, okay, so we have, we have two minutes. Okay, I'm going to ask. I want to ask a question because I want to understand what we're. Can, trying to, like, can you explain what you'd want changed to this proposal? Can I ask so my question know? first because I want to understand a use case before I make okay. a proposal, which is about an active speaker. So, let's say I have. Let's make it easy and say there's two people talk. There's 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 two people. One and so one is active at any time. So I'm talking, and then now I'm the active speaker. And the relay has some data queued from me that was from before I was the active speaker, and some data queued from me from when I am the active speaker. So is that priority change supposed to say my data my is more important than the other data because I'm speaking, or is it supposed to say my new data is better than my old data, in which case I'll be talking a little bit and then like, oh, he's the active speaker, and all of a sudden it'll drop the things I was saying when I became the active speaker. So I'm trying to, we're, we're using it for both, and I'm trying to understand, is that how you want it to work? Yeah. If you're an yes. speaker, okay. if it's an active speaker, you're already going to report it. Report. Like because someone, something decided you're active speaker, so you already got the priority to go through. But let's say Victor was speaking, and you become active speaker, at that point in time, the thing that's pending makes your things higher priority. And then, and whenever someone has chosen an active speaker, they have to also restart a group too. It's not just uh, because you need to have the keyframe and everything. So you will be set at higher priority compared to Victor. Well, let, me, let me make a concrete example, and this is probably the last word, it's just 2.30. Let's say Victor has two audio packets in his draft set <laughs> that have the same priority. And I have two audio packets, one low and one high. 
but they are in different groups or something, or like one, one little bit more high. They're in different subgroups. You're saying the first thing you want is my high pry audio packet, and you're going to drop my old packet. I really don't know why do you have two audio packets with two different priorities to pack it. Because I, that's how you say, you. I became the active speaker in the middle. I said something, and then it's like, oh, he's the active speaker. Set the, set the next one. Uh, my answer is actually really simple. The, the, the key principle here is that the priority of you speaking is higher than priority of you not speaking. That's a, okay. If, I mean, if the working, I'm, I'm not going to lay in the road. You guys say what you want. Okay. This is easy to implement. I just think it's bananas. I don't know, so, I think okay. People are missing what Mike said. That yeah, was the easy. reason why we came up with the text we came up with. It, it the, the, the decision group. happens yeah. mid-group. You can't, you can't change the data that's already been published. So mid-group, you have to say, oh, I need to publish this data with a new priority. But I can't start delivering this object because it's useless without this other object. But that other object is already published with low priority. You're stuck. You can't do anything. And don't make a new iframe every time Act is. Uh, you changes. still cannot change. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Don't do a new iframe every time it's 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 What I heard was I don't the button down the road on this. I think like a four to one is not exactly like a gigantic consensus, but it's kind of very rough. I would suggest that we land this PR and. Alan, I know, wants to do something else he's not articulated. We don't have time to talk about now. We, I'm, well, I think it's fine to revisit this. Does anyone, does anyone hate that conclusion? Did, did you yes. ask Did you ask people that don't want to land anything, period? You want to keep the mint? I, 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 ask, pe I ask people who, who, who likes this proposal, who doesn't like this proposal. So I think if you like the status, if you like the status quo, then you should not like this proposal. Well, maybe the question is, do you want to see a different proposal? That's fine. We right. could do a different proposal. If you all think right. parties are all messed right. up, and need all right, okay, all right, show up. Yeah. 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 Another yeah. interrupt. Yeah. The last question: Who would like to see something different from this and the status quo? One, two, <laughs> three, four, five. Okay. All right. Oh, so I'm on this topic. I, I was I was waiting to talk. I apologize. That, that was not me. Okay. Great. Um. All right, so I'm gonna ring the gong. I think um, it's clear that like people want something else. You have to see what that, or I'm sorry, there's, there's not consensus. There's not consensus to this versus versus something else. But I would like to something else. Consensus. So is someone going to volunteer to write a alternate proposal for this in a finite amount of time? I will volunteer if no one else will volunteer, but it's probably, if there's no one else that's articulating the position, then it so it has to be me. I would like Alan to buy. What's that? I think Alan, I think you have the most clear concept of like what you want, and I, right. I think that would be helpful. Lovely. So, um, I, I think uh, so. Let me give you maybe a week and a half away. So it's actually two weeks, two virtual interims. No PR by then. I think I'm going to interpret that as no viable alternative. And we're going to land this sucker because people don't like this. Okay. Okay. And, and for the people who don't like the status quo and are not comfortable with this, tell me what you think. If you have an idea. All right. I'm happy to sanitize it. Okay. <laughs> Gong rings. All right. Where were? What was our next thing? Um. Let's let's give Will a chance to talk about track. Will, are you Sorry. ready to talk about the namespace name merge? Yeah, I have slides. Okay. Do we have time though? It's, yeah, we got we got we have one hour. hour. Skip okay. over the object ID proposal. That's okay. Yeah, I'm doing that on purpose. Yeah. I have a question about that. Are we going to get back to the object ID proposal or no? Uh, well, I, so I, I propose bringing the gong at three o'clock on this one. And so, yes. Because okay. I mean, okay. it would be nice, given we've spent so much time talking about um, like other things about objects and, and everything today, at least all that's fresh in our mind. And so I feel like yeah. the object ID proposal might be okay, easier so to process we now. More, than we, have than... for, we, have, we have time for two more topics. I'm going to give Will one. I'm going to put through the other. So, uh, yeah, so Will, go. Okay, hold on, managing, messaging my manager. Uh, share. I'm sharing. Yeah, I can push you off the click. And let's go to slideshow. So, the point of these slides is to explore the concept in exposed in issue 508, which is to merge namespace and name. So currently we have something that looks like this, an N32 tuple for namespace. And then we have our name tacked on the end. And the unique track identifier is the concatenation of the two. So the proposal in, in 
that issue is that we can remove the distinction between namespace and name and whatever was a name just gets moved up to be the, the last uh, component of the tuple. And that name is now a single unique identifier for the object. So the consequence of this is that subscriptions can now happen against subranges. So we don't have this notion of, you know, subscribe to a namespace. Now you can subscribe to as many of these tuples as you feel comfortable with or that you're allowed to. So you could go for the unique, the full, the full name. You could go for some subset of it. What's not allowed is gaps. You cannot say, I want one, two, and sort of have a star matching for that. But this is equivalent to subscribe one, two, three, star, which is a wildcard subscribe. Clarification? Yeah. The <coughs> prohibition against gaps is purely artificial, right? It's, uh, we could if we, if we wanted We could to. do it, but if you start going down that road, that gets complex quickly too. But there's nothing fundamentally technical why we can't do gaps. You put a null thing and then it matches everything. Yeah. I think so. Yeah, and I've got a bunch of slides in case you want to go through. Oh, if you want to just go quickly through your whole thing, the walk, there might be questions that are answered. So, so what does this look like under a merged scenario? So there's a bunch of stuff here. We got two publisher. This one announces ABC and publishes tracks ABC one, ABC two. This one publishes announces ABK, publishes ABK one, ABK two. So I have a client that comes on on the right and says, you know what, I want ABC1. So basically what they're going to receive is just ABC1. Um, there's, there's, there's no complexity there. But if they subscribe to ABC, what they should now receive is, is both ABC1 and ABC2. And it's all going to come down the pipe with the same subscribe ID mixed up. Because it asks for both, it gets both. I made a note that Relay should never make wildcard subscribes upstream themselves. Otherwise, they risk receiving traffic that they don't actually forward. So Relay should always decompose it as best it can. And in this case, so these are just separate cases. If, if the client now subscribes to AB, it's going to get both tracks from pu Publisher 1 and also both tracks from Publisher 2. And I made another note that the client receives all these wildcard forwards under the same subscribe ID, and that the client must disambiguate the flows based upon their object names. You mean track alias? Uh, track yeah, track alias. Okay. All right. Is that yeah. it? No. Okay. Uh, so I there's an inherent D dot risk here, right? If we had 10,000 publishers, say at underwebx.com. I can make a single request at the edge, and this relay is then going to receive traffic from 10,000 publishers. If that happens, we're doing something wrong. No, but that's oh, an uncontrolled <laughs> mechanism. <laughs> would allow this. <laughs> <laughs> I, I understand. <laughs> I'm putting out the obvious, yeah. Um, so how can we reduce the risk of DDoS? So first, we have an auth system that's tied to the tuples so themselves, yeah. with some concept of a minimum prefix required attached to the access token. So you, whatever access token we create, it must be able to say that you're only allowed to subscribe level, no, tuple five, six, and down, for example. And that would protect against that. The other way to protect is Relay should implement a max number of publishers for which they're willing to go upstream for. So, you know, at the sixth tuple here, there's only one publisher, there's three publishers, but if I go one level higher, there's suddenly 546, and at that point, the Relay says, no, I'm, I'm not doing this. So there are mechanisms if we allow wildcard subscribe to protect the relays. There's another th problem I wanted to point out, which is dependency when under coalescing. So here we have a client that subscribes to AB, and basically as soon as it does that, it makes all these other subscriptions happen. ABC, and I colored them because they're the same subscription of the same color. So these client, this is clients announcing ABC, ABK, ABF, and if I want AB, all of these happen. And then what happens is, Another client comes along and wants ABK, which is convenient now because I've already got the feed here, so I can just I can feed them at Relay 2 without opening up any connections. But if client 1 goes away, now I still have to do AB2. So basically there's churn across my system. I have to, the all, everything dotted disappears and everything colored has to remain. So one client leading at the edge could cause significant upstream connection churn. Are you done? Yeah, I'm done. Okay, Colin. Am I in the queues on there? No, you are. Thank you. So, 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 um, Victor, Mike. 
I, I, I do really like this, and I don't think it, it deeply complicates the, the relay implementations. Like, this upstream turn right there, like, that's more or less true Any Like, the relays, when they ha when everybody is subscribed to a subscription stops, they get rid of it. So I think that goes away. I wanted to comment on the thing about the gaps in the middle of the, 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 of the name tuples. Like, if we could wild card effectively the middle, yeah, so way back there. Um, I think that that actually... I, I don't want that. I think that it really greatly complicates the data structure you need to keep track of all of these things. It means you have to actually, it, you know, it's sort of like the difference between just running down a, a, a tree and the searching yeah. some regular expression. So I think that if we allowed that, which we obviously could from a syntax point of view, it would deeply, it would slow down the search of matching objects to namespaces in all these things. So right now they're yeah. just a, it's a byte match, right? If yeah. these so bytes I, match, you're yeah. you and, and then like you were in the auth issue as well, it gets a little bit more complicated with this. So I like this idea of like, it's, it's a rightmost only wild card. Yeah. Victor. Okay. Could you put me later in Sophia? Yes. Two yes. Haas. Yeah. Uh, in the issue, I commented on this on the issue. I, I love this idea. Uh, and I, I agree uh, on the last slide, that's not really a problem. Um, you, even when multiple people ask for different things, you go and when there are no active subscribers for a particular feed, it has to it'll, it'll go away at some point. Um, I think this this can this can be built at scale. I would love, love to see if we can get to the next level. Luke, so two, there's two proposals in one here. One is combining the namespace and the name, um, which I think the namespace actually has some semantic meaning right now, and you're losing that by combining it. You know it was a broadcast, so you know that the timestamps are aligned or something like that. So I don't really think combining them, like it's a little cleaner on the wire, part, but it's, not, it's the same on the wire. It's a little cleaner in the draft. Um, as for wildcards, uh, I was going to ask a clarifying question. You said a relay should never forward wildcards upstream, but how does it know? How does it know it's a wildcard? Does it have to, like a magical list of every namespace that exists upstream, and it knows that I shouldn't forward it? That's a good question. Um, it has to have some lookup mechanism, right? Either it's using mock itself to discover, I think, as your network does. Yeah, so in like, which case, it would have to forward that that up. Like or, subscribe namespace, right, in the current draft. Yeah. It'd learn about namespaces. Could the client just use that and then make the wildcard itself, right? Why does the relay have to do the, the first, like, convert wildcard to a individual subscribes? Yeah, yeah, let's go down to this. It's not converting, but just following that. No, it is converting. Let's yeah. go to this example. So how does, when this receives a request for AB, how does it know that that's just not AB, but that is in fact a wildcard? It's because in, in, in the system we would build, there'd be a database saying how to go forward for something. And when we looked up in that database, we'd see that AB is not actually a final track, that AB is, a, AB is not something that's, announced precisely here. It doesn't match a precise announce, meaning it's an aggregation. But yeah. Right. That was, that was, yeah that was, okay. if, if we go back, I don't think namespace is that different by the time we... All right, I don't think, I, I, I'm next to the queue as an individual. So I think the harder part is when you're aggregating two clients. So one is doing ABC, the other is doing ABD. Like how does the relay know to aggregate data to AB? Like should it shouldn't. Sure. It shouldn't, is my point. Okay, that's but yeah, right. it shouldn't. So basically, yeah. the relay never aggregates. It always yeah. says individual yeah. subscribes. So the end user does a lot of wildcards for some reason. What I actually entered the queue to say is like this This makes max subscribe ID a little weird because like a single subscribe ID can like actually end up in like a zillion subscribes. Yeah. And I don't know how to think about that necessarily, but I don't have a strong opinion about this one or the other. But it's something we should be a little careful about. Jana. So uh, I'm trying to understand. So I, I agree with, uh, with Luke that there are two proposals in here. First one is simply merging. I think as long as the second one is actually extending, as I understand it, the current draft to do something more than what the current draft says. Because in the current draft, if you subscribe, if I understand it correctly, correct me if I'm wrong, you have to get the namespace and the name yeah. for a draft, uh, for a subscription. Whereas here, you're allowing someone to subscribe to potentially just a namespace. And that creates all of these other problems. I'm arguing that the differentiation between a namespace plus a name is arbitrary by the time I've concatenated them into a byte. 
The first, that's your first part of the proposal. I'm totally on board with that. I was asking the same question as I was reading the draft. Like, I don't understand why you need the separation, but having one single label that you call a name, I'm on board with. Now you're starting to do prefixes in there. And that creates a degree of freedom that creates all these other, other issues. I would, the question I would ask is, um, is that really a strong need? Is there somebody, what, what is the need here for doing, doing that? And if that is, that need, why wasn't it previously uh, a part of the existing draft where subscribe namespace doesn't exist? What's the new need now? Are you answering this or do you want to? You I'm ready. ready. Okay. The, the, new, the need is around simplicity. The question is why did we need to segregate namespace and name in the first place? No, no, no. I'm, that we part we're on board with. Okay. But now you're asking, to, you're, you're asking to subscribe to a name to a prefix. Right. Which is just another namespace. No, no, but you couldn't subscribe with just the, a namespace. The, the history is that I think Suhas we can. Original, we have subscribed namespace now. Suhas's original in, draft in the draft did have this sort of wildcard subscribe, and um, there'd been an issue filed for a while, people wanting wildcard subscribe. We, oh, that we, was we, in the middle. I will say no, wildcard subscribe. I, 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 I think Quicker always had it. Always had prefix. It's, always um, prefix. it's never been in MOQT, and this is a proposal to to add it. Back in, I think. Does that, that does it? That sounds right. The question is, is it a need or not? And like, or is it? Because I think right now the way you, somebody pointed out already, the way you implemented it is with subscribe namespace, and then the client drives all the subscribe. So it's it's. I think at this point it's just an, it's an optimization or a simplicity thing, but it's not a functionality thing that you can't do with wrap stuff. Mike, yeah, a um, few different things that are all somewhat related. Um, if a relay should never uh, forward wildcard subscribes upstream, it needs to at least retain them uh, itself so that it can match new announces and create new subscribes as new things are published within matching namespaces. Maybe. At which point, yeah. I, I Sorry. see value in having wildcard subscribes in the middle. Um, I would also like to ask a clarifying question about the namespaces as they are today. They're, it's a tuple list, right? So like each of those elements isn't just a single byte. It's like a length of something. Uh, so um, it's not clear to me that uh, just sticking to prefix matching is going to eliminate a ton of complexity. I think in real world use cases, you may have things where for access control reasons, you want to structure things in a way where you would want wildcard subscribes somewhere in the middle. But we can discuss that more. There are seven people in the queue, so be aware of that. Uh, we have 17 minutes before they ring the gong. Uh, Victor, are you ready now? Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, I would looking at our codes, and I, 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 I see two proposals here. One is that we should merge track namespace and track name, and I kind of agree with that there. In our case, where they're mostly merged because they're just like one, one big tuple. Uh, and uh, I, I think there is a <laughs> bit arbitrary that like the last element of like that big full track name has special meaning. And, uh, like just make everything a tuple and you announce a tuple and then if you announce a namespace you own everything after that. Uh, that's perfectly fine. The second I see is the one where a single subscribe can automatically start you delivering objects for multiple tracks. Uh, that makes me really wary. Even managing a single track involves a lot of state that is like associated with pulling things behind and uh, doing that for more than one is like can get really ugly and I'm not even sure of all implications so I'm extremely wary of that part. Daniel. Yeah I same thing as a bunch of people have said there's kind of two things here I'm generally in favor of the merging the two it feels like we already kind of do that behind the scenes uh, but I'm really wary about once we merge them then creating this wildcard thing um, Kind of like to use the example here, you said that like if they do the subscribe AB, uh, there's no matching track for AB. But because we've removed this uh, like separate name thing, now someone could very easily make a track AB, and now suddenly it's super ambiguous of 
did I intend to subscribe to AB or did I intend to subscribe to all things AB plus or both? Um, but if you just subscribe to AB, you are explicitly asking for all things that satisfy the, the prefix of AB. This is why they got rid of prefix. Now or in the future, yeah. So a generic track AB would, it would it, so all subscribes become. If you don't want that, don't, subs, don't have a blanket subscribe. Okay. But are we saying that blanket subscribe and regular subscribe, subscribe are different subscribe things? Or is it just, because if it's just one subscribe, I could go to subscribe to a single track and accidentally end up subscribing to a bunch of little subtracks that I never actually wanted. Mo, then Tim. Yeah. So again, I agree with the uh, combining the namespace and name into a tuple. And like everybody else, I'm wary of the wildcard subscribe. I want the functionality, but I actually think it's better the way that Alan had originally proposed it. I'm, I'm subscribing to the announcements. I don't want to automatically subscribe to every single track because I think, like Victor said, there's a lot of state with each track. For example, you're going to only get one subscribe, okay, but that's for 10 tracks. How can you possibly get the live head for 10 tracks, right? So I don't think you can automatically start forwarding the tracks. You have to force the person to still subscribe again to each one of those tracks because there's state associated with those tracks. Subscribe OK has fields for each one of those tracks. And so I think the right approach is like what Alan had was you get the announcements coming in to tell you that there's a there's a there's an ABC C1, and then I do a subscribe to C1, and I get the subscribe OK back specifically for that C1, and I have the fields for the live head of C1, and I understand what. I have to do to get, to get the rest of C1 if I want. Tim. My question goes back, unfortunately, a while ago, but I don't. I didn't understand why a removal of what I would refer to as a less specific subscribe somehow invalidated all the more specifics that are still there. It was the last slide, maybe. So we don't do that, and we would never do that. And normal IP routing, everything would never do that. That doesn't make any sense. So removing client one should have never resulted in removing everybody else. More specific always wins. ABK is still there. Right, but it is there. And that's it's shown is still there. But these other ones are not needed, so they're pruned. They're, they're pruned, still... yeah, but I thought I heard you say that they would it was causing a problem that A B left. And A B leaving shouldn't cause any issues I, at all. I was so. merely pointing out that I close one I removing one subscribe <laughs> causes five, in this case, five other or three other connections to be closed. And it's not, it's not just one connection, but this is this is true whether we subscribe to individual tracks or not. It's it's not a unique problem. It's just amplified a little bit by the notion of wildcard. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to take a, a brief break from the queue to say, like, I've heard a lot of people express support for the wire image change uh, without the multiple subscribers. Does anyone object to the wire image change? Okay. Uh, we'll, we'll, I'll add you to I, actually think I think maybe, but no. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't before. Sorry. I asked Alan. Uh, okay, so speaking as an individual, for, definitely agree there's two proposals here, and it would be very helpful to separate them um, because I think there's a lot more support, although maybe not universal, for merging it into a single thing and having done a bunch of work on draft six with the namespace tuple. I think that's probably true. One thing I want to point out, like we, we kill prefix matching in relays. You have to match on the full namespace in subscribe. And that's part of the reason why the tracks hold out separately to avoid certain ambiguities about who is authoritative. Today, there's a, there's a, it's the entire announced namespace that you're authoritative for. But if I announce something and then somebody else announces a more specific prefix, it's, now there's an ambiguity because we don't know what the names are inside of the namespace, and then it really has no idea sort of where to route, or it may end up routing to, I guess the new logic says it would route to both. Um, but I think it opens a number amount of complexity that I'm, I'm not sure we want. So I think we should, if, if we're gonna do this namespace name merge, we should be cautious about how namespaces get matched. Ellen, I wanna point out, we can't do the namespace name merge without the wild coding, because then what, what, what namespace gives you is a de facto prefix that you you all agreed to use. If we just merge these, what's our, what's our defect? I mean, prefix? you can just say, you take n minus one and route there. That's not really merging it. That's giving special meaning to the last yeah. one. Yeah, at that point, leave it where it is. I mean, right? I, okay, yeah. so I guess my, my, my proposal is you either do that, which is the same logic we have today, or you, I think it's the only thing that works. 
anyway, uh, anyway, our reservations. And then I think wildcard subscribe is like an optimization over what we have today. And I don't think that we should necessarily go there anytime soon. All right. Uh, I'm running the gong in 10 minutes. Ian. Uh, yes. I, I think if we want wildcard card subscribe later, we can add it as an extension. So I will channel my inner Martin Thompson on that one. Um, I think there's a bunch of like sticky issues because the more I think about this, like every time I come up with, with a new one, but like there's the like tracks are supposed to have a track alias for but, like if I subscribe to a thousand tracks, like how do I know what track alias they have? Because we don't currently have a fixed algorithm, for example. Um, there's also the question of like, um, I'm trying to think like what happens if, as someone pointed out, like I subscribe to something. And then suddenly someone decides, I'm going to tr publish a, you know, a sub directory for lack of a word, a longer thing with the same name as the thing I subscribe for. Before I thought I was just getting a track, but now I'm getting like a track plus some number of other tracks, which is weird. There's also the Mo point out the, uh, like the current live head thing no longer has meaning. Like there's a whole bunch of fields we have here that like kind of don't have meaning and that doesn't even touch things like prioritization and stuff. Like if I'm getting a number of things, like do I really not care about the priority of one of these things relative to another one? And there's not even a mechanism for like updating the priority and saying like, I got a hundred things. Like I want this one thing higher priority than the other ones. So I, I just feel like it's like, I mean, I'm not saying I couldn't make this work, but it's going to be a ton of work. And I'd really rather pump that in the future, given the cost of our current mechanism is basically like it takes a round trip because I have to wait for the announce before I subscribe to it, which again, it's an optimization. So, um, but uh, yeah, okay. Well, that's right. Okay. I, I, I think that I'm, I'm a bit concerned that we are trying to conclude this without even looking at how to solve this. I, I, didn't, I, I if, if 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 I go one level detail into this one, probably I I, I would be explaining for how how does subscribe namespace result in clients knowing how, what are the tracks available and what to do with it. I think here everyone kind of I feel like uh, the, the assumption that a single subscribe and okay we'll have all the information. That's one way to implement it, but not the, the only way. Uh, and we, we and we we need kind of separate out like what is this feature as itself. Um, Providing uh, as 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 good thing versus how to do it. I, th I think once you separate this one out, it would be easier to say why it's this, something like this is useful, especially in meetings and like uh, the, the, the common like AI summarization services or meeting recording services. They they are pretty well suited. If if you go and ask for get me all the streams in a meeting rather than making ten thousand people in the in, in a meeting and each sending like a couple of streams and a sharing stream. Ask, keep repeating that one. If this kind of helps, I agree. It's kind of uh, something that makes life easier over top of what we have, but it's also powerful too. How we implement this is it one subscribe that can kind of response with all the information? I don't think that's the way it should work. Uh, that's where the priority and all those kind of the design decisions are coming. That's more like we need to think about it when we start designing this one rather than thinking is this a useful feature or not. On, on, other, on the other hand, on uh, announce being. Uh, one publisher making announce for something and another publisher making announce for something specific that we handle today in today's implementation. I, that's not very different. You do prefix match even there, even though it's, you're doing a prefix per tuple, but it's not uh, within the bytes itself, but you do like who is specific. If two people match, you do send to both. That I don't think is complicated by this one. So, Victor, just to clarify, pretty sure the draft now still says you ex Relays route exact match on full namespace. Yeah, sure. There's no, there's no do... prefix match. No, no. If, I'm, I'm not. What I'm, all I'm trying to say is, if someone did a uh, three tuple and someone did four tuple, right. only one guy is going to get it. Whoever okay. gets the subscribe either had a three tuple or a four tuple, and that's exactly. where it's going. Be an exact match. Okay, but how do you know only four tuple by looking at the four things, right? I'm trying prefix match is just a one step further to say that you know how many of those when I do search, uh, my output is one or three. That's not what prefix match is saying. Yeah. It's no, not okay. Say, it's not saying different. Okay, you're saying all of the above. Okay. okay. Victor? Uh, another reason to not do welfare subscribes. Usually when you join a track, you like want to do uh, a little of backfill. So hopefully you're not doing wildcard fetch. Uh, 
Luke, uh, I, I have to do the Q. Sure. Yeah, 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 I mean, I've been thinking about whole thing. Yeah, no, um, the, I would just think about this in file system analogy. Like, right now with, with namespace subscribe, you can think of it like the find command. It lists you the names of all directories. Cool. If I want to file, like, I know the file name, I can then do cat on it. This is just like cat prefix slash star star slash. <laughs> and you just get everything. And I mean, yeah, like, what if you want audio above video higher priority? It's like, oops. Like, it, it doesn't work in many cases. Like, there's almost never a time where a fire hose of data is what you want. Colin. Jana. Can I use this to say fetch star uh, from youtube.com? Yeah. Well, this not right. depends, depends on the authorization setup. Yeah, I guess I, I can, I'll max out at like some 500. Well, it should all, yeah. should get them all. The answer is yes. <laughs> <laughs> just to be clear, I, I am not a fan of this. No, no, I'm just I was asking, asked to create I'm, slides I'm so we could discuss it. Oh, well, okay. okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but but the, there's another piece in here which it just seems like it's a. You, you pointed out that there's a toss against origins, yeah. and I'm severely concerned about that. Well, I'm like concerned too. One, right. one client message resulting right. in five server messages yeah. is. So, any, all right, so we have four minutes left. We could just can it now, because I'm not sure we're going to commit anything. But I think there's at least hope of getting to a rough consensus on the tuple bit. Maybe. Well, no. I think I think subscribe star is, is not going to happen today. I, I, I mean, I think maybe that how many we should maybe ask. Would people like to see a PR for a namespace name merge? And would people, and, and I think if, based on what we heard, there's a lot of concerns about wildcard subscribe. So they're the proponents of wildcard subscribe. If they want that to come with a very specific, maybe not PR level, but very specific proposal that we can discuss at a future meeting. Do people think I'm, that that's okay? I'm hearing a lot of general pushback to the idea of wildcard subscribe. But also some strong proponents, and I don't want to yeah. dismiss their. I think I've heard pushback against. A vague wildcard subscribe. What kind of unknown semantics? I've seen concrete semantics. I'm not going to tell anyone that like they can't come with proposals or the thing. I'm just saying I think the ground is pretty rough right now in terms of trying to get it through. But I'm willing to spend more agenda time on it if people want to spend more agenda time on it. I, I don't know if I would take today as a signal that you should go do a subscribe wildcard thing because I don't I don't read the room that way. Uh, okay, so do we want to talk more about the, in the two minutes we have left, do we want to talk more about consolidating the tuple? Is there more people want to say about I it? Mean, should we just ask, would people like to see a specific proposal for okay, it? Let's ask back in the next. My comment is, as soon as you concatenate the tuple, you're going to be stuck with the same problem of deciding which part of it acts like a namespace. namespace yeah, I think that's, so I yeah, think, right. having that's done important. through this whole exercise, what we have in namespace is fine. It's a line in the sand and we can make it work. And we're just going to reinvent another line in the sand as soon as we merge it. Okay. It's not going to be any fundamentally better. If you want to do wildcard subscribe, yes, you have to go down this road. But there's, there's no real, yeah. no one's really asking okay. for it. All right. So why change? Okay. I, I'm getting a signal from them that we can just like table this. I think and Ian, uh, Ian. Ian. I apologize. In this case, I think I just didn't lower my hand in time. No, no, I, I would, I would start. I, yeah. I certainly think that's a great direction. And also I would thank Will for making slides about this, because even if you're not necessarily a proponent, um, I think this is an incredibly valuable question. So yeah. I was so, unsure when I started. No, you have a question. So so are we saying that the, uh, you're asking that um, the namespace merge pr proposal be tabled because it's not clear whether or not it, it's tied to something else? It's not standing no, on its own? No, I'm hearing many people like, Experience uh, express reluctance to do the namespace tuple merge on its own. So I don't think we have anything like consensus to move forward. Yeah, the, the point is that the worry about the namespace. You, I you, I said the no, Luke did. didn't like well, it. So we'll just the, the, the problem is it would route based on the first n minus one part of the the tuple. So what's and it just makes the draft really vague because now you're talking about the last part of the tuple and the first n no, no, part no, of the tuple. You know, this was a subscribe wildcard. Okay, I'm cutting it. There's disagreement about it. I don't think that I'm judging. There's not currently consensus to move forward with, that, with any sort of PR in that area. We can bring it again, but we're not going to get there today. So uh, feel free to bring up the issue again if you really want the tuple merge. Okay. Uh, it is three, one comment on it's that. 304. Oh, sorry. One comment on it quickly. Look, the tuple merge won't change the functionality of what we can or cannot do with the draft. But we're ignoring the wild card stuff. So like, like, let's just not work on that right now. Editorial, it just yeah. makes the draft yeah. confusing. Okay. Yeah. Okay.
All right, we're going to take a 10 minute bio break. I think if you've observed something today, we're starting on time. So be back here at 315 Eastern, and we're going to do one more of these. We're going to go home. Okay. For the notes, there was no, no consensus, no no consensus, consensus on either. either yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, on the wire, they're basically merged already. Yeah. Just in the draft, do you specify that the First there are so merged, I literally like take the tuple size and plus one it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, maybe books. maybe over telling we should just tell implementers like, by the way, don't don't make any fields or like, I mean, maybe we'll make a name the uh, tuple at some point, right? <laughs> multiple parts. Oh, we already have a name, full track name. No, no, I mean the namespace can be multiple parts, and the name could be multiple parts too. Oh, yeah. I, I think Gosh. we should go the other yeah. way. I think we should just say, <laughs> When we say track name in the draft, what we mean is tuple Name's 32 out of the full track name, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so what is, anyway, I have a question about this, the, the subscribe namespace thing. What's the, like, how is that different from the subscribe to a free thing? So subscribe namespace is completely Extra poorly rather. named. What you're actually subscribing to are <laughs> announces, <laughs> announcements that match a particular namespace. Well, you're subscribing prefix. the whole you're, you're, you're learning the name. So I see. Some that so that, that's, that's what I did. But so I here's, 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 it's really useful. here's fundamentally the difference between the two. I, and, and like, look, like the announce subscribe thing's awesome. You can do really a lot with it. Very powerful interaction that's mechanism. Space, right? So what's in the draft today, right? The subscribe namespace. I, I picked a bad name for it. Great. Like that's gives, gives little, you yeah. very powerful but I, I agree with that in level of interaction. Yeah. What it doesn't give you is that when somebody publishes an object and you're not subscribed to it, like like you don't go to see the object. Y y you you will. I mean, you might be able to get it out of a cache, but it's cached, right? But you're not going to get it when it first publishes because you're probably going to be a little bit late it's on your subscribe and fetch. So if you, so you might have to go and get fetch back. Yeah, this, you might have to do a subscribe and fetch. Um, um, because you receive the announcement, and then you have to push yeah. the subscribe. So out and then you get yeah. The... So if you're interested in a space like gaming or something where you're like, oh my god, some new thing came on and and you know sent some data and you wanted it really fast, there might. Like I'm not arguing we should do it or not right now. I'm just sort of saying there are use cases where it's somewhere different because you get the data as soon as it's. Well, right. it's yeah. but it sounds like an optimization that we can definitely work yeah. on later. Yeah, you can just yeah. that's that's why I'm so chill about it. Right. Good, good. Yeah. Okay. We we, we need an RCT after announcing before making the track. And, and we've got a design with the tuples and everything. That's like if we decided to add that later it would be, we're already fairly well down the path of doing. Like it's not a. You should probably go about halfway yeah. through. I guess. I am. Yeah. I, 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 I no. I was trying to. Yeah, the namespace really, you know, subscribing that to the really slowed down. Down. That solved like 90% of yeah, the yeah. use cases. Yeah, I think you'll be the airport at 4.30 hour to get to your gate to work. Yeah, no, 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 no. It's, but there's uh, a problem with me. I, I, call, I call it announcement <laughs> first. Like, I care about oh, these oh, things. Oh, oh, oh. I use the relay <laughs> <laughs> announcement to give others. They learn about like, like, oh, all yeah. the rallying tables. They, they share point. rallying tables. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I get that. Wait, I, I like announcement first. Or subscribe. No, it's not in the shipping list. You should drop that as an issue. Yeah, do that. You can answer that. It's a bad yeah. name. Well, it's, very no, it's, it's a horrible name. What was the new name you came up with? Uh, announce interest. I like it. Announce interest. Okay. I like yeah, it. Like, it's like, and uh, you could yeah, do yeah, modifications for announce interest, the cost, honestly, because it's it's, it's annoying. Annoying. Well, well, it's 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 it's
part of the idea is like the catalog message. The tracks could be dynamic. Um, you know, it's kind of like HP requests. Like you don't, you can discover domain names, but you can't discover paths. No. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good like a, like analogy, but it's for routing. It's discovering for routing is what the the, the like announced interest I'm calling it is. Um, but it, you don't know what the actual content. Yeah. is. So I was going to say that um, it might be interesting to discuss the idea of announce having what the live head is at that moment in the announce, because yeah. especially now that you have subscribe namespace. If you get like a thousand announces, but like a bunch of them are like available, but it's like that's you know from two days ago, and some of them are like at the live head. That is very. Do you want yeah. announce track, Ian? Where you announce every track ind individually? Yes, that's that's what we we're just talking about over there. We need the actual track to be announced, not just the namespace. Oh, isn't that what announce namespace does? Announce. It oh, discovers the namespaces namespace, only. The oh. Well, How do you find the tracks then? Yeah. Yes. Announces and namespaces only and a publisher can just say announce a namespace and they could publish a bunch of tracks on <laughs> with no yeah. nobody knowing what those them? tracks are. There's a catalog file, the JSON file that then describes the tracks. Do you announce the participants on a meeting, but not the tracks they're producing? I swear I reviewed that PR. I did not understand the It's a well known track name right now, it's like catalog.json. So you know, oh, um, in the announce, in it's, the announce, it's it's space? in the application oh, layer technically. Are you just going and fetching it from the? Oh, uh, yeah. it, it's again, it's kind of like HTTP. You learn the domain names, yeah, but you don't know what the path is supposed to. Be. You don't know should I fetch index.html? It's kind of up to the application, and index.html then I points to other directories, right? Yeah, so so yeah, so right now you the JSON only... file is published under the namespace, and then you go it's a track the... under the namespace. Like, I, 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 I don't track. Like, I don't and the track contains stuff like the codec and sure, sure, yeah, yeah. Because otherwise, like the idea was, otherwise you have to encode all the exact information into the name. So you have to encode the codec in there, the width, the height, all the selection parameters into the name. I mean, you don't have to. You can like, I mean, if I'm running Google Meet, like I can like make a heuristic that's like this is how you find stuff and like. The, yeah, that smart. was that was the idea of just having a different blob that describes tracks because it's application specific. What tracks you want. Or not, basically, what you're saying is that yeah, it's application. You're based. announcing a namespace. You subscribe to the namespace dot well known um, uh, well -known track, track, list, track name track yeah. list is is always there, and then as soon as you do that, you get the names for the other tracks yep. on that particular subscription. And that namespace, yeah. Uh, I mean, but you're subscribing Wait, to it, yeah. Wait, do you do get the track names or no? You do, but well, you have to subscribe. The to The application, a yeah, has to so, do it. So the application. So Ian, here's how it works, right? You on, you. In, I thought in the transport you got them, but apparently I'm nope. Them. There's no track names in the transport. You must know the track name in order to subscribe to it. Yeah, because the transport isn't assuming any track names. Right? Yeah, there's so, no index. Uh, you know, HTML equivalent or something. Yeah, like I think that. I think that's that's a good example actually. Yeah. It's basically the equivalent of getting index or HTML, but the HTTP transport doesn't encode that. We're resuming in two yeah. minutes. It's just known by the application. Yeah. I, I think I misunderstood the subscribe namespace PR. And uh, even though I reviewed it, I, in my mind, I was thinking you would just get everything. So you would get like everything no, under that it's, namespace. So, no, God, yeah, that's, that's no, what no, I was no. asking earlier. No, it's no, no, it's, it's wild not, card it's not wildcard on the namespace. It is, I, another name is announce interest. It's what I'm pitching. Where it's saying, please, please send me announces that match this prefix. Yeah, you should do that. But it gives you sub prefixes as well. Like yeah, it gives prefix? you everything that matches the every announce that matches a prefix, but not the track. It doesn't names. actually subscribe not the track names. to it. Nope, it just, just names gives you the announce. Yeah, it just sends you announces because right now we have the problem with like, do you send announces to everybody? Like fan out all to all n announces to all n viewers, and announce interest or whatever is supposed to say I only care about meeting one two three. Please give me all the namespaces of meeting one two three, and then you'll get meeting one two three dot bob dot alice dot whatever. And then you have to subscribe to their catalog to actually figure out the tracks. It's a little it's weird. It's like three round trips, yeah. No, it's it's also a little weird to decide, like, I will go in unlimited, well, I guess, up to 31 levels deep yeah. on names. On names. But I'm, like, literally uninterested in the track names. The, the problem, like, oh, if you do any kind of announce like that, you have to come out with a privacy analysis. 
because yeah. uh, uh, otherwise it's fairly easy to have someone just uh, harvest all that information and put that in the big uh, surveillance metadata machinery. Yep. That's kind of why I'm getting to the point where maybe namespace is public that you can harvest it, but the track names are okay. not. I, I, you have, know? <laughs> I have 315 we're going to begin. Um, we're gonna Wait a minute. No, no, let, 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 let's think about that. Like we're, we're done. Going... We're done. <laughs> okay. Starting. Okay. okay. Wait, wait. It, it is, all right. So it's 315. We're going to run straight to 345 on Victor's thing. So uh, let me just take a minute to wrap it up before we talk more technical stuff. Uh, first of all, thank you to everyone who came here or participated in the lake, uh, um, um, you know, remotely. Uh, thanks to uh, Will, who's not here, for hosting. I think, you know, this is a, a very good venue for that. And that went really well. And thanks to Mo and um, Daniel for... for uh, we need a scribe for the last for half an hour because... Then Mo leave. Mo left. Okay, we do need a scribe. But you only have to do for one thing, which may not have a lot of decisions. Put chocolate left. No. There's two bars. Are you getting, <laughs> anybody getting a little bit like orange chocolate, milk chocolate? Big orange chocolate. Yeah, I want to see if I can find the scribe links. <laughs> okay, Colin's going to do it for the chocolate. It too bad. I okay, thank you, Colin. Position. <laughs> All right, so our last talk for the day is Victor. He's going to talk about object IDs, and I, I think I think the the possible outcome here is maybe that the group would like to see a PR in this space. Uh, we just thank you, Will, for hosting. Sorry you weren't here. Oh, um, thanks. Okay, so so the obje the objective here is to see if there's interest in a PR in this space. Victor wants to mess with object yeah, IDs. So go ahead, Victor. Can, can, can you present or do I need to figure out? We have, oh, I, have oh, I do have slides. Right. You, you need, need the, the link to the thing? To the, 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 the code code whatever, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm going to put it to you on Slack. How about that? Perfect. Call it joy. Your bed base. Here it is. Come on. Get done. Back. So this is the main, main network. And you're, you've got Who's someone to present it for Victor? Support uh, I thought you were. <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, where'd you put your things, Victor? Uh, data what now? I can get it. If you I got it. Hold on. Okay. Three clicks. Four That's clicks. Let's see. I'm getting ready to scribe. Should be so in the I'll see the materials. Uh, uh, no, it's going to be. No, no, it's, it's in Mondays or Tuesdays. I just clicked the wrong, same thing around twice. It's a previous meeting. No, it was 18. Sorry. <laughs> Are you sure? Where do, where do, which meeting did you propose it against? Uh, yesterday evening session. Oh, oh 19. That's what okay. was scheduled. So <laughs> object ID is Victor. There we go. Hold on. Coming in hot. Uh, sorry, full screen. Picture of this thing. What was it yesterday? It's not going to be the best experience. Can you live with it? Yes. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> yeah, okay, so a quick reminder of how this works in MLQ. We have tracks as a top level things that we talk about, and tracks are made of groups, uh, with groups being numbers, and currently those numbers do not have to be continuous, they just have to be monotonically present. And every group's are made of objects, and the objects numbers are, I believe, are actually agreed to be continuously monotonically increasing from zero to, uh, like, as long as the object goes. And uh, every object within track is uniquely identified by its group number and object number. So that's just a quick reminder. Uh, next slide. Uh, so there, the, what got me thinking about this is like it's really annoying to implement caches when you have group gaps, and I will explain. So, uh, the way MLQ cache works is uh, you have to support uh, basically free operations. You have to query the cache to figure out like what's in it, and like uh, you have to be able to add objects from subscribe, and you have to add a whole ranges of objects because you can fetch them. Uh, and the uh, objects, if that effectively, like everything in cache has free states, either objects exist or objects is known to not exist, or it might be like the object is an unknown state, you have to go fetch it from the upstream. Uh, next slide. Just a clarifying question. R yeah. Remind me where we need to query the range of an object from the cache? Oh, uh, fetch. That's effectively how you do that. Uh, next slide. So, uh, 
this is like the slide that explains the like really awkward structure. It's like imagine you fetch group 100 to 200 and group 500 to 600, and then you have gaps inside groups. So now you have this weird structure where you effectively have six groups and like you have to six groups and you have to compress ranges of gaps between them. Uh, and then you uh, have a uh, state that are uh, like in a known state. And in order to maintain all of this on disk effectively, you have to have a, something like a B tree. And it's not just a B tree, it's a B tree with ranges. Yes, Martin? Where's the cache? Is that the client cache? Oh, uh, this is the relay cache. Relay cache. Uh, okay. It's the relays in between the client and server in this case. It's server's uh, ultimate publisher. Yeah, so really it's like in between the client and the, the, what you call the original server. public. Okay, yeah. all right. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, so, so here in this particular example, <laughs> server is a really, yeah. A, oh, sorry, yeah, server is a original. Yeah, I should have been more clear. Uh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, this is a bit awkward. Uh, next slide. I just, uh, just one clarification question. Oh, wow. Those uh, groups, 100, 500, Objects have payload. Group can be payload. Just want to clarify that. Yeah, sorry. Uh, I, I, uh, the, the objects, so the observation here is that the objects within group are really easy to manage because they're like, uh, even though they arrive out of order, they still have continuous numbers. So uh, you generally, the way you would do this is like you would pre allocate like a linear chunk and make like them like a bit in the front, whether like I've not received this object yet or I've received the object and I put its payload here and here's like the metadata is here, but like the actual object is somewhere there. Uh, Can I just like, confirm something that you said at early slide? Did, the draft says that we use sequential object IDs. Is that true? I thought object no. IDs were also random. I they're don't know. Right. Right. Sequential are they starting at zero. No, no, they're not they're random. They are monotonically increasing. Not increasing. Yeah. There can be explicit gaps and non-explicit gaps, right? Currently, yes. Object IDs or group IDs? Both. both. Yeah. Right now it's both. OK, so we'll keep that in mind Let as we go forward. Let me assure you, once you have datagrams, you have both. Uh, that's I think, what? okay, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> objects must be sent in increasing object ID. Uh, right. so They're monotonically yeah. increasing, but not necessarily sequential. So they can be null and undefined. Yeah, so you've done JavaScript. Uh, I'm trying to, so there is a bunch of observations I can make here is, uh, Apparently, objects IDs like group IDs are bad. Apparently, we also define objects IDs as are also awful. Uh, uh, but another observation about object IDs is that they're like not particularly useful. Uh, the only thing object ID really does is that it tells you like uh, it like, gives you a key to access things. Uh, it doesn't really provide you anything useful within the group because uh, uh, there are subgroups. It's, so, it's the yeah. decode order. Yeah, it's a decode order, but like given that there are subgroups, it's like a bit ambiguous. It's when there's multiple subgroups, it's useful. Yeah. If there's one subgroup, it's not useful. If you have all of yes. this. Yeah, I'll agree with that. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, let's let's go to the actual proposal. The actual proposal I have is uh, instead of thinking of group numbers as uh, like we have group numbers and then we have object numbers, uh, there are two proposals. One of them, group numbers instead of uh, thinking of groups as like groups contain objects, uh, we think of groups as group is like an index to the beginning of like this join point. So a group is like, we don't like a track, instead of thinking of track as like this multi-dimensional thing of where groups are boxes, a track is just like a linear sequence of objects. Uh, and my second proposal is just we number, number them continuously. Uh, and the reason it's easy to number this continuously is uh, uh, 
there is only one publisher. Publisher generates all of those objects, so it can just increment a number by one whenever it publishes an object, and that's uh, really easy in practice. Uh, and the reason... Did you get me too? Uh, and the uh, I just had a quick question on this, because I mean, I like this idea, and I... Anyhow, um, how is this different than just having a marker? Just some t something that's in there in the stream that says between four and five, there's a mark. Do we really need to have a sequential group number anymore? Uh, group number, so the reason that it's useful to the, for group numbers to still be sequential is that you still want to be able to join at the latest group. And that's a useful. But effort. I know what the latest group is. It's the last mark. I could also say tail minus X marks, right? And say go back five marks, go back six marks, go back 27 marks. I'm not sure if the value actually matters is, I guess, my question. Uh, I seem to get all the marks. All right, let's let's table that. That is so potentially a good point. Let's, let's uh, move it, it is true <laughs> that like you can see the like the mark associated with the largest object is that is also a good point. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess, yeah. Uh, I don't like having group. <laughs> they have to keep track of it. I would rather just have a mark, to be honest. This is a marker in point in time, and boom. I mean, now know a terrifying question. Let's move on. <laughs> uh, yeah, so the observation here is that fundamentally, like, it is really, really easy in practice uh, to, like, make all of the flat and, like, the, the, the numbering of objects flat, and then instead of, like, trying to build this multidimensional structure, we just build indices on top of uh, our groups, uh, and, like, it just says you can join here. Uh, and there are many reasons. One of it, it's really easy to cache. It's really easy to reason about where the gaps are, because, uh, uh, but easier to cache, I mean, I can allocate, like, it is easier to access structures that do not have gaps, because, and we know this is like, in our quick implementation, for instance, we have a structures for managing out-of-order packets that take advantage of the fact that quick packet numbers are mostly continuous. Uh, next slide. Uh, yeah, I think uh, I've, uh, just, yeah, uh, I just said all oh, of that. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, and the final slide is... Uh, you want the next one? Uh, yeah, it's just, it's just like, that, so that was a proposal and there is uh, still, like there are some gotchas one is uh, it just I, I it just vaguely yeah. <laughs> defined as the second gotcha, and the first gotcha is that currently we technically support you sending multiple groups in parallel and keeping them open, uh, and uh, there are some scenarios in which that is useful, but there are also people I think would agree that like uh, I've heard shown the slide to people and they said that they find that. And property anti useful, and it there is some advantage to having clarity that all of your groups are actually in order, and that's how most media containers, uh, at least on disk, work. The ones that are on disk, work, yeah, hundred percent. No, all right, were you done? That's the last one. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let, let's do discussion. Yeah. Colin. Uh, and can, okay. can you move to the slides with numbers? Because I feel like that's the slide six. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. a great slide. That's the slide I was going to um, ask. Again. Okay, so look, I think we have some... Um, uh, let me say we often see... Um, so so uh, but I think the killer problem with this is the type of video codecs we're moving to with long-term reference frames and stuff. You want to be able to start sending what would be object five and whatever. You want me to start sending the first object of the next group while well, you're still sending frames of the old group that don't refer that are referencing the previous long-term reference frame um, because it allows you to take that first frame and take a bit of time to send it because it's bigger, because it's sort of like an iframe. You can spread it over more things. So that's pretty common. It's also really common uh, to just end up with some out of orderness on those last, like on the, the you're, you're always going to end up with packet. You're still getting packets from your previous group after your new group has started. That happens uh, all the time. Aren't they... so that's a different, that's a receiving, not a publishing. Yeah. The problem with this is with the long-term reference frames, you don't know how many frames you're going to, you don't know how many objects are going to be in group zero before you have to start group one. 
Okay. Now you could leave a big gap, maybe just leave yourself a hundred or something. I don't know. But, uh, and I, I just think that on all of this, given we don't guarantee any delivery, I mean, like we already have a bunch of things people are doing with mock where they're leaving groups open for very, like the chat things that leave groups open for very long periods of time. Like, like start lots of groups that are all simultaneously getting stuck in. So I think we're already deep into needing a dynamic number of objects in a given group. Oh, that's that's a use that's a use of mock or chat that is particularly okay. Clean. As a, as the author of mock chat, let me respond to this fake news. <laughs> One group per chat message. Um, Unless you the latest it. draft. What's that? Unless you edit it, then it's a new object. No, no, but I'm in the current draft. <laughs> okay, Tim. Uh, can they for flight? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. I mean, but so, so okay. look, look, look. Let's let's focus on the the, the the next generation video codecs and think about those. Yeah, that let, seems to be the, the most be, important one. So, my thinking is, while those, I think they would have to like, maybe, really, I, in our model, decouples the notion of group of what like, actual dots are. In the sense, like you, it is true that those codecs have like interleaving between how objects are created, uh, but they're still specific. Oh, okay, I, yeah, I, I see what you're saying. Okay, I, let me say, yeah, I need to say more about that. Tim, I, I meant to lower my hand. Sorry. Okay, Ross. Uh, um. Okay, so two proposals here. Um, well, first off, question How do you know that object five is a keyframe? Because right now you use the fact that object ID zero kind of means it's a keyframe. So you'd have to encode like a separate flag in the flag. Payload. It has a marker. Yeah. Well, that would be a separate proposal, right? A marker saying it's, it's the first object of a group. Uh, we've dropped groups, and it's simply they're all objects, but some objects have attributes which are flagged. One of them is that it's a joint point, and it's an arbitrary okay. joint so point. Okay, so that's a separate We can envisage right. different yeah. markers to illustrate That's using attributes. a marker instead of an explicit group ID. Um, uh, but two, I, I think sequential group IDs and object IDs, like kind of what you're saying, the, the pain is optimizing it. If they're sequential, you can do like an array in a sliding window, and you can, you know, there's more efficient data structures. If there can be a gap from zero to a million arbitrarily, you just have to do like B trees and whatnot. It's really inefficient. So I, I do get the pain like implementing it, um, but I also think the top one is is my preference here. Like I do like the explicit start at zero again. It also uses less bytes in the wire. Not that that matters too much, but um, that could be optimized. Yeah. <laughs> Save the environment. Um, yeah. Jonathan. My sense is that if it's a question of encoding and, and you know how to do storage, it's easy. It's not it's not a hard thing to do. These are objects ultimately, not packets. So you're not really dealing with them trying to do like packet math in memory because you have like a thousand of them sitting in memory right now. Um, you're more likely to treat these objects as files on disk or something like that, where basically doing a hash is the right answer. And so to me, it actually doesn't matter what we do. These are all labels, so I'm gonna throw them into uh, a function which will spit out a hash, and I want to use that as a key, and that's about it. So. Okay, I, I think the very, very fact that I like the proposal on the top, as Luke said, and I, why I'm not a big fan of forcing everything to sequential is because the group ID and object ID are very application specific, and they control how uh, how they want to do it, and, and moving it to something very transport specific will take the flexibility of all what applications want. Yes, if you're doing a video codecs of uh, 2000s makes sense to do it, but if you're doing video products of tomorrow, if also if you're do, trying to do uh, like many other app applications like either logging or metrics or where uh, an application can decide how it wants to divide its things and for enforcing that in the protocol, it's, I don't think so. It helps, but um, I, I, I've, I've seen implementations where it caps, it can still be very efficient in the cache, if, if you're talking about cache, in live live uh, subscribe does not matter because you get it and you send it out. But only caching I've seen implementations where without that particular issue. So I really want to see like why it's such a big problem to have gaps and what problems we're trying to solve. Yeah. Wait, can I clarify Sarah's position? Because proposal I, there are two proposals in the slide, and I assume the top one is different from the status quo, and then it is no. 
no, 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 I'm no, saying, no, well, I think Victor's also saying no gaps. So. I think that, that is what I understood it to be, and I oh, didn't yeah, think no, that was your position, so I just wanted no, to clarify. Correct. My, my proposal is that what we have today works fine. Okay, so that's, that's, what, I, that's what I thought. Okay. <laughs> Tim? Uh, I was just going to call out or highlight that the marker concept, which I really like, works specifically if we do the other changes that basically says you can't send object IDs out of sequence anyways. Like, you, you couldn't send it four and five and six if they didn't come before. So so the order is already there. Marker could just be aligned with five. Uh, okay. Um, yeah. Oh, Daniel? Thank you. Okay. Um, for the Sue's thing about the, the gaps, I think it's I'm a little concerned that we just spent a whole bunch of time with like fetch defining this idea that if we just omit object <coughs> groups in a fetch that communicates that it doesn't exist and then suddenly we allow gaps and it's not always clear to the client that a gap is a missing object in cache versus an object that just never existed because the things were skipped or what that means. Well, yeah, I'm I'm a strong plus one for this idea as a cache builder face the same issues and I we're, we're I like the structure that it's a, pro, a set of produced assets by a a single publisher and that I can mark an index into them that I want that are access points it might have nothing to do with media but it I can decouple the access of this this track of objects from any sort of internal data structure um, so I, I don't understand Cullen's objection about the next-gen codex. I'm not sure that our current structure gets us out of that, so I would want to understand that more. But um, I think this gets in us... In fairness, this, point to it's not a problem for on disk codex. Okay. Can I... Like, um, yeah, uh, so I wanted to say I like the idea of eliminating gaps. I don't like the idea of Basically, I like the top one. Um, okay. And the reasons are twofold. One, um, because we can eventually do things like object filtering. Um, and two, because there's a fundamental difference. As soon as you have objects for the entire track uh, that you know are continuously monotonically increasing, you then have to be able to serialize that, which means you've introduced some level of pipeline blocking on the original side, which may not always be the case. You might have things coming from different sources that are you, you don't necessarily want to serialize together. Uh, like if you, if you say, I've got a, this group, it's open, this group is open. I'm, I'm going to close the queue soon. Alan. Um, okay, I think I understand what Colin's trying to say about the codex separate or whoever you guys explained it before, which is that like sometimes they'll cut a new iframe but then they just they send it along like one over the next ten p frames they include a tenth of the iframe along the way which I think is the use case maybe that they're talking about here where like you need to keep publishing on the old group and the new group simultaneously I think that's what it is but I that's a variant yes okay yeah um, so I think that was maybe convincing to me about why the second one would work I'm gonna go back to the like status quo versus one and as the like I've read the mock logging and the mock stats draft and I also have as a mock chat author thought about doing both those all use and I also the my mock clock uses groups that are like based on time, although there is a zero, which is 1970. Um, and I've have seen how there's a kind of power and again like we talked about using timeline track to solve this problem, but then for some simple people to want a timeline track, you're like, oh, I'll just like make my group with like the second. And I thought about doing that for chat, which is like Oh, I'll just like make the group be the second or whatever the timestamp when you made the thing, and then it's like super easy to do a query like, oh, fetch me all the chat messages that were in this particular time range. Suddenly becomes very simple in our protocol. So that was appealing, but then I don't know. I see both pros and cons to it, so I, I'm not sort of advocating it. But I think that's one thing you can do that you wouldn't be able to do if you forced everyone to do this real time. Okay, Victor, you get the last word, and then I'm going to do chair stuff. Uh, I was on the queue. Yes, yeah. I was. Yeah, was, I, I was going to ask a question to Colin anyways. Uh, I'm thinking of like the codex that's like you describe, and that's the one I'm thinking is like the one where you like tile it and then I frame every four tiles. Uh, like uh, I frame tiles independently, but like the problem with those are uh, 
you are never like you always like in order to catch up fully you need to join like four groups so, like you never have a clean joint point anyways uh, so the way that the the way that works is like you have to go and receive a bunch of like th this would only matter is like if I start group one but the stuff I write for group zero is no longer relevant or useful. You mean this proposal would only? Uh, like, like this proposal would only fail in those scenarios. Because if like, if the stuff that I run in group one after the start point is still useful, uh, it to some extent, I still want to receive that. I've lost it. Like I said, I'm just being like. This thing puts slices in objects, not frames. Probably doesn't help you actually, but yeah. Uh, okay, where I, I maybe, think we're... maybe you guys go. There's probably two videos specific. Yeah. Right. Alan, do you have anything else to say, or can we move on? I totally forgot. It, never mind. I forgot okay. what I was going to say. All right. I think there are two proposals on the table. One is that are pictured here. Does anyone not understand what those are? Well, it's most and there's a the third, problem. which is the status quo. Well, yeah. Obviously, you could do nothing. Yeah. Uh, okay. So. The first question I'm going to ask is, who would like to see a PR that encodes proposal number two? Raise your hand if you would like to see a PR. What's number two? The, the, the lower second one. one I think that one. Easy All six, yeah. Raise your hand if you would like to, if you would like to see something. Raised, right? That's one. Okay. Who, who thinks that's a bad idea? Okay. Uh, who, okay, six. Um, who would like to see a uh, PR for for uh, the upper proposal, which is essentially just for, no change except everything has to be sequential? Three, four, five, six, seven. I have a clarifying eight. question about that. Yes. Does that mean we deprecate UDP? No, this is just IDs. Is this is just how you number yeah. things at the publisher. I think it's still okay. saying. Okay, but can let's just say the publisher. Like, like, look, I'm telling you, like, like. Publishers do what publishers do. So I'm going to only uh, publish object zero and then 50 and then 500. I, I think what I'm saying Does is- Does the relay have to accept that or like not? This is null and undefined in JavaScript. Do you have a explicit, like this ID exists, but I, you know, I dropped it versus no, like it doesn't, it, it doesn't exist at all. But the receiver has to still, the receiver won't know the difference. But the receiver will, doesn't no, have to ask if like, something's like, missing. Like, like you're, this is being described as it helps solve a problem that hasn't been really purely articulated in the relays. So if the relays are going to assume that they never have any gaps, that they always get things in order with no gaps. Colin, they're not assuming that. Okay, okay. okay. No, 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 no. okay. That's, that's, that's a clarifying question. There's no gap reduction in relays. Okay, so, so the point is cheers. they know there's hey. a gap hey. without having to ask All right. somebody else. So seven, so, seven, so seven people wanted to see PR to the stack. Who thinks it's bad to have a PR for the top thing? I, I think that the problem list is not, it's not fully understood. Not agreed upon. At this point, do you want to see PR? Raise your hand. <laughs> no. Okay, so one person doesn't want to see a PR. I mean, I want to see a problem statement before no, I, I see a PR. You do I not want to see PR then. No, we're not out of PR. Yeah. Yeah. Same. You don't want to see one either. Okay. So it's like seven, three. That's pretty weak. I, I mean, I'm um, happy to see work on it, but what the problem is. Sorry, I'd like to understand yeah. the problem. Is, but yeah. I don't agree with you. I'm I'm saying, I don't know. What do you think? Um, can we, can we ask just, just a friendly uh, remark. What? When Karen says that there is a problem with datagrams in the proposal, number, the, the top proposal. Uh, we're not debating the proposal right yeah. now. Well, there is also a problem with uh, uh, object per track. So, do we? So, I mean, here's, okay. I, I heard two things. I heard there's a significant number of people that would like to see a PR, and yeah. I heard that some people really feel like the problem statement is not well defined. Yes. So, yes. Um, maybe we'll ask for. Both of those things and have the problem statement first, like clearly articulate the problem. And, and I know Victor gave you a go here, but maybe wasn't convincing in some way. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, and I think anyway. So I think we just focus on that first. Like, let's take another crack at like making a convincing case of like what is going to change meaningfully for you if we go with proposal one versus the status quo, and it's. Even if, like, there may become a point where that's clearly explained, people disagree that it solves a problem, but at least 
group like there, and then let's have then, then let's see a PR because people want to see a PR. There's like not a law that says you can't write a PR without our blessing anyway. I, I well, what about like at one point? So like, so the point about the implementation complexity and performance, I, I don't like we had several times when the complexity and implementation thing came, like we need some numbers to pull, it's really bad. I with with uh, Meta's as few uh, open source tools and other tools that I've used, it's not a problem. I want someone to say why it's um. Well, I don't implement a cache either. So, I mean, uh, the people, like, I think somebody clearly feels that there's, there's a problem. Like, people want to see PR. So, I'm going to let them try. But I agree that, like, if someone's going to say it's, that if it's this implementation complexity or performance, like, some attempt at quantification is more convincing than just waving your hands. Yeah, they have to be, that, that, that has to be quantitative. That's what I'm trying to say. So, I'm not sure I captured the minutes for that correctly. The, the chairs is, can we get a clearer problem statement? Is that the. A clear yeah. problem statement before. Okay. before the, so, I, so, I would say, that, like, okay. yeah. So, I'm not, I, okay. This is all advisory. Sure. <laughs> but like, I, I think there's some interest in this. There's some concern about the, the problem statement. So I think Victor needs to try to refine his problem statement. If he chooses to also write a PR speculatively without having kind of gotten buy-in on the problem, that's, that's, he can choose the budget as times he chooses. But we will talk about the problem statement before we talk about a PR. How should I describe that this? It's the object and group IDs increasing Sequentially, I think so. Where we're using it, yeah. is that well, we've also said in the past someone has a unitary increase, uh, but all right, sequentially it's okay. And okay. with that, it is time to quit. So, once again, <laughs> we already said our goodbyes. So, uh, goodbye. Th thanks everyone for working hard. It was, it was, it was a patience. Bye, bye, Christian. Bye. Bye. Oh, can you stop the recording? Okay.